tables, which is really cool. I really like that. And uh, I'm pretty excited for this one. And you know, like, I'm not sure if you're aware, but um, the GG high stakes cash games has been like hit it and off. Mm -hmm. They've been playing uh, like 200, 400, with straddle, 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 uh, 500, 1000. You see guys like Limitless, even Michael Adamo was playing those, man. He, he I was railing something that was really sick. Like he lost his like huge $800,000 pot the other day and just like, <laughs> And he's been involved in so many bots. He plays like the tournament where he just plays these super sick hands all the time. And there's like other cool guys playing. I saw Christopher Brewer, Brewer playing that, which is one of the guys that actually I didn't know much about, but actually plays these 10K Super Millions and Finals Tables. So it's been really exciting over at GG Poker right now. And, uh, you know, it was funny. So um, Chris Fitzgerald took position on the chip leader and the chip leader just like, yeah, let me just swap yeah. with you really quick. Uh, so... You know, Christmas Joe's like, hope you time out on your seat switch in here. So we got <laughs> we got the game plot going, right? So you only got X amount of time to act. And if that runs down to zero, you got like five seconds to act. Cards are up. Ready yep, 40K, 80K blind, small blind, big blind. So uh, obviously that is going to go up. It actually doesn't work with time here at Final Table GG Poker. It's just with the amount of hands. You guys can see that in the top left side. Here we go. My man, Arthur, what a pick, Nana. This is just... You can call me Mystic Roddy at this point. I pick guys who wake up with kings in the first end of the tournament, or at least first end of the final table. <laughs> yeah, it looks like the, the guys we pick, right? They win the first pot real quick. Like, <laughs> yeah, we, we can call it a blessing, Nano. No, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, in the previous weeks, what we often had for, if you guys are new to the show here or you're here for the first time, is that often things started off incredibly explosive. Like, we were barely done with the introductions, and we lost a player, we lost a second player, and then a couple of people are just trying to ladder up. Right now, we don't have an extreme short stack, right? Like, yeah, of course, Mr. Barra comes in with 1 million, so he's at 12 big blinds at this point. That is pretty short, but it's not like ultra dangerous where he's like at five big blinds and he needs to shove basically any hand if he wants to have a chance of winning the entire thing. So I have the feeling that we're going to have a slower start to the final table tonight. Yeah, um, but you know, we do have a, a bigger average stack than normal. And so like 30, 40 big blinds plus for a lot of players. But you mm -hmm. know, what's... What's different? What did I want to point out that there's times when we've had some big stacks, but people would just freaking bust left and right, right? Like it always happens in heads up where you're like, oh man, this this one could take hours, right? They're like, uh, you know, 70 big blinds plus deep. And then some of them ended in like uh -oh. three hands or something, you know? Uh, and there's going to be big action here between Roger, the re only recreational player at this final table, and Ruin F, the pocket queens. It's a classic one coming. Well, Arthur could be in a bit of trouble here as well. You said he's incredibly aggressive. Uh, he's obviously familiar with Roger here as well, knowing that he's not like an ultra regular when it comes to the grinding high stakes online. Yeah. So he's actually going to three bet the ace 10 from the bottom. But here is who we have as well with the queens on the big blind. Yeah, Ruin F. I mean, look, when you sometimes you're like, oh man, it's a final table. We're all like really strong stacks. There's a raise and re raise in front of me, but you can't let this go against Arthur, who's you know is capable of many big bluffs. There's the shove all in. Now, Roger here with the ace king is oh. like, oh man, I have to commit all the chips if I continue here. I don't think he can let this one go though, but oftentimes you're, you're flipping that best, but then again, it's ace king. Because the thing mm -hmm. is, you don't think your opponents are ever doing his ace clean. <laughs> ace king is a dog. He does make a big fold there of ace king to save himself because he definitely is behind there, with, especially with some aces dead. Very big fold from, uh, from Roger. Uh, so Roger's going to get the king jack. like to see him play this hand. It's been a little bit quiet since the ace king fold, but chip leader ace eight suited. Curious to see what he does here. It's actually just going to call. And Arthur will most likely tag along for the right, closing out the action with sevens. And he's going to be like, all right, please give me a seven one time. I have no idea how to... Whoa, he's going to ship it. All I right. like this play. I like this play a lot because the thing is, the chip leader probably is going to re-raise a good hand, right? They're the guys that... They're not really slow playing, you know, aces and kings and stuff. So he's going to fold a lot. As long as he gets through Roger, if he... If Arthur knows that Roger folded ace-king, then this job is really good because... Mm -hmm. Roger really isn't going to be calling with much uh, hands, but still going to open with that stack size in that position. So really well done with the sevens there. And that's the thing. Some players might just call like, oh, maybe Ami will bust soon. But, uh, you know, Archer is <laughs> you know, 625Ks by folding. I'll tell you that. 
I love to see it. Uh, that was a big one for Arthur. Now suddenly increases his stack again above 2 million. That's uh, pretty similar to what he started this final table with. Still a bit down, but not too much. Our man Chris Fitzgerald is picking up the 10s after Ben CV opened up one more time with the A6. No 3-bet with the 10s, just a call. Uh, what do you make of that, Nana? Yeah, I mean, this is in line with how Chris Fitzgerald kind of plays. He's a little bit more passive in some stuff. But I think it's pretty good because he's not really looking... Okay, this, uh, you got the chip lead to squeeze. Though. That's the problem. When you just call, you do show weakness. And he Chris did lose some chips to the chip leader earlier. It's, Shove this, it. Come on, Chris. This is your moment. Like, he took you down two rounds in a row. This is where you take a stance and say no more. I would like to see him make that play. I don't think he was going to, uh, but he does flop best here. And, you know, the ship leader, he, he might take a stab here. You know, he's just trying to think, mm -hmm. what does Chris Gerald call here with? And there's a lot of better hands that would actually fold this flop. Ace, queen, ace, jack would make a lot of sense. Um, so he is going to fire a very small bet. Going to get Chris to call, but Chris is probably thinking like, Please just shut down the turn or give me a 10 because I don't want you to put me all in by the river card uh, in this situation. Well, the 8 on the turn is a pretty safe card. Um, obviously, a 6-7 would get there, but it's just incredibly unlikely with the way that this hand has played out. We do have two flush draws at the board at this point. That's something you could potentially be a little concerned about as well if you are Chris Fitzgerald. What is that chip leader going to do? Is he going to fire big or is he going to check? I do almost feel that checking is giving up, isn't it? Yeah, checking is done. Wow, another bet here. Just King, he doesn't have anything. And this is a very scary bet. Uh, but, you know, when you bet really small, you are going to invite some ace, queen, high type hands to continue calling. So there's more hands that you can get to fold on the turn. Chris is in a really nasty spot because when you see this bet on the turn, you're probably thinking, man, that river shove is coming, isn't it? Isn't it? And if. <laughs> Chris does make a correct call on the ace on the river. Oh, that card, card is so scary to me. Like, if I'm Chris Fitzgerald right now, I am disgusted to see that ace. It's just tough also for uh, the chip leader here to consider shoving because he's thinking, man, it, my opponent could have like an ace X of clubs, an ace X of diamonds, you know, like ace queen, right? He could have pocket nines, which makes a lot of sense pre flop and flop and turn. He could have pocket eights. There's a up. lot of, there's a lot of hands he could have. And if, if he's getting slow played and he loses two mo more million chips, it just could be a disaster. So I would love to see him make the play. He's just trying to think what hands would fold to a river shove here. And the thing is, the chip leader wouldn't shove here if he had queens and jacks, right? Or kings on this river card. So his value range has gone down a lot. Does give wow. up. Yep. Does give up. Does not pull the trigger there. And it's going to be a little sad to see that he didn't. Because it would have been a tough call for the tens. Don't forget that Ben CB is the one who started all of this, right? He's the one who opened the pot with the A6. And then Chris Fer Chris Fitzgerald just called. Uh, that was one hell of a hand. And we've got a new captain at this final table now. Chris Fitzgerald is now our chip leader with almost 6 million chips. And he's going to make some noise immediately. Queen Jack, he's going to open it up in the next round. People love going on heaters, don't they? <laughs> Well, hey, I was saying, you know, Chris, he's, he came into the final table in second place. He's going to be a different player because, as you can see, at this final table, he's been much more aggressive, right? He, he check-raised that, well, look at this, three-bet for ruin F, queen A offsuit. <laughs> he's like, okay, you guys are trying to be on a heater. Very big play oh. from again. Yeah, that's very cool. He's been incredibly patient, but he, like I said, he really didn't have anything to really go with either other than the eights earlier. Queen 10 is actually going to make the call here relatively quick as well. Didn't even think about it. Queen 10 versus Ace Deuce. That is not a bad flop for the Ace Deuce suited. Still in the lead. Will we still keep our final nine alive? The answer is yes. No, no. We're not losing anyone tonight. I am loving this. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, no one's dying. You know, Ami Bear and Christopher Brewer actually have like the cha almost the same chip stack they came to this final table at. Mm -hmm. um, just that we just have. Everyone else shuffle some chips over to Chris for, uh, Fitzgerald. Uh -oh. There's the sh oh no, uh oh, one okay. jack is gone. We can see that. I didn't see a 10 dead There's yet. There's Ace but, King, uh... no, no, Ace King oh, for our previous Ace chip King. leader as well. Biru, <laughs> this uh, is big going to make the reshuffle. And what will Ben CB do right now with the jacks? This is tough. A nice fold from the jacks. I think it's an ICM correct fold. He should have folded based on the hands he's up against, but. 
sometimes those kings will flop. And that's the sign of a very strong ICM player, Ben CB, makes the fold with the Jacks. No 10 is going to get there. Saves himself a lot of chips there. And we finally lose our first play here at the ninth edition of the High Rollers Super Millions. Played over at GG Poker. Ami just had a double up, could not get the back to back double ups. Tens are not going to beat the Jacks there. We got Archer here opening. David Misikowski probably going to reshove the pocket nines, I imagine. What do you think? I'm actually not sure. That would be a big shove. And don't forget, we still have a short stack, but he is going to do it. So you were right now, now as always. Oh my goodness. Roger is going to be forced to fall the queen 10. Roger has not been able to really make a lot of plays yet either. Maybe the ace king earlier, but that's about it. And what is Arthur going to do right now with his ace queen offsuit? This is a tough hand because he knows that uh, David probably will shove these nines, tens, and jacks, but also will shove ace kings and, you know, queens mm -hmm. this way probably. I'm not sure what Archer is do, but I would say this is as tough as it gets for him. I would imagine... I think he's going to call. He might call. I'm going to guess you're supposed to fall, but it'd probably be really close. I don't know the answer. Uh, but uh, it's as you can see, he's using his time bank. He's, he's thinking about it, too. He's not really sure. There is a guy, Christopher Brewer, coming up to him. Big blind, 10 big blinds. I don't know. But we know Archer goes for wins, right? He's won 625K yeah. high rollers. I'm That's why sure. I think he's going to call. Uh, I feel like if you win these big tournaments that often, then you are probably, you know, you're not playing to leather at these final tables. He's probably trying to take it all down. He's going to analyze it, and he does make the call. He is flipping. Don't forget that Roger did fold a queen. And so far, Arthur needs help. King is not going to be any help. Tournament lives on the line. Arthur was the smallest tag. Needs an ace oh, or queen. Gets the oh, ace on the good. river. The Roddy Blessing, my pick stays alive. <laughs> oh my goodness. And Rune F also folded an ace, by the way. It's got to be the dream for David, right? You're picking up the little pair, right? When you're four big, four big blinds yeah. right before the big blind. But I was going to say, Arthur, he goes for the win. <laughs> you say it's a dream. I think it's the nightmare. You just lose a 1.7 million pot, or 3.4 actually, and now you get kings. You're like, yeah, great, man. And now you're probably going to spike a three as well, right? Uh, they both have a heart, actually, in their hand. So, just two outs. Like, he's he's back? Ace? Is he back? That could, no, no, a deuce or be. a three, right? Yeah, okay, it's a deuce. Well, 700,000 chips. I still call it a nightmare. I'm sorry. I still get pissed <laughs> when these kind of things happen to me. <laughs> Indeed, Ace-King is obviously a no-brain all-in here if you're the shortest stack at the table. And David is going to make the call with the nines. You got to call here because Chris is going to shove worse pairs. Here we go. All in. Can the nines hold? It oh, well, they can make will. a set. So, oh, oh we, there's a chance. The 10. Four outs. Christopher needs a 10 and a 10 only. That could be a 10. That could be a 10. Oh, my God. It's a 10. It's a 10, right? It's a 10. No, it's a You ooh, can't ooh. count pips. You can't count no. pips. <laughs> I just I'm saw like, a lot of pips, okay? Uh, I, at that point, I closed my eyes. I'm like, oh. No, I actually used the different cards when I played GG. I used uh, uh, the four-color card. I think it's going to be Chris Brewer versus Arthur in this hand. Uh, it's going to be the Jack Deuce suited versus the King 7 offsuit. There we go. Arthur will make the call. Chris is going to be like, well, make it green. A lot of clubs would be good. That is not what Arthur... Uh, well, that is definitely what Arty wants. It's not what Christopher needs. A jack or a deuce or it is all over, and it is all over. So we are going to lose our second player here at the ninth final table of the High Roller Super Millions. Christopher will walk away with $64,000. Uh, so the pay jumps are not as big as we have seen in previous weeks. At this point, it does get a bit bigger. Now it goes from 55 to basically 75. It is in the bottom left side of my screen, of course. And you guys can also see the chip count. We've got fives raising from the bottom. David is going to shove the A6 suited. Oh, and a big call from oh. Arthur in pocket fives because David thought he got a lot of photo. Okay, but this is the wrong guy to be reached up. This guy goes for the wins. He needs an ace or a six to stay in this tournament. We're going to lose another player. Or a pretty king. Soon. A6 or a king. So plenty of outs for David. Definitely that could an be an ace. No, it's pips. It's, it's yeah. dead. 
Wow. Just like that, we lose two players in a row. I was about to say, like, we're going to make it to the first break with eight players alive here at the final table. And then we blink twice, and Arthur just took care of two players. Picks uh, up King should... Jack here. Oh, no. But... Uh -oh. He's in uh -oh. trouble because uh, he should be shoving this hand, and Biru is going to reshove the Asia Jack, I imagine, or at least call. But Roger's been... It's been pretty tight. I would like to see him make this play because he will get a lot of respect. It's got a lot of fold equity. Is yep. Uh, he really should be making this play, even though the ace jack probably will look him up. There's a chance, though, the ace jack just like you know what? You've been pretty tight. I'll fold this hand. There is a chance. So I'm not saying 100. percent It's getting all in. Roger is definitely thinking about it. He's like, is this the moment? Roger decides that this is the moment to go for it. Oh. 10 big blinds and some change. He's going to shove King Jack. And what will Biro do with his ace jack? Don't forget that you still have Arthur to worry about there as well, of course. He's just going to make the call. And Roger is going to see the bad news. He needs a king or some magical straights. And it's pretty much a king and a king only at this point. We just don't give it king to the, the guy. River. Just give it to him. I don't think that's it, though. That does not no. look like a picture card. GG. Oh, GG for Roger. Very unfortunate run here at the final table for him. Do you think something's going to happen? Oh, it is uh -oh. going to happen. Yes. Then. Okay, Ben CB's all in for two eights. Snap call. Let's go. Ben CB needs that ace to stay in. And, and he, he gets the it. ace. Wow, what a flop as well. <laughs> Spade draw to one outer. He's got his opponent dead to one out on the river. And that is not going to be it. Almost a straight flush as well. Oh my goodness, I folded a straight flush yesterday in Omaha. It was so sad. Jackpot future. <laughs> I love the jackpot future in the live games. And I was like, oh, you know, six, six, five, ten. I was like, I'll let this one go. Of course, I would have made the straight flush. Action. There's two uh -oh. kings and ace jack. I'm curious to see what he does here. I think Ben CB is either going to three bet fold or he's going to call. I don't think he would ever jam or fold outright, though. Jamming seems a bit Excessive. crazy. Yeah, it's just not needed. And if we analyze the way that Ben CB has not only been playing at this final table, but the majority of his final tables, when you watch him at other streams as well, but he is going to three bet here though, and he's going to get some bad nails because I think Biru is just going to ship it all in. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Can Biru ever just call here? I think shipping is fine. It does seem like his opponent is committed a lot of times. That would like just oh, it's only 1.5 million more. You'll call it off, right? Hmm. And the thing is, with this deck def, you just would never just call a three bit. I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're saying. No, um, this is a perfect moment, by the way, to use the snap cam future. When <laughs> you take a while, and obviously you wait until the action is done because you don't want to give any tells, but you take for a, you take a minute and then if somebody makes the call, then you record a little video immediately. And you're like, ah, oh, got you with the kings. <laughs> Tough decision, right? <laughs> oh, look at this. He's up against kings again. Oh. Ben CB going for another three bet. But will Arthur jam on it or will he just call here? That's a good question. I mean, we just saw Biru go for the jam. He didn't mind it. Arthur has a very loose image. So he probably thinks, like, if I just think about it for a while and then I jam, I'm pretty likely to get called because he has been the most active player at this final table. Yeah, Arthur's just trying to think how often Ben CB 3-bet bluffs here. It's clearly pretty often. Um, but, you know, <laughs> sometimes you just got to think, is this guy really going to 3-bet fold twice in a row? And the answer was yes. Arthur is a chip leader. Has King Nine suited here in the small? Now he might, he might play, he might three bet this one. I think he'll at least call, but he's definitely going to go for the three bet because it's different when you're the chip leader. Now you put Chris the pressure is going to go crazy. I think, uh, <laughs> like obviously, you don't want to get too carried away in this little personal vendetta that you have with the other big stack. But at the same time, you're also like, hey man, I've got a queen over here. This is kind of interesting, of course, because neither player really flops a whole lot. Let's see. Will Arthur just continue? I have the feeling he will. This man yeah, doesn't he, care. You got to continue when you're the chip leader and you three bet this spot because your opponents are going to call with like a lot of big cards that would just fold. Um, you know, like queen jacks, king jacks, ace, you know, ace jack. They might fold here. Ace nines. But yeah, ace queen here. It doesn't, ha doesn't have any back doors. Does make the correct call. Wow. That's a king now for Arthur. 
Yep, so Chris Fitzgerald is going to need a jack or an ace on the river, or he can just take it down with some insane plays. But I think at this point, Arthur will truly not go anywhere. It is obviously a bit scary with the two potential flush draws on board. But he's gonna feel I mean, Arthur is also thinking, like, he's going to feel pretty good. He's also thinking, let's not play for the rest of the chips. The king doesn't improve Chris too often, besides like a king, queen of heart type hand, king, jack of hearts. He is going to go slow down. I think he, Archer is just thinking, look, I don't want to bet and then like River have to play for all the chips, whether he bets himself or the other guy bets into him. Chris, though, so, ace got shot. He is going to fire a bet. I think he thinks that if Archer had ace king, he would just continue firing. So he actually doesn't think Archer picked up the king. Wonder what Arthur does here. Do you think this is? I, I have the feeling that he might just race here. Like it'd be crazy because obviously you're blowing it up the pot. Very crazy, yeah. Uh, this Ooh. is it's slowed it down. It should go check check, but that's a huge pot now. Yep, seven point five million chips in the middle. That is more chips than B rule, Rune F, and Ben C B have combined. Nano. Yeah. And it's the two chip leaders going for it. Everyone's just wishing someone just could bust right now. But uh, Chris, it's yep. got enough showdown to go to check. Well, the king is going to be good here for Arthur, who will take a monstrous chip lead at this final table. Chris Fitzgerald, of course, still in second place with 5 million chips. Here's going to be an all-in. It should be a call from the Ruin F. He's just, Ace-9 mm -hmm. is just too strong here. I don't see how he can fold this. Yes, you don't want to get it all in before other people, but like... You got a call against Arthur. He does make the call. Ace nine against King Jack. It's obviously pretty close so far. Ace nine still in the lead. Ace nine is still good, and of course the clubs as well. That's nice. Takes away another out. The Jack of Clubs is no good. Oh, that is a picture is card. A queen. A queen. 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 I think it's queen. I think that is a lady. Yeah. Safe for Ruin F. You know, it's funny because we see the cards all the time, but then whenever you're tournament live on the online, you're like. Is that a queen? And it's like, by now, I kind of know. Even though I do use a different deck. Of course, uh, at GG Poker, you can select different cards, different backgrounds, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I like the traditional or the four-color deck. We're kind of using a four-color deck here, but then I, I like to use the full uh, card. But, I don't know. If there's uh, a odds were definitely Archer's favor, right? Because the picture card is just Jack, Queen, and King, and Archer needed the King or mm -hmm. the Jack, but not the Queen. So, the, you know, Archer was a favorite coming into that squeeze card right there. <laughs> 66% that he was on the roll. A little bit less because he obviously has two of the outs, right? We've we got go. it all in. Ace 8 for Ben CB against King Queen suited. Ace 8 still in the lead. Oh, uh -oh, oh there man. is so many outs. Every heart, every king, every queen, every 10. And That's it is going ten. to be a 10. Ay, ay, ay. That is going to be it for Ben CB, our founder of Raise Your Edge. Ben, we love what you're doing for StarCraft 2, and it was a pleasure watching you play at this final table. Boxway, fifth place, $136,000. Crazy. Whoa. Oh, the no. Aces. Are you kidding me, and Nano? Kings and two short stacks have it. Yeah. The two guys that were looking at each other, they've been eyeing each other for the last 15 minutes over here. You're short, I'm short, want to dance? And Rune F is now saying, weapons ready. Let's dance. Arthur, this is not the moment, by the way. Arthur, yeah. you know you've been getting very active, but this is not the moment. Even Ruin Ev is loving it, right? He's thinking like, oh man, I got this guy. Maybe I should just flat call. Just a chance Ruin Ev just flat call. He's just thinking, look, I'm going to trap this Beirut. I'm not sure what he's going to do. He is going to oh, ship no. it. Oh no, not for Ruin Ev. Should have just busted Kings. the king queen, right? <laughs> Come Kings versus aces. Aces in the lead. Pick up a flush draw as well. A king and a king only. Or it's all over for Ruin Ev. And that is not a picture card. So that is going to be it, Nano. We are down to three. Rune F will walk away with $182,000. Played some great poker, especially, I think, in the first part of our final table. Had some really interesting battles with Chris uh, Fitzgerald. I think that was a lot of fun to watch. Right now, it's our turn. And like you said, he gave him a walk. It's sevens versus the A's king. I don't see how they can get away from this. It is 20 big blinds. What will be Rude do? Arthur was probably looking at his Jack-8 suited. He's like, this is way better than most of the hands I've been playing. <laughs> he will get out of the way. And Chris Fitzgerald is probably just going to rip it all in here. Yeah, he is going to rip in. 
the sevens. It's a top spot, but you got to go for it. And it does call it's a coin flip for a lot of chips. Yep. And it's an ace on the flop. And that means that Biru, a once upon a time chip leader, is now in all sorts of trouble. Needs one of the last two sevens in the deck. It's a chance, isn't there is it? A chance. There is a good chance. What oh, else? missing the middle cut one. Uh, yep. <laughs> Just missing one dip there. And that means that we are down to two. Our chip leader will walk away with $245,000. Now we are heads up. Arthur gives him the good luck. I wouldn't be surprised if he also adds, you're going to need it. Because that's the way that he's been playing tonight. <laughs> Yeah, Archer is hard to read because he can Ooh. go for big bets with really like second pair type hands. There's Ace King and two sixes. It's a limp from Chris, which is wow. actually going to build this pot up because he's going to limp re raise. And I don't know what Archer is going to do with the two sixes. My just call? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm surprised Archer um, Chris decided to go for the limp raise at this point, given the stack depth. And I think that's what Archer is confused by. It's, Are you really limp re raising me? It does oh make the my call. god! Look what a hand. this could be set versus a nut flush draw, two yep. overs. Oh oh oh! Archer is going to feel really good he about checks it. it. He checks it. Chris checked it and potentially saved himself from ending this tournament because the seven is a terrible card. Yep. At this point, any four, any nine makes a straight, but with the way that this has gone, it's a little bit unlikely. The runout is clean, though, for Arthur. I mean, clean. Yeah, it's weird, but with the way that he Chris should go for value. Is, yeah. You just don't put Chris Fitzgerald ever on a nine or a four unless he has pocket nines, right? That's like the only hand. And Chris is actually in a tough spot because this is a four bet pot, and he might think the ace king is good. A lot of times. Mm -hmm. His opponent might stab here. The thing is, this is what I'd be thinking. If I thought Ace King was good, I would expect my opponent to bluff at it on the turn because the four straight runs out. So he Makes does make the, the call. call. Yep. This could have been bigger pot though. Could exactly. I well, well I mean, it's, it's already still huge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still nine million. We can't really call this a small pot, but on that flop, I wouldn't have been surprised to just see it go all in. I think it's time Let's for see, to raise. I would like to see him raise, but he's been limping a lot lately. Um, but he is going to start raising again. Our terror is going to continue with the king six. Is he feeling frisky? He's been a feisty man, and he will continue being feisty. I wouldn't be surprised if Chris Fitzgerald just rips it all in here. Like, yes, he's still pretty deep, but Arthur has been crazy aggressive. He's oh. just going to make the call, and he will get outflopped. Oh, oh, I oh. think he should. I think he should have shipped that one in against a man like R2 who's going to three bit mm -hmm. garbage like this because Ace Eight suited. It doesn't. It plays good post flop, but also it. It doesn't play it doesn't. good as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I know exactly what you mean. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, R2 is still in the lead here, of course, with his pair of kings. He's going to slow down here, or it could be setting up a trap, hoping that Chris Fitzgerald takes a stab at it. I this think is it's obviously a, a big pot. Yep, it's definitely a trap. I mean, there are more chips in the middle. Oh, that's bad news, I think, for Fitzgerald as well. Might be feeling a little better about his hand at this point. Archer continues to lay the trap, and this is going to just go check, check. It should, right? Well, is Chris really going to go for value with a pair of eights? I, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, Arthur puts his opponent on like a 5-7 type hand, you know, some kind of like inside straight draw. He's trying to get him the stats. Oh, oh my goodness. My oh, God, my goodness. No. no. That is going to be it, Nano. Arthur will take it down, and he is going to become our eighth champion of the high rollers. Super Millions played over at GG Poker. Of course, we had nine editions. Michael Adamo won two of them. Arthur will win this one in dominating fashion, I may add. What an absolutely insane performance it's been by him. $442,000 for him. Hello and welcome to the 10th edition already of the High Roller Super Millions played over at GG Poker. As always, I am Kevin Van der Kooi, also known as Rotterdam in the world of StarCraft 2. And I am once again joined by Nano Nocal. How are we doing today, Nano? 
We're doing good, and I'm loving this final table. Another one. This is our 10th edition in this uh, 10K Super Millions that we've been doing every single week. Good to see you, man. Yeah, it's. Uh, I've already gone over it a little bit as well. I decided to give myself a couple minutes to really get ready for the show. And we've got one hell of a lineup. I know you've got your favorite as well. We'll talk about that soon. But what else has been happening in the world of Nanonoko? I mean, pretty much, I've just been chilling. You know what I've really been doing? It's really been, I've always been opening the GG Poker client and clicking the VIP games and checking out that really big 500, 1000, 2000 game that's been running pretty much daily, like all the time. Yep, Christopher Brewer is one of the guys that we'll be talking about soon. And I have seen him sit down quite a few times at the table. But I truly, I truly feel that whenever I open the nosebleeds over at GG Poker, it's always limitless sitting there. The other day he had over a million at the table. Like it's been a very, very long time since I've seen anybody sitting with a million dollars in an online cash game. <laughs> it's, uh, it's been pretty ridiculous, but it's been awesome to watch. Yeah, it's been really cool. Uh, Michael Adamo's also been playing those games. Uh, True Tell, just like all the sickles you can think of, and like a, all the sick cash game players and a bunch of sick tournament players are playing it. And and then like Tan's been giving them a lot of, of work, and it's just been such huge pots, big bluffs, and uh, yeah, it's just been. You really got to check it out, guys, if you haven't seen it over on GG Poker. Just click the VIP games, just watch that game. It's just so crazy to watch. It's like if I feel. I know I'm like a professional poker player, but it makes me like such a fanboy just to like <laughs> rail and watch again, you know, it's really cool. No, I can absolutely get behind that. And I think it can give a lot of inspiration to the other online poker players out there as well. Like earlier this week when I was playing some and playing a mix between tournaments and a little bit of Omaha cash, just having a good time, a fun evening. I would always have the VIP table open on my second screen and just glance over every now and then. I mean, uh, the bets, the moves, it's been insanely fun to watch. So I can totally get behind that. And uh, well, I'm happy to hear that you've stayed busy. I think everybody at home, you know, when we're not living in Australia, we've been staying busy as well. There have been a lot of tournaments happening, of course, throughout the entire week. A lot of bracelets have been given away. You know what I personally really love? I don't know if you've seen some of these videos come by, but of people winning a bracelet online and then like, it's not just them sitting alone in a basement grinding. It's often like the entire family is railing in real life. They're all gathering up behind the one person that's ready to win a bracelet. And then like, you know, the party explodes and they take down the final hand. I think those videos have been very wholesome and also shows that online poker doesn't have to be lonely. It can really be, you know, like a whole family experience as well. And uh, speaking of that, you know, also it doesn't have to be lonely at the tables because players have been using that snap cam a lot. I've been seeing some <laughs> clips out there. It's been really funny. I think I saw one of Kevin Martin here, like someone that uh, did the little happy dance after he cracked his aces or something. Just been really cool. <laughs> uh, I think some of the guys actually been, I saw Limitless. He used it at the high stakes table when he busted okay. Jake Schindler's account or something, which was hilarious. Uh, <laughs> I, it's just, the snap cam is really cool to get people involved. Uh, it's just been really great. But of course the World Series of all the bracelets going out there, big prizes. It's, uh, it's, been, it's been nice. I've been having a, a ton of fun with the snap cam. We actually did a little StarCraft holdout challenge earlier this week, and I ended up at the same table as one of the other StarCraft guys. So I was just kind of spamming him with videos. And then uh, when it was break, we hopped on a little Discord call together and we talked about it. He's like, what the hell, man? Your videos are so sick. Like you're tilting the rest of the table for sure. You're even getting me upset. <laughs> and I was like, that's the point, mate. That's what I'm doing it for. So uh, definitely been having a lot of fun. We hope to see some of the snap cam tonight, of course. Well, Nano. I'm loving it. As you guys know, we uh, kind of have a little pre-show here. The tournament will go live at 30 minutes past 8 Central European Summertime. Of course, it started already on Sunday. I believe we had 210 entries this time. Uh, so it's a little over the 2 million guaranteed and that's good to see as well. A little less than the week before, but can't really blame the people out there with the insane amount of WSOP tournaments we've running or have been running non-stop as well. But before we go take a look at that final table, let's just go over the lineup. Let's take a look at the nine players we are going to feature today. And then we are going to take a look at some of the crazy hands they've had that brought them to this final table. Well, Nano, if you talk about the high roller circuit, this man is about as much of a regular as you can imagine, correct? Yeah, Vogel Singh is, I want to say he's, he's one of the best of all time. I've played this guy a good amount too. Um, 
Yeah, he's won a lot of money off of me. I can tell you that. And he's won a lot of money <laughs> off of other people. As you can see, he gets he consistently performs well. He was primarily a cash game player uh, before heads up. Then he transitioned over to playing some more ring game cash games. And then he started to play the tournaments like a lot of these guys. And he's just been doing very well. He's just a sick, sick crusher. Like his reads are, I always see these spots where he like can make these, the perfect hero calls and he makes the perfect hero folds all the time. I don't really know how he does it, but he usually gets it right. And you know, he he's just very, very dangerous. Of course, if he gets a heads up with all his heads up experience, it can, can, he can easily take it down. Um, he's a lot of people give him crap for just taking too long in general when he's playing live poker. But you know, some people just want to keep their timing tells uh, in line. That's fine. If he wants to take long today, that's not that will be a problem because we do have a shot clock. But I'm not worried <laughs> about that at all. I really like this guy. I think he's very good, and I like that we got videos now in, in our little uh, final table profiles. Yeah, the production just keeps getting better and better over here at the High Roller Super Millions. I am very happy to see that as well. I'm starting to feel my element. It was like, oh my goodness, we're getting a proper show over here. I'm loving it. Well, you already said he is able to sniff out bluffs, and I did my homework a little bit, went over a couple of the hands that we are going to uh, talk about. Let's take a look at one of the hands that Mr. Vogelsang had that brought him to this final table. And boy, oh boy, did our man Fedor get a little out of line here, or did he actually like the move? No, no, talk to me. I'm not in love with the move from Fedor. Uh, it doesn't really work as well unless you're playing against like a weaker opponent. See, the thing is, he. What happened in his hand was Fedor, he, he check called the flop here uh, with his straight draw, which is very normal to turn the ace. And he was thinking, look, Christoph Vogelstein doesn't have an ace because if he had an ace, he would always bet the turn. So as long as I bet big enough for an over bet, my opponent won't call me. But the thing is, this is Christoph Vogelstein. He's thinking, look, what hand are you really playing for a huge over bet here on the river? If you had a set or two pair, would you really play it this way? Probably not. You probably would have just check raised the flop. So he was just thinking, look, you don't have anything besides maybe like an ace rag to make two pair. But even then, you might not bet this big or you might go for a check raise. So Christoph Vogelson went for a really nice read here. Of course, Fedor's play is a nice play, but I think that he, he might have overdid it here because sometimes you don't just got to bet the maximum. Sometimes you can go for a little bit smaller. It might not work anyways, but it might have not have cost you that many chips. Well, it definitely helped Mr. Vogelsang to uh, come into this final table as the chip leader tonight with almost 60 big lines. And that's, of course, very exciting for all the poker fans out there because we know how good this guy is. But if he comes in with eight or nine big lines, it's really hard for him to truly show what he's made of. Well, tonight he's got all the time in the world to truly make something of it. A massive stack. And I can't actually wait to see him. It's the first time we're going to cover him here at the final table. And it should be a lot of fun. Let's take a look at our second player coming into this final table. Normally he comes into the final table as one of the shortest stacks and we weren't really able to see what he's truly made of when it comes to tournament play. But you already said it, Randy. This man has been battling it out with Limitless and all the other crazy guys out there in the nosebleeds. But it's insane to see him make another final table here at the High Roller Super Millions. Yeah, it's cool to see Christopher Brewer. Um, you know, he has had Many caches in this tournament is six cash in the super moons, but no good runs. He's got two eighth places, one tenth place. Uh, but today he's in second place. I think something happened in those nosebleed cash games where he's like, oh, look, I'm coming into the, one of these final tables with a big stack. And I'm talking about 500, 1,000, 200. They're buying for $200,000 or $100,000 at a time at those games. Uh, Christopher Brewer's been playing a lot over there. In the beginning, he wasn't doing so well. There's one point I think he put on a helmet, which is mutes the other players and stuff like that. But I think things have been going a lot better for him uh, more lately at those tables because I feel like I'm, I saw him with like a 500k stack at one point. I don't know the exact results there, but this is one of those guys we don't, we didn't know much about the very first time we saw him. All we know is that, oh, he plays at live at the bike. Um, I, I believe I saw a post where I don't know how long ago it was, but he made a post on like the forums where he was like asking for help at like five, you know, like a $10 game or something. So he wasn't <laughs> playing this big not too long ago. And then he was playing like $2,000 buying on Live at the Bike at one point, maybe years ago. I don't know what happened, but this is one of those guys where we don't, didn't know much about him, but he's become a name that everyone starts to know because of those nosebleed games. And, and yep. I'm happy to see him here. 
I think he's going to do really well today. I just, I just like to see, we're putting like profiles to these guys that have no history in my opinion, right? In the beginning, but now they're becoming like fan favorites in my, yeah, we'll see how well, he plays today. Yep. And the exciting thing is, like I said before, is that this time he doesn't come into the final table as the shortest or the second shortest stack. He comes into the final table with 56 big lines. And yes, we have seen him final tables before, but this is also the first time he made back to back final tables. That's always a little extra spicy. Let's take a look at one of the hands he had on his journey to the final table tonight. I think this is one that is relatively straightforward. Yeah. Uh, I don't really see any universe where you would fold kings there, but Nana, what else do you make of this hand? Nothing. This is why he's got chips, right? He's, he's playing those kings perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, we had our villain in this hand make a pretty big bet on the flop, or a raise, actually. It was Christopher opening up with the 60k bet, and then we had a raise to 150k. Apparently, he took his time, maybe being like, oh, I've got one hell of a decision here. But with kings on a board like that, jack 6-5 rainbow, I think he was always very happy to see uh, that his opponent decided to call him down in the end. Clean run out, and sometimes, no, no, it can be that simple. It can be, but, you know... Hey, we'll see how he's got his second in chips, but let's check out the third guy. This is the guy we all want to talk about. Yep. Once upon a time, in a galaxy far, far away, we were doing the high roller super million table or the high roller super million coverage already of the final table. I believe it was the second week back then. And there was a sweet individual called FU Tim Riley back then at the final table who just entertained us properly. Like we loved everything about him. He was super out of line, but he was getting away with it in a lot of the spots. He had one hell of a run and he's back, but this time he's labeled under a real ID. Martin Zamani, what else can you tell us, Nana? Yeah, he's from he's from the United States. Uh, he's <laughs> that that final table was wild because that final table we didn't know any of the names, but man, this guy really stood out as F. U. Tim Riley. Like he was just bluffing everybody, right? In his final hand, he re-raised the seven deuce offsuit, bet the <laughs> flop, checked the turn, and shoved the river ace and got called. And he busted out in third. He was just nuts, but he was a very big character. It's so I'm so happy to see him. We're, we've been waiting for him to final table again. Um, he's obviously done very well in live and online uh, poker here, as you can see. Uh, I actually played with him one, the first. I didn't. I don't know really know much about this guy before, but I played with him uh, in some small event in the PCA, uh, and he was just like cracking me up. He was just saying the most hilarious things, and he was like, he, was, he like got this one guy. I don't know. It was just he's just he's just a hilarious guy. Very chill, very cool. And uh, he's here at the final table again. I want to see. I think this guy, get, you know, like when certain people, they get to the final tables against such sickos, they're like, they play kind of solid, straightforward because, you know, well, they're, they're sickos, right? They're Christoph Vogel things and stuff like that. But this guy, I, I feel like he's still going to put the pressure on these guys and uh, he, he might be able to take this one down today. Well, he's got the chips to do so. 44 big lines heading into the final tables. Obviously nothing to scoff at. Let's take a look at one of the hands he had on his second journey to his second final table. And well, Nano, queens are good, but on a board like this, queens are normally not that good anymore. But FU Tim Riley doesn't give a damn. Yeah, this guy, like you can see here, okay. He three bets the queens like, oh, God damn it. Ace, king on the flop. No one likes to see that. <laughs> so he calls about the turn for inside straight draw just in case he's good or whatever and then the river comes the king and decides to turn his hand into a bluff and this is a sign of a very strong player because some guys when they have queens or jacks here they just think oh well i got showdown value just snap check back the river but zamani just realizes you know maybe i can just turn this hand into a bluff because well if i if i'm ahead and i bet i win anyways but now i can get an ace to fold because i look like i have a hand like king queen and king jack which a lot of pros will re-raise in the spot and have here so it's nice to see him turn his hand into a bluff i i think like i said this guy might uh put some damage on some people today well we saw him in week two of the final table back then and it took a little while but we are more than happy to have him back and we are looking forward to a few more crazy hands out of this young man Let's take a look at the next player that made it to the final table. Another very familiar face. Another player who made back-to-back -back final tables, which is the first time this has happened, by the way, in 10 editions. Obviously, we already had somebody making back-to-back -back final tables, but to have two players of last week's final table also appear in this week's final table, that has never happened before, but he's back. 
Ru Ferreira, Rune F, as you like to call him, or Rui, I should say, Rui Ferreira, Rune F. Now, now, last week we saw quite a few good moves out of him. How happy are you to see him back? Yeah, I'm happy to see him back here. Um, I do want to correct you. I do feel like we did have two people make back-to-back -back final hits one week, but I can't remember which one it was. Regardless, though, this guy is a crusher. Um, he got fourth place last last week, right? And then, uh, well, mm -hmm. I think he 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 had some tough spot where he would, like called off some chips with King Queen High, and but then he didn't call the river card, so it lost him a lot of chips. But I told you, you didn't know much about this guy before, and I said that he's one of those guys that just consistently makes final tables in all types of tournaments, whether it's mixed games or no limit hold'em. He's very good at no limit hold'em as well. He's, he reminds me of the European. They're just both really solid players, but they make really well timed moves that usually works. Um, other than that. I just think that he, he's got what it takes to do really well here. He just And we're going to see him many more times in the future in this 10K Super Millions, I'm sure. Of it. Yeah, I've seen him actually in quite a few lobbies this week as well. Since you know, I was playing one little WSOP, a bounty builder, and I saw him in that lobby, and then I saw him at a few of the other ones as well when I was watching different streams. So this guy is definitely loving all the online action that's currently taking place over at GG Poker. Let's take a look at one of the hands he had this week that brought him to his second final table in a row. And uh, it's actually quite an interesting hand. And it's mm -hmm. one hell of a call on the river, if you ask me. But Nana, what do you see? You're exactly right. This is one hell of a call. I don't really know if I can make this call. In this spot, it was a small <laughs> blind versus big blind spot. He flops two pair, which is great. So he puts out the min bet and gets raised. So you're loving it. Don't want to let your opponent uh, stop bluffing. So he just calls here. Turn goes check, check, and river card, he bets about a third of the pot and gets raised all in. And you got to think here, it's like, well, what do I beat? From a logical point of view, you don't really beat anything, right? Because usually you know your opponent has some kind of showdown value. At some point, they probably would just call or whatnot. It's just like an eight is, is very likely, but you can see Rui Ferreira, Ruin F, has a very good read on his opponent. He makes the hero call here, even though there's a four straight out there that's Given the action, it really does look like his opponent could have a ten, an eight here sometimes. I don't know, but like it seems he went with his read, made the hero call. You can't bluff this guy. And you know, the other day we saw him try to call down King Queen. Yeah, he was wrong in that spot, but like you got to be careful trying to bluff this guy. And when there's someone that's hard to bluff, it, they're going to win a little bit more pots against you. And that's what cruises them to those final spots. Yeah, we hope to have him back and I look forward to seeing if he can have another marvelous one because last week he definitely played some damn solid poker. Also got a little personal rivalry going on with, uh, I believe it was Jesus on the other side of the table or mm -hmm. yeah, one of our players. That was actually kind of cool to see as well. I feel like they made it pretty personal. Let's take a look at our next player that's made it to tonight's final table. And this is actually a really cool case as well. We can see it, Ramon on the screen. Ramon has actually played in all the high roller super millions so far. And he has cashed five times, but this is his very first final table. So it's really cool to cover someone like this who, you know, this isn't his first entry and he has one hell of a run. No, he's played in all 10 editions so far, Randy. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly how to say his name properly, but you know, Ramon here, uh, he, he, I believe he was a he's a high stakes cash game player that also torn turn into tournaments. Um, I don't actually know him exactly that well by his real name, but I remember one time I was looking on Mike McDonald's poker shares or whatnot, and this name came up with one of the highest marks up markups up there. So we know he's very very good. Uh, he's an aspiring golfer in his youth, and that's cool too. <laughs> Someone who's got the little sports in them, right? Uh, from Spain. Um, yeah, I'm, let's see what he's got. You know, it's cool to see. We got to get those new faces to come to the final tables, right? Because we know there's a lot of sickles out there. Um, but of course, we're going to get those back to back people as well. Right, let's take a look at one of the hands that Ramon had that brought him to his very first final table here at the Super Millions. Um, I took a look at this hand and, well, I see Jax. I see a board that is all right for Jax. I don't think you're going to be too sad when this is the run out. But what else do you really make of this hand, Nana? Um, I wouldn't really, it's not too much to come here. I think the way that he played the hand is pretty good. It's pretty straightforward. He just went for the big bet with the two jacks. Um, I guess the main thing is that he can go for an over bet for value on the river card. So you got to be scared against him. Some players you're like, oh, when they over bet, they only got a bluff or they only got value. But this guy seems like he can mix it up. So you got to be careful. 
All right. Well, we've got 10 more minutes before the cards go up in the virtual air. So we're going to cover our last few players. Let's take a look at our next final table list of tonight. Bruno Vorkman, also his very first appearance at one of these final tables. Uh, seems to be an incredibly active young man as well. How familiar are you with Bruno? Uh, he's also an aspiring tennis pro to you. So I feel like yeah. those two guys are going to uh, what rally to be back and forth between each other. Um, I don't know too much about him. It's Bruno. It's another new name to make the... But you can see he's done very well in online tournaments on other sites, right? He's got 6.5 million in earnings. I believe I looked him up earlier. His name, his name was The Great Dant. Maybe some of you guys are familiar with him. Who knows? But uh, I'm sure he's going to be good. Everyone from Brazil is crazy, though. They're such aggressive players out there. So I'm, I'm excited to see what his hand history looks like. Well, his hand history is an interesting one because this doesn't happen very often. Uh, but he was actually not on the winning end of the hand that we are going to cover. But, well, ace eight. Let's take a look at the hand that Bruno had that, well, I want to say helped him get to the final table. Well, I'm not sure how much help this hand truly was. But it is a very interesting one, and that's why we decided to bring it up here. So, Nano, talk us through. I'm just happy to see that we got some hand histories out there where people are losing, too. Uh, how, <laughs> how I'm liking our team out there that's uh, covering these hand histories. Regardless, it looks like he's in hand against Christopher Brewer, I believe, who looks like he... Uh, so, this guy, Bruno, he bet the flop, got check raised, and he calls him just ace a high and is good against on a jack four three. He min bets the turn, which is... Quite a crazy play. And he then he shoves all in on the river card. Actually, gets called by the king deuce that river a king. I don't know. I said those Brazilians are crazy. And this hand history pretty much check marks that perfectly. <laughs> I mean, if it's not a king on the river, then there's a very good chance that he's going to get that through, right? That's pretty much the only card that he's going to get called on, other yeah. than a five, I guess. But uh, we'll see what Bruno has. I think this is the very first time that we're actually covering a losing hand here. But it's kind of cool. <laughs> it's obviously one of the bigger pots that he had. So it's nice to see that it wasn't all smooth sailing for all of these guys that didn't make it to the final table. That's, we have three more players to cover before we go take a look at our final table setup. We've got uh, Davidi Kitai here. And I already had one of my friends reach out saying that this guy is an absolute beast, a massive crusher. Nano, is my friend onto something? Davidi Kitai, oh my God, I love Davidi Kitai. I mean, look, he's a triple crown winner, number one on the Belgium all-time money list, right? But the VD Katai, man, when you have time later, just Google his name into YouTube, watch some of the final table hands, or just, just the hands in general that he plays. He plays the craziest hands. He calls down the sickest spots. There was in one of those EPTs that he he won, I believe, he was calling down King High in a three-bet pot on a flop turn, got there in the river bottom pair, calls the river shove, and just... Oh, just crazy. And, and there's another World Series main event. I believe there's a hand where he, he had Queen 10 high, called <laughs> three streets on an ace king board and was good. I don't know how he did it, but oh, it wasn't in Queen 10. It was like Queen 5 high. I don't even. <laughs> I do not bluff because we. And there's a fun, I have a funny story for Davidi Katai. I remember I was like, I was telling my friends, look, I got this strategy. And the world, the world Series of Poker, I was like, I'm just going to bet that shove every single board because I just think they never have it. They got to set, they're going to raise me or whatever, right? So I don't, I didn't know who Davidi Katai was at the point. Anyways, I raised under a gun. I bet the flop. I bet the turn. And I shoved the river with my air ball hand on a king high board. He snap called me so fast with top pair, no kicker. And I was just like, just who, I don't know who this guy, some big fish. And I didn't know he was such a sicko. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm happy to see him here. He's going to do well today. We can see that he won the EPT Berlin before as well. Well, I look forward to it. You got me on board. I was already excited after I read what my friend wrote me. Now I'm even more excited and I will absolutely do everything that you just said. Let's take a look at one of the hands that Davidi had that brought him to his very first final table here at the High Roller Super Millions. We got an A7. We've got a uh, pretty decent sized call on the river. Is this the kind of stuff you're talking about, Nano? Yeah, I mean, you cannot bluff the Davidi Katai. But the thing is, he can fold perfectly too. It's just, I don't know how these guys do it. Their timing is always right. In the big line, he check calls a flop with a pair of bases, which is fine. Of course, on a turn, he calls again. On the river card, his opponent puts a big bet in there, trying to represent that ace, king, ace, queen type hand. And Davidi's just like, no, nah, you don't got it. I can't fold this hand because I fold this hand. I'm folding way too many hands. So he triple calls, triple barrel, and is good. 
It's very, it's a very good call because I remember his opponent raised from under the gun, which also looks even stronger. They're more likely to have a big ace. Uh, I don't know. This is just a tough call here, right? Because a lot of times when you call here, I'm sure Roddy, they show you ace king at least. <laughs> uh, and same thing for me. They just show me ace queen plus. So I don't. This don't bluff this guy today. I don't know. Maybe today the bluffs will get through. Who knows? But it's gonna be a good one today. You know what's funny is if you make a call like this while you're streaming, then your entire chat goes like, "Of course you beat that. What are you beating? You're not beating anything." It's like, well, Davidi Katai knew that he was beating a couple of hands. And he was beating the one that he needed to beat here. We've got two more players to cover. We've got five minutes before we actually start our live poker coverage. And that's, of course, what we are all here for. And that's what makes us most excited as well. But it makes me excited to talk about this one again. Spicy Chicken Sandwich, also known as Saquon. This is his fourth final table. He is the record hoarder when it comes to final tables. He has unfortunately not won it once yet. But that's insane, Nano. Four final tables out of 10 editions. Amazing, if you ask me. Well, he's a 50% cash rate and a 40% final table rate. Right? I mean, this guy is <laughs> printing money. He hasn't shipped the tournament yet. He's currently coming in eighth position today. Um, so not in good position, but he's also, he's kind of like the Big Will 20, right? Like one of those screen name type guys that we didn't know much about, but just keeps consistently gets far, keeps making that final table, the spicy chicken sandwich. Uh, he got two third places that you see in the seventh place. Uh, hopefully he does well here today, but he he's a strong player. Just one of those guys we don't know their real name, but it's clearly very good. And we've seen it over and over again. And he was battling Holiday that one tournament where Holiday yeah. got, uh, where Chip Leader got second place. So let's see his hand history. I think Holiday is still one of my favorite stories we've had so far. I mean, nothing will top Lucas Greenwood, of course, winning the entire thing from 4.5 big blinds, but uh, that was a really fun final table. And it turns out, Nano, that if you want to make it to the highlight reel today for us to talk about your hands, all you have to do is beat Fader Holtz in a massive pot, because Fader is again on the losing end of one of the hands that we are covering here. But uh, what stands out for you the most in this hand? Uh, yeah, Fedor losing the hand is the thing. Nah, but you can see here, he check raises the queen seven, just queen seven on jack eight deuce. Nothing really, just back doors. But as long as you have a back door, you can do it, right? <laughs> um, but then he goes check, check on a turn. He goes to the value boundary river, gets called by Fedor and uh, Saquon. You know, he's not one of those guys that are just super solid and doesn't make bluffs. Clearly, you can see the bluffs and the thin value bets. Uh, he, good luck to him today. Well, we are going to talk a little bit about him in the next hand, the final hand that we'll cover as well. But we are, of course, super happy to see Saquon back. Four final tables is insane. But the biggest sicko of all of them, a man who's also been very active this week in the nosebleeds. We've already seen the big hand, the aces, the kings. It was shared everywhere on Twitter, Reddit, etc., etc. But he's back. I think safe to say your favorite in general, Nano, if he doesn't come into the final table with uh, 13 big blinds apparently. But Michael Adamo, the only player to win this tournament twice so far, is going to add another final table to his resume here. I mean, how good is he? <laughs> he is the one, he is, I think he's the best, I'm just calling it, he's the best tournament player right now, right? Like this guy, he shipped it twice out of 10 times. He got second place in a 10K heads up. He did lose to David Peters, but he was, he had a chance to take down that bracelet not too long ago. He played the, he went to the nosebleed cash games, 500,000 to $200,000. This guy buys in $200,000 a pop, is straddling all the time. He's <laughs> fearless, right? He lost the largest ever hand, uh, Kings versus Aces is limitless. Eight hundred fifty thousand dollar pot he lost. And this guy's been running a little bit bad on those nosebleed games. I hope he gets back there. He's my, one of my favorites from Australia. Let's check out his hand history. I feel like everybody's running bad against Limitless, though. Like, I don't know how he's doing it, but that is just insane to watch. Anyway, let's take a look at the hand. Fader Holtz was at the table, guys, but Fader was not through, uh, too involved in this hand. This is actually a little battle between two of the shortest stacks heading into the final table. Adamo taking on Saquon here. What do you make of this hand? Uh, we got to do it real quick, by the way, Nano, because the final table is almost about to start. <laughs> he doesn't have anything. He bets, a, he bets a turn with the Queen 8 high. I mean, this is just Michael. You guys have seen in the past, right? He just that just keeps bluffing at you. And then when he makes that big bluff for value, you call him because you think he's bluffing all the time. He's a dangerous guy. He's a dangerous one. He is one hell of a player. And that is going to be it. That is your lineup for the 10th edition of the High Rollers Super Millions played over at GG Poker. A $10,000 buy in event. 2 million guaranteed. We had 210 entries on Sunday. 
and now we will see who takes down the 10th edition. Um, not sure if we already did the seat selection or not. We're about to find out within a minute. Um, but if this would be it, I'm actually really looking forward to how Christopher Brewer is going to do today because we've seen him. We've seen him at the nose bleeds as well. But I feel like we, he hasn't really been able to make a big impression on us yet at these final tables. But that's mostly because he kept coming in with like 9, 10, 14 big blinds. So he really hasn't had too many options. Today he comes in with one hell of a stack. So I'm really looking forward to watching him play some poker tonight. I'm happy to just watch all these guys play. Of course, Martin Zamani, F.U., Tim Riley is going to be one to watch. And Michael Adama. Who's your pick tonight, Roddy? Who's your pick? Well, I'm actually going to be, you know what? I'm going with Christopher Brewer. Yeah, second in chips. I mean, this boy is clearly on the run. He's been playing nonstop and uh, he's very familiar with this tournament. He keeps making final tables. I think it's time for Christopher Brewer to truly show us what he's made of when he comes into the final table with a stack. He's my pick for tonight. Yeah, I think Christopher Brewer can do really well. And like, like I said, he's one of those guys we didn't know much about, right? But he, he's getting it done. We are going to do the seat selection right now. So my pick is going to be Michael Adamo. I know he's the shortest stack <laughs> in the tournament. I cannot Fanboy. let this guy go. He, like, I, I told you, you didn't know much about him, I think, in the very first edition, mm -hmm. right? But he shipped it, right? And you were very impressed with his aggressive play. And the next time he made it, he shipped it again, right? And now he's back for a third final table. I don't know if he's going to ship it today, but... I think if he gets, you know, a little lucky one in the beginning, gets a little double up here, gets a 30 big blind, so he's going to be able to maybe ship this tournament as well. But, of course, there's a lot of guys I like at this final table. One of them, I love F.U. Tim Riley. I love Martin Zamani. I think he's he's kind of like that Michael Adamo, such a crazy player, you know. I, I He's definitely one of the guys I really wanted to pick as well. But regardless, I really hope he does well. I think Davidi Katai, his first time here at this final table, is going to be really fun to watch. And I also think Christoph Vogelsang probably technically has one of the best chances to take down this tournament today as a chip leader, as being a cash game player and tournament player. And he's got the best skill set. Um, I think Christoph Vogelsang has one of the best chances to take it down. But, I'm, of course, I'm still going to go with Michael Donald just because I think if he gets a little hot, he can take it down. Well, he needs to get very hot, mate. Because <laughs> even I think a single buy in is still going to keep him at the bottom of the field. I'm definitely excited to see Davidi Kitai play a lot of hands. As obviously you guys can see that the seed selection uh, thing is happening at this point. Christopher Brewer is, of course, a chip leader. So he will have his final choice. Let's... Christoph oh, actually... is a chip leader. Christoph hey, is a chip leader. Christoph Vogelsang, sorry. Christopher Brewer is second. As, uh, he's swapping himself right now with Christoph Vogelsang. Let's see what Crystal Focusing decides to do here as he's got the final choice. Don't time out. You've seen it before. <laughs> time out, you lose. You timed out. Oh, sh Christoph Vogel saying timed out the seat selection. He probably never made a final tail before. He's like, what the yeah. heck is going on? Why are people switching <laughs> seats? Oh, no. Christopher Brewer got a nice seat, right? He's got position on the two. Uh, most aggressive players in I think Christopher Brewer, he's got a good spot. You got to pick the good one. There's going to be so much fireworks at the top left side of this table. I can't even imagine. All right, guys, here we go. Cards are in the air. Tenth final table of the high roll as super millions played over at GG Poker. Of course, there is non-stop madness happening right now. Lots of WSOP events, and not just the big ones. We've got a WSOP event for $50 coming up as well. The $50 buy-in, number 71. And I believe that the final day will be played at Sunday, the 23rd of August. So at this point, Nano, literally anyone can win a bracelet. Literally everyone, right? And they, <laughs> man, that mini main event, that was a $500 tournament. I was looking at the lobby and... It paid like $770,000 for a $500 <laughs> tournament, plus uh, some package. I don't know. It's, these tournaments are really big, like really, really big. And there's still some more to come if you guys want to try that out yourself. Plenty of more to come, actually. It doesn't stop. It doesn't slow down. The entire month of August is just madness. It feels like over at GG. Let's take a look at our first hand here as Davidi Kitai opened up with Ace 10 suited. The board, maybe not exactly what he was looking for, but he does take it down. Well, that's good news for him, picking up the very first pot at the final table. Yeah, I and mean, he was a pretty short stake. Actually, he limped that pot, too, so you can see he's not afraid. Saquon in trouble. Uh -oh. He might be our first player out. No. Not good for Saquon. Guarantee get this all in. There's no way. Yep. Here we go. 
the 11 big blind shot from the button everybody folded up to him <laughs> Rui M oh. is going to he's just kind of memeing him at this point you know what I'm cheering for spades go on give the man a 10 or a couple spades oh, no help on the flop oh, oh a little bit of help on the turn we need a spade goodbye. or a 10 goodbye is it goodbye it could be could a 10 be there could be a 10. It, it is a 10. Oh, I mean, it's <laughs> have you two Riley spamming the ha ha emoji? <laughs> and Saquon giving us the oh my god. I love it. It seems like everybody came out to play and have some fun with the emotes as well. Now we just need to see some snap cam usage. Uh, no, no. Yeah, we, I would love to see some snap cam. I really for, I got a little punished there because he did the I want to call. And a lot of times people yeah. do that when uh they're gonna fold or something like that or they shoved out who knows but like so really really with his little slow emoji slow roll got punished yeah. there on their river card but stuck um uh, but it's all good and uh you know this is one of the things we've been saying over and over again gg poker has somehow added some fun elements into online poker again with the snap cam with the emojis i don't know how they did it their software is very smooth they got the squeezing it's a very just I really like the software. It's very clean. Um, I know you've been playing on it yourself, right? Do you agree or what do you got to say about it? I 100% agree. I actually, I wrote this to Elki as well. One of the DMs says, <laughs> Rui, by the way, is just having a blast with all his emotes so far. But uh, I'm not saying that because I'm on this show. It's been the most fun that I've had playing online poker. The emotes, like they make me laugh and they time it in a certain specific moment. You know, when people either slow roll or they generally mean it. The snap cam has been amazing. I've been spamming videos everywhere. I've been even making my friends a little bit upset with it. Uh, it's honestly just incredibly fun then. Uh, I can't wait to see where they take it because it's already so fun right now. Who knows where, who knows how the client will look in six to nine months, right? I'm sure that they'll add a few more other things. Speaking of something that's very nice, by the way, our chip leader waking up with aces here in the small blind. Yeah, I like to see what he does here. Some people like to slow play the aces. Some people like to re-raise, of course, which is a standard. Um, Christoph's going to go to a re-raise. He shouldn't get too much action. Uh, but we know Bruno's crazy, right? He's a Brazilian player, but uh, yeah, he can't really do much. Um, but again, you know, there's just so many cool features. Like the snap cam is one of those features I would have thought that would never have been just developed. You know, it just does like who's going to think of that idea? But it's obviously a brilliant idea. Even the simple things like just showing the card, it's always there on a the client, right? You just click show one card, show two cards, and people have been yeah. showing and. Uh, and whenever someone gets it all in, right, like, oh, yeah, you couldn't hit your out. Uh, oh, yeah, you got you one out of someone instead of two outing someone. Um, just really cool features. And they got big tournaments. These World Series of Poker bracelet events, they're not like one. Of, it's not like some new site that only has, like, 10 people ending their bracelet events. So thousands <laughs> of people entering it. Um, onto this hand real fast. I believe Brewers should be reshoving on the Katai. Not too much more should happen. But, um, yeah, it's a great site. Check it out, guys. And, uh you know, play for a little real money here and there. Start low and then go for the big ones. Run it up. Don't be like Roddy. I've been running it down, Nano. <laughs> it's okay. You're trying, though. You're trying. I am trying and I'm having a blast. And I think that counts for something. I've been streaming quite a bit of it as well. And it's been really fun. Now, even when I'm streaming StarCraft, I've got people coming in. It's like, hey, Roddy, when is the next poker stream? And I'm like, you know, I've been a StarCraft streamer for the last eight years, guys. Like, what about you love me for that as well? But, I think uh, I think in this spot, it's going to be Brewer versus Adama. Adama needs to get lucky or my guy is gone already. Uh, Adama's definitely shoving here. Christopher Brew with that nice trap with the Jacks. There's no way, right? Adama's gone. 10 big blinds for Michael Adamo. Our two-time champ is going to show up. We'll get snap called by Christopher Brewer. And Adamo needs an ace or lots of diamonds. He does get a five. At this point, another five could do it. Nope. It's an ace or a five on the river. Or your pick is already gone. And it's oh, an ace. Yes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I, 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 I put my hands in the air just because like, I was like, oh, man, don't let me uh, miss pick already. Adamo is doing Adamo things. He gets lucky, of course, some, a lot of times, and there's some hands like does, but he plays extremely good poker. He's got the stack now, right? It's a two short stacks at double. There's no clear short stack yeah. right now. No, that's very nice. Is it actually uh, Davidi Kita is a shorter stack at the table at this point? Obviously, came in as one of the shortest stacks as well. Let's see what this hand holds for us. As Christopher Brewer picks up a seven offsuit, and he is just going to shove. Ooh, no, no. 
Would you like to see a call? Call it, Sakwan. You're here to win it, right, mate? And our final tables. Win it. <laughs> As Sakwan is thinking about he's probably thinking, man, am I ever really beat here? The problem is it's a final table. And even though if you're slightly ahead, like against a hand like King Queen Suda or something like that, mm -hmm. it's not really worth a call, usually from a uh, ICM, like technical tournament player point of view, because you know your chips are worth more. And you know if you're wrong, because sometimes you are up against a hand that's ahead of you slightly, right? I just don't, oh. I don't think Christopher Brew is ever shoving here of aces or ace king or ace queen or an ace jack. Oh. So Quan just times out. I I don't blame him. It's a tough spot, but uh, I, I I'm pretty sure from a ICM tournament point of view, you should be following that hand. Mm. And but if he was going for the win, and he really knew it, he could have went for that call. I think ace nine suited. Just. You know, you're just thinking, you know, it's not no ace jack suited or something. It just seems a little weak. And don't forget that just the previous hand, Christopher Brewer lost a 1.7 million chip pot on the river because of that ace. And that's kind of an outrageous shove just from the button. Sure, Michael Demo and Saquon are slightly shorter stacks, but it's still a bit over the top. After Nano, that smells like weakness. I'm actually not sure. I was torn, right? Because on one hand, I predicted Christopher Brewer to win, so I don't want him to lose 1.9 million chips because then it's going to be a lot harder. On the other hand, I think that would have been one hell of a call if Saquon made it, and I can definitely get excited over that. Yeah. On to the next hand. Look at this. Ramon leading out with the 6-9 offsuit. Yep, looks like it is a blind versus blind spy, and Saquon is playing a, a pretty nice. He's, he limped here, and he went for the check call on the flop and just thinks, you know... Yeah, I didn't hit anything, but ace high is usually good in a blind versus blind battle because ranges are very wide whenever it's limp. Well, the big blind could have any two cards that isn't any, isn't a premium. Is Vice and Basco Ramon going to bet again? He doesn't have anything. And he does. Impressive. <laughs> and it's a pretty big bet as well. More than 50% off the pot. And he's actually putting Saquon in another difficult spot. Saquon's like, geez. Can't catch a break over here. First the ace nine and now the ace six. The suited aces, no good so far to our second shortest sack at the table at this point. So we are moving on to the next end. I'm still thinking a little bit about last week where I think we played at one point for like 40 minutes and we lost one player or even no players at all. That was pretty insane. And it seems like today, Nana, we're heading in that direction as well. Yeah, it could happen again, but that's okay because this lineup is one of those lineups where I want to just see them keep playing forever, right? It's uh, You want to learn from them. You want to watch all the crazy hands. The VD could die, two jacks, under the gun, shortest deck. What's his play? Is it limp? Is it raise? Is it jam? I don't know what he's going to choose, and it's going to be practically an all-in. Yep, pretty much. Obviously, never folding. <laughs> And leaving himself with 184,000. And we'll most likely just get it through. None of the last three players really having a hand that can make the call there. So that's good news for a shorter stack at the table. He is going to have to pay the big blind this round, though. Nobody really having much. Yeah, should get forward to Rui Ferrer. Let's see if he goes for maybe an open jam, maybe a min raise, maybe even a fold. Who knows? Uh, but, you know, it's just the thing. If you... There's a lot of spots where you're just uncertain what to do, but watching these whole card upstreams is how you learn. So if you're one of these like aspiring players to get into one of these events one day, just keep watching this day, this weekly show, right? And me and Roddy perform for you. Head cards up, learn from the best. So when you finally get here to one of these final tables, uh, you know you can uh, ship the tournament as well. And here's a raise and a demo picking up some chips, right? Well, uh, your pick against my pick could get in a little bit of trouble here. Let's see what the demo decides to do. Working with 21 big blinds. How would you like to see him play? i like to see him ship it in. He's up against one of the big stacks that's going to definitely raise. Um, Jax is a vulnerable hand. It's not like aces and kings where you can do something kind of sneaky, right? And you got a lot of people behind you. I'd like to see him shove this one. And then he will most likely get it through because that is just a little too much, I think, for Christopher to call. And Christopher will indeed make the fold immediately. Mike Ordemo, our two-time champ, came into this final table with less than a million chips. We blinked twice, Nano, no, and he's over two million already. Yeah, he's he's in good spot right now. <laughs> I'm pretty excited. I hope, I hope he gets <laughs> a little bit more, just a little bit more chips, and then we can see some really crazy stuff. Um, Bruno's going to open. Bruno's been uh, involved in some pots despite his shorter stack. Uh, hasn't really been working out for him, but uh, I think he might get some action from Martin Zamani. He hasn't played a hand yet, but he flops the top pair of that 10-4. 
Yep, a couple of backdoors as well, of course, for the 10-4. Klops is still alive. Could still make a straight with his four as well. Bruno not really having a whole lot going for him. Does pick up a couple of additional outs on the turn. Now Queens would be good for Bruno as well. Queens would be amazing. Even. Yeah, best. Bruno, I'm trying to think, is he going to bet here on the turn? I think it's a good card for him to bet. He can get a lot of weak hands to fold, like, you know, like the 6-5, the, the seven nines. you know, these types of hands. It is a big bet. Let's see if Martin can call him. Well, we know have you, Tim Riley. He ain't folding. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, you're right. How do you know? You're, you're so perfect. You're on point today, Roddy. Very good call from Martin Zamani. But can Bruno <laughs> trigger again? Well, I actually think if he would decide to ship it in here, okay, it goes check, check on the river. And Martin Zamani, also known as, or previously known as, FU Tim Riley, does take down a pretty big pot and he will chip all the way up to 3.4 million. Well, you know, Nano, you're saying like we can watch or all the fans can watch his final table still. Oh, oh look at that. Let's go. <laughs> I love it. This guy's oh, awesome. yes. Oh, this guy's I love the Martin Zamani. Oh man. Yeah. I want to know who's his profile picture. I'm sure the chat knows who it is because it's definitely not him. I met the guy, and that guy's not him. Um <laughs> it's probably Tim Riley, is my guess. Um, regardless, though, yeah. Look at we, you, how can you not root for Martin Zamani? You know, if he ships his tournament, it'll be amazing. I don't care if my pick doesn't win. I want to see Martin Zamani do well. He's the very first player mm -hmm. to do the snap. <laughs> I think there's more to come. I love it. And I mean, an amazing call there as well on the turn, of course. We've got Michael Adamo tagging along for the right in the big blind with his 10-9 offsuit. Bruno has been uh, busy, not on the right end of things so far, but he will keep being busy. He makes a very small bet here, but he will take a pot down finally. A little bit of momentum heading into Bruno's way. Much needed, Nano, because he was officially the shortest stack at the table. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I'm just happy he, so we got our first snap cam. Mm -hmm. It was pretty funny. He was like... like <laughs> 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 and it's good, too, because he was it was a hero call, right, on the turn, just a 10-4. Uh, yeah, uh, Bruno's been involved in a lot of pots somehow with this tiny stack um the vd folds it looks like we, we're gonna see some action here right the pocket fours against the ace queen michael adamo what do you have in store for us he 22. might ship it in who knows well, I, i'm I not sure what it's gonna if he does, and his image as well, of course, oh my goodness, he does ship it in. And I actually think that Ramon is going to call here with the ace queen offsuit. I, I don't really see any, like, against other players, maybe you can decide to wait. Maybe you feel there are better spots. Against Michael Adamo, you got to make the call, and he will make the call. And he needs an ace or a queen. Well, fours are ahead right now. Oh it's my four goodness. The turn. You need a three. Three, a three, and a three only. And that is not a three, so Michael Ordemo doubles up again. And <laughs> wow, nice pick, Nano, nice pick. 3.7 million chips for our two-time champ. just got to run champ. a little hot, right? He's got to run a little hot. So he's got position on all of the chip leaders right now, too. This is a great seat for him. He's in prime position. Um, this is... That, that's a dangerous side, right? From Christoph Vogel saying on to Michael Adamo. He ever won with three to four million chips. Martin Zamani, FU Tim Riley, 10 9 suited. What's this play? I mean, first, you're like, I've got Michael Adamo on my right, which is not that good, but he's got 900,000 chips, so you don't really have to worry about it, right? Well, uh, 29 minutes into the final table, Michael Adamo now has 3.8 million chips, and then it's definitely something you have to worry about. Let's see what happens in this hand as we have our chip leader indeed opening up with King 10 suited. Well, he is going uh -oh. to three bet, but Rui Ferreira picked up the ace king and he's going to take this one down to a shove. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, not too much more should happen here, I imagine. Uh, Martin Zemai, I feel like Martin Zemai's got the snap cam ready, right? To do something really cool, but uh, oh, look at that. Once again, the emoji game on point, giving us the thank you. One of my favorites as he takes it down. Oh, I love these guys. They are so fun. <laughs> but, you know, I want, I want to step back one second, right, to Michael Donald's pocket four shoves, where some guys, right, they usually would just – he had a lot of big blinds, 22, 23 big blinds. It would just yep. win raise and probably fold today's queen shove. But you can see Michael Donald's style is very different. It's more like 
look, I'm just going to go for the win. I'll put the maximum pressure on you guys, always trying to forward and make those pay jumps. And uh, like I said, this guy can easily bust first. And there was multiple opportunities where he could have busted first, even with a pretty solid stack, right? But now he either wins it or ship, or he busts, busts in ninth or eighth. And uh, right now he's, he's going to the top. Well, he was a river card away from being eliminated. He needed an ace or a five on the river before. Six outs, I believe it was, or five even. He got there, and now all of a sudden he is looking mighty fine. And I think he's going to pick up a few more chips, even Ooh. though this could become fireworks. We've got jacks in the big blind. The shortest stack at the table, Ramon, now has ace-jack. You can't really fold ace-jack if you got, like, what, five, six big blinds. So he's going for the race, but Davidi is most likely going to go all in as well. Yeah, Davidi is going to reshove here. And Adamo, it's an annoying spot because you never like to see two re-raise all-ins in front of you. But, I mean, well, I'm not, right? It's, it's not that many chips more, but you're getting insane odds. And even could be the best hand. And ace-queen is doing really well against these two type of hands. Yeah, but once again, if I know Michael Adamo, he is going to make the call here. It's just, yeah. it's unlike him. To fall. Well, I mean, it is scary, but he does make the call and he's going to see. He's like, all right, we actually, this is not all that bad. All we need is an ace or a queen. No help yet on the flop. No help on the turn either. This could be a monster pot for Davidi. Yeah, this is really good for Davidi wow. Katai. And we're going to lose our first player. Yep, Ramon is out. I didn't mind the call at all with the ace queen where he lost the majority of his chips. It's just sometimes it's not meant to be. Most of his chips went to Michael Adamo, but now all of a sudden, one of our other exciting players at this final table has got one hell of a stack as well, Davidi Kitai at 2.7 million. Yeah, so Davidi also doing uh, pretty good. Uh, so what, Bison, first player out wins $38,000. So get you a couple rebuys into this tournament. Try again next week. No big deal. I mean, most of these guys, as you can see on the left side as well, uh, did fire a couple of buy-ins, and Ramon was one of them. But we are still happy to uh, see that he walks away with a little profit, Randy. You know, it doesn't have to be much. <laughs> an additional buy-in is sometimes all you need. This could be an interesting hand. Michael Adama with the not flush draw, but Martin Zamini, also known as FU Tim Riley, picks up the gut shot. Yep, uh, Adam. These are two of my favorite players literally playing the hand right now. It's a 50% pop bet. Martin here has got the inside straight draw. Just trying to think if he should continue or not. It is easily the best hand, of course, when you're behind. You know, it sucks. In this spot, it's not too good of a spot because, you know, he might make a straight with a four, but the four spades could come out, and obviously that would pretty much lose almost all of your, ch all of your chips. Uh, it's going to make the call. Oh, it's my goodness. Four. Adamo picks up. A double straight draw and a flush draw. Martin Zamani hits the gin card. <laughs> that is that is actually a ridiculous turn. But obviously, Michael Demo still has plenty of outs. With a seven, he makes the highest rate, and every spade gives him the nuts. But Ooh. no help on the river. Uh, well, thank Michael God Demo he checked that turn, right? Yeah. Thank God he checked it because he could have bet that and got all the chips in on the turn card, and that really did save him because that looked like a turn card where it just seemed like mandatory bet, right? You pick up so many outs, and he saved himself, really. Martin is going to fire a pretty big bet on the river, and Michael Demo can't really do anything other than fold. So Demo will give away a couple of the chips to the left side of the table. This has been a pretty feisty start to our final table. I still kind of feel like we're in the warm-up phase, but we've had quite a few big pots already up to this point. Yeah. Uh, Zamani picking up chips is always so what I like to see. It's going to get over to Kristoff. We should see some uh, battles between Kristoff and Christopher here. Yep. We'll most likely get a call with the 5-3 suited. Our chip leader, Christoph Vogelsang, has been a little quiet so far, right? We saw him open once with the King-10 suited, was forced to get out of the way. And that's kind of been about it. Now, this is a, a feisty flop as well. We've got a flush draw for Christopher Brewer, while Christoph Vogelsang picks up mid pair. Yeah, Vogelsang could easily check this flop, could easily bet this flop a little bit. Um, either way, both pretty good. He's going to go for the small bet, try to deny some equity here and there. Is Christopher Brewer going to go for the check call or the check raise? I'm not sure what he's going to do, but I think both lines would make a lot of sense. 
you know, I was just thinking, look, if you check call, you're representing those more mid pair type hands. So he knows he's going, he can't go for like, he can't represent the jack nine once you check call to flop, but that's okay because you can represent like the king queen and, or you can just hit the, hit the flush on the river card. We love to see it. If you make him as your pick, no, no, you know, I'm happy. Christopher Brewer has been pretty unlucky at these final tables so far whenever we saw him play. So it's good to see him get a little momentum going here. What would you bet here? Solid 380, 360? Probably go a little bit more. I think it's fine. You're trying to get called. Well, oh, he's going for the small bet. So he's, he's on he's on the Roddy game. I guess I was going to say maybe you want to bet a little bit more, try to target the queen. Um, but, you know, actually it was a perfect bet because if we bet more, I probably wouldn't have got called. I think Christopher Brewer hand reading skill was pretty good there. I was just thinking, look, if you had a queen, you probably would have bet the turn. So let me just mm -hmm. widen your calling range by putting a smaller bet out there and... Uh, yeah, I think uh, you, you're onto something, Rod. You improved a lot, didn't you, recently? Well, I'm paying attention. I'm listening to you and I'm paying attention. And it, it's very funny as well, because this is what I want to say before. We had a fun, interesting hand. It's not just that we learn a lot from these guys. You do start picking up some tendencies in their play as well. And I don't want to make it say that sound that these guys are predictable, because obviously they're not predictable. They're some of the best poker players in the world. But you definitely notice trends within their play where you just know that certain players would fold specific hands and Michael Adamo wouldn't. He will make the call. He will make the shelf. It is very cool to see the different approach that these very high-skilled poker players have as well to these final tables. Yeah, and that's one of the things I want to point out is that uh, you don't, not all, just because all these guys are sickos, they don't all play the same. They all have their exactly. own very unique styles, right, which is really cool to see. And that's, that's what makes this game unique, right? Because if everyone played the same, it'd be pretty boring and robotic. But, you know, it's not the case here. Okay, well, let's see what yeah. happens here. Ace 10. It's yep. a tricky spot. It's a tricky well, spot. Well, it's also a tricky spot for Saquon because he may have felt that it's time for him to make a little move as well and start defending his blinds a little bit. But oh. Oh, what do you do there with Ace-9? He is forced to fold immediately. Christopher Brewer will get out of the way as well. And Michael Adamo, relentless as always, and Saquon is giving us the tilt emoji. And I He's probably thinking man. Ace-9 was good, right? He's like, oh, please, let me just shove this. But Adamo just put it in first. It's perfect as well to shove the hand after you use the tilt emoji. And it falls all the way to him in the small blind, and he is going to shove it. The ace nine suited will get through. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the Daniel Negreanu emojis because they're animated. They got the little motion in them too. It's, <laughs> it's pretty funny to see. I, I just wish we got our Elky emojis, man. I would spam them all the time. I want to see how an Elky sick fish would look like because I feel like he is the original sick fish creator. So that'd be fun. <laughs> This can get interesting. Christopher Brewer decides to open it up with pocket sevens, but Michael Adamo wakes up with pocket kings. So if he, is he going to re-raise it and call here? Let's see. He is going to re-raise. Uh, I think Brewer's going to give him a little action, maybe. I don't know. It's just like... These, these, these two guys have been playing, actually, the high-stakes game together. Yeah. The two hundred thousand dollar minimum USC buy-in, so it wouldn't be surprised if Brewer gives Adamo a lot of action. You think Limitless is hoping for a one-two between <laughs> these two, and he's like, "Yes, more action." <laughs> yeah, Limitless is on the rail, like, like he's thinking, like, "Please let Michael Adamo and Christopher Brewer win money, so I, I can maybe <laughs> win money from them." He's actually the highest earner of the oh! high roller super mode. Oh my goodness, what the hell just happened? Christopher Brewer with the raise, Michael Adamo shoves. Or the other way around, and kings are obviously in the Three lead. King times. of the turn yeah. means that Christopher Brewer is drawing dead. And Michael Adamo is now all the way up to five millions. No, no, that happened so quick. What the hell just happened there? Yeah, it was a raise and a re-raise from Adamo. And in the shove, just think Christopher Brewer just not look. I know you're up to no good. I play with you all the time in this high stakes game. You're just bluffing off 200, 300k online. You're clearly in the 10k tournament, you're gonna be bluffing too. But Adamo, he's got the best image to get there action that he wants right like you you play crazy to get action like this he's chip leader he's got five million chips he was the shortest stack oh so a christopher tumble. ruha just shoved after michael adamo raced christopher ruha just shoved immediately and adamo with the a split or a snap call is an understatement there. I feel like he called before christopher brewer's chips were even in the middle bam couldn't have been any faster and I can't believe it. Our two-time champ is now the chip leader with over 5 million chips. How does he do it, Nano? Week in, week out. 
I mean, like he's got the worst image, I'm sure for sur for sure, right here. And uh, you're gonna get action when you pick up hands, and that's what you should be doing as one of those action players. And he always goes for the win. Of course, he could have been out many times, right? But like, that's the thing. Look how much first place is four hundred thousand. He wants to win the four hundred thousand up top. He doesn't want to win the thirty-eight thousand, the fifty thousand above. That doesn't even get him a buy-in into that high-stakes nosebleed game. Uh, so Adamo in very good position. Uh, he could be our first. It was our first two-time champion. Oh, he could be the no. first three-time champion today. That is the, I, I don't want to think about it yet, but that would honestly <laughs> be an insane statistics. And there's definitely a good chance of uh, at this point, but we'll talk more about that later. Let's see what Rui Ferreira decides to do here with his ace-nine offsuit. Does have an open-ended straight draw. No help on the turn. Yep. Yeah, well, not too much should happen. Um, I don't really see how Vogelson could ever really fire. Does brief for the thing is when you have a hand like ace nine here, you're thinking, oh, well, I've got out. I should maybe bet at it. But the thing is, my opponent will often call a bet on a turn on this board texture. So that's why he doesn't bet. It's just like, well, if someone's got like the eight nine, the queen jack, there's so many different hands I could name, they, they're gonna still continue. So that's why you see him continuing to check. Wow. Okay. We get Ooh. one hell of a bet on the river from Vogel saying. Uh, the man who came in as chip leader into this final table. And this is a, a pretty sick spot for Rui Ferreira. Runef, can he make the hero call of all hero calls here with ace high? That'd be such oh, a sick call. That'd, that'd be, be such amazing. a sick call. Oh. No, that's not happening. But yeah, Crystal Vogelstein's bet is really good read because he's just thinking, look, if you had two pair plus, well, obviously you would have bet by the turn. So clearly you don't have two pair. You either have a very weak pair or... Like usually you just have weak pair or ace high, and I think that's a really good read. That's why you went for that really big bet. You got to target those weak hands with a big bet to make sure they can't call. Because if Rui Ferrer had like a king queen, ace king, he would have bet the turn. So he knows that he'd have to hero call there. Well, Christoph Vogel saying is going to try to get some of his chips back in the next hand with the 6 3 suited. Not exactly the board you're hoping for, but Martin Zamani doesn't really connect with a whole lot either. Okay, takes it down. Aggression pace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should just throw a little bet out there. It's usually those limp pods is first one a bet wins. Davidi, pocket deuces. He's going to fold. Man, I feel terrible for Christopher Brewer. He just can't catch a break at these final tables, man. Today was the first time he came in with a lot of chips. Some will say perhaps a little bit of a punt there with the sevens. But against Mike Ordemo, I, I don't even hate the play. It's just that this time he had kinks. But in any other moment, he could have had King Jack, King Ten. We know how Michael Demo plays. Oh, yeah. It's okay. He's not out yet. He's not out yet. But hopefully Christopher Brewer, his best performance of his three final tables has been eighth place. Yep. He is on, play, on pace to maybe get another eighth place here today, even with a big stack. Who knows? But he got the Queen Ten. He's got some outs. It is just a minimum bet. I think he might continue here. I feel like he might do something crazy, mate. I feel like Christopher is a little upset at this point. <laughs> no, he's just going to make the call. So nothing too crazy happens. Checks it back on the turn. Let's see if Crystal Vogelstein continues. No, he does not. Pair of queens on the river. Christopher should feel pretty good about his hand at this point. Obviously, it is a very scary board. But I do think with the way that this hand has played out so far, you're going to be pretty happy to see that queen on the river. Yeah. I think Christopher Brewer is just thinking, should I bet to try to get called by like a jack? Or should I check and try to induce some bets? He is going to go for the bet. Um, but yeah, most certainly queen 10 is almost always the best hand unless you're up against king queen or king 10. Otherwise, I think his opponent would have just kept betting. But was saying uh, he's not giving up yet, though. He might consider calling here. It seems he's thinking about it. I got to say, I, I love the fact that he's even willing to lead out with a bet, though, because that is a board that would terrify me. It's like, okay, you've got some showdown value now if you didn't have that before with your queen high. But obviously, spades get there. You still have that uh, those aces to worry about. But Christopher makes the correct bet. No, takes down that pot. A shorter stack is going to open it up from the bottom side of the table with King Jack offsuit. Bruno Volksman with, I think it was roughly 11, 12 big blinds starting this hand. And Christopher Brewer, can he steal some chips? Can he bring us down to seven? Yeah, well, um, 
Bruno, you know, he's been opening a lot with his short stack and going for a min race. He doesn't open jam. So if you've been watching the whole cards up, you might realize that your ace jack is good here. And he's going to shove. Because usually when you see a guy with 11 big blinds min raise, it looks pretty damn scary, right, from yeah. middle position. But he's been uh, opening a bunch. And uh, that's a really nice play from Christopher Brewer. And, uh, make sure you, just make sure you're watching the whole cards up. But here's the ace jack in the nines. And the kings for Christopher. Yep. Ah, uh, this hand is going to get crazy. Let's see what Rui Ferreira decides to do with his ace-jack offsuit under the gun. He is going to open it up. Bruno, a shorter stack at the table. Less than nine big blinds at this point. Actually, no, exactly none. Nine big blinds with pocket nines. I don't know if to you that's a sign, but it's a bad sign, uh, I'll tell you that. Well, that technically is three oh, nice nines, right? He wow, knew, he knew. He knew it was a bad sign. He's like, this is just too coincidental. That's Very sick, nice actually. What do you make of that fold? I did not expect that. I think he thinks that Rui Ferrer's open from undergun is very strong. And he was just thinking, look, maybe there's a chance someone else busts first. It's maybe a bit marginal. I'm not sure what the best play of two nines is there, but I can see why he considered it was very oh. strong for Rui to open in the first place. And it's gonna, he that. saved himself. Christopher King. Brewer just calling with the Kings from the bottom. Rune F will most like actually just going to check here with his middle pair. I like I'm it. I'm surprised. Think... I'm surprised he flatted the kings, right? That's a really slow play with the kings, and uh, it's going to get him some action. We'll fire out a bet of roughly 200,000 chips. What is Rune F going to do? And the man who's been on point so far with the emojis, he's been spamming the Daniels. That is a, a very scary turn card for, I think. Well, definitely Rune F's hand. Christopher is going to get uh, be a little less scared about it. Obviously, he's blocking his king with his kings, and he's got the king of spades in his hand as well. So if there has to be another spade on the board, it is what it is. He's probably quite okay with that. But ace of spades would be nice, right? Um, it's a tricky spot because <laughs> his opponent could easily have turned two pair, maybe a straight sometimes. Uh, like ace king sometimes plays this way. Uh, so that's why he does check, and uh, it's a bad card for Rui Ferrer. Yep, makes two pair on the river, but Christopher obviously making the straight. And obviously, Christopher is going to feel pretty good about the fact that Rune F doesn't have a king in his hand. There's only two kings left in the deck. What would you bet here? Like, I know mean, you want to get called, you want to get a crying call. Maybe three on that K, like 33% yeah. of the pot. Uh, you, you just got to bet small enough where you want to get a crying call from like a two pair or set, pretty much exactly. I wouldn't worry about ever being behind here. I would expect someone with a flush to have. Played his hand differently. I'll put a small bet out there. I just feel like a big bet doesn't really accomplish that much besides getting only folds. Wow. So it's going to be a bigger bet though, but not like the not the biggest, but you know, big enough. <laughs> not the biggest. He didn't go all in, but it's quite <laughs> a few chips being sent into the middle. Seven hundred k. I actually think that uh, Rui Ferreira will be able to get away from this. I think it's just a bit too much. If you're wrong here, you're left with 900,000 chips. You'll be the second shortest stack at the table. And at that point, even if you double, you're going to be close to where you are right now. What I'd be thinking about is what bluffs do I be? The thing is, what, like 10-9 mm, exactly is probably like the only bluff I can think of. Because I think hands like pocket eights, Pocket nines, they probably would have bet the flop in the way they did. And so it just wouldn't make any sense. It's a really nice fold. You just yeah. sometimes you just got to break down the hand. <laughs> I like that Mike Odom was showing the king. Like, look, maybe he didn't have a straight. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you just got to really think about the positions, the bet sizes. What would they do with certain hands when you think of bluffs? And then they, if it doesn't add up, then you can easily make a nice fold. I would have liked to see him bet smaller because I feel like if you bet smaller, it could very well be a bluff because people often like to bet into these very scary boards when there is one card to the straight. And then I think it's a little more likely that you do get called by these hands, the two pairs, maybe the hidden set. Uh, that didn't happen. We've got the BD Kitai opening up with Ace Jack suited, flops the flush draw, but somehow the Rui Ferreira flops an over pair with sixes. <laughs> yeah, sixes are good. The VD, you got to throw out some chips here. I just really, for our most likely, would just check call to flop. You got to play a bit cautiously. I mean, it's tempting to raise here because your hand is very vulnerable. Uh, 
but the thing is like let's just say you raise and get jammed on what do you do with sixes you're confused so that's why you just check calls here you don't love it but the thing is you don't want to put all your chips at risk especially with bruno with nine big blinds coming around well the turn isn't all that bad somehow sixes are still an overpair to the board not something we see super often when there are four cards in the middle but he picks up a gut shot as well Obviously, sixes would still be amazing for him as well. And he makes oh. this trade. What a river card for Ruby Ferreira. Has the highest trade. Davidi Kitai is going to think that his ace is pretty much always good here. But that ain't the case. And he checks. Nice. Wow, I love it. I love it. I like the check because you want to let your opponent bluff the, the ace, right? Try to represent it. Davidi actually has the hand. Can Davidi Katai check? It's a wonderful what? check. That's an amazing wow. check there. That is that is sick. so good. That is so good by Davidi Kitai. I cannot, I, I would always bet my ace there. I mean, I'm a dunk, of course, but I would always, always bet the ace there. Speaking of aces, what a hand we've got right now. We'll talk more about that hand soon, but let's focus on this one. Nano, Davidi Kitai with aces. Your man, Mike Wadamo with pocket jacks. And Rui Ferreira with ace, queen, offsuit in the small blind. Yeah, um, this is fireworks. I'm not sure how the chips are going to get in, but there's going to be a lot of chips going in. Michael Adamo is in <laughs> big trouble. I think he's going to three-bet it. Or I think he? he's going to three-bet it. I feel like a jack on the flop, mate. Like, this is Michael Adamo. <laughs> this is his tournament. I feel like if he wins two more, we should just rename it. The High Roller Super Millions featuring Michael Adamo at the final table. Uh, <laughs> it's the right. re-raise. Now, Rui, ace, queen, might yep. go with his hand. I no. I don't fault him to go with his hand, um, but he's going to make yeah. a nice fold. He's good, man. Like I, 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 it's, it's really amazing how good these guys are, but you just know it. The under-the-gun open of Davidi is scary. Michael Adamo should be aware of that as well. If he three bets, he's got a real hand. I love that Rui just gets rid of the ace, queen like that. But I expected him to do so as well because he's just been playing really good poker at these final tables. Now, what does Davidi do? He just calls it a jack on the flop. Of course there is a jack on the <laughs> flop, Nano. I'm not even surprised. How, how can anyone be surprised at this point? This is Michael Adamo's world that we live in. Oh, my goodness. And he makes and the rules. Is, this is such a good flop for Davidi Katai too, right? Because, like, when you when you slow play the aces, you know your opponent's three bending of hands, like, you know, ace, jack, king, queens, and king, tens, like... This is wonderful. I don't know how Adamo does it. There's only one ace left in the deck, by the way. I'm pretty sure someone folded the ace. So here's yeah, the Rui bet. Ferreira folded ace queen. Yeah, yeah. There, there you go. And Davidi, I, I just think Davidi's gone. There's just no chance he wins his hand unless it goes heart heart. Yeah, I was about to say running hearts, maybe. <laughs> Even the queen ten run out is a bit unlikely because obviously a queen got folded as well. Well, it's not going to be running hearts, and Davidi Kitai is still in all sorts of trouble. With only 1.4 million chips left, 1.5 in the middle, Michael Adamo. It must feel good to be Michael Adamo. <laughs> he came in in ninth place. He's going to go for more value, I imagine. He's holding two jacks, so he probably thinks his opponent has a hand like king-queen, usually, or like a flush draw. It makes a lot of sense, sense for him to keep betting like to see him put out some more chips and just just take those chips just take them i love it 33 percent pot here on the turn the vd kitai is gonna feel like oh this is good he's not putting me on aces and we'll most likely get it all in here on the turn i think he can go for a check jam he could go for a check called and just check call the river as well just to think it Against Adamo, it does make sense to maybe check call to turn and try to get him to bluff off against you because you're going to get it in anyways. Um, but check raising is clearly a fine play just because you're out of position. I think he's going to go all in, and I think Michael Adamo will make another call quicker than lightning. The 0.1 second, pop! <laughs> yeah, yeah, he thought about it for like 0.3 seconds, and he's going to see that he is in fantastic shape. We only have one ace left in... That could it, be an ace. No. Could, no. Okay, it's not. It's okay, it's too dark. <laughs> <laughs> well, that means that Davidi Kitai will go out in eighth place. He will walk away with $51,000. Incredibly unlucky. I think we've all been there losing with aces. Speaking of aces, Christopher Brewer. The action doesn't slow down here. It was nice to see Davidi Kitai. would love to see him make another final table appearance in the future. 
Let's see if we can get any value here for Christopher Brewer of his aces. Three-time champion is coming. He's going to win two bullets into that nosebleed game and go straight into it. Michael Adamo, 7.3 million chips. He's a clear chip leader. He knows how to play the big stack the best, in my opinion, in these tournaments. Uh, Chris, Christoph Vogel is saying he picks up, look at this hand, A6 suited. That is one hell of a flop. <laughs> Flips, uh, picks up the gut shot, and of course got the not flush draw as well. So this can actually become a very big pot. Let's see what Christopher Brewer decides to do with his aces. He just saw aces get cracked. These aces yeah. are still good, but... Maybe he's like, oh, I just saw aces get really unlucky. Maybe I should play these aces slow, you know? Maybe <laughs> stay, make sure I stay in this tournament. There's a big bet. Vogel's saying, is he going to check call, check raise? I can really see him go both ways. Usually players will check call here, I think, in this spot, just given how many chips would be involved. Uh, especially with the dude with 650k still in the tournament. Mm -hmm. So he does check call. Well, and he's going to see that the queen of diamonds is obviously no good to him. Christopher Brewer is probably going to bet pretty big. That previous bet was already quite big considering the pot size. Let's see what Christopher Brewer decides to do this time. But wouldn't be surprised at all to see him bet seven or 800k. I think seven or 800k was actually the perfect spot um the queen is a good card because I, I would say the queen doesn't really improve his opponent very often besides obviously queen eight queen five queen four so it is going to be a big bet and if christoph vogel saying he should how about emoji when this hand can still continue you're just like please is there no, like I a think, card that says please flush me <laughs> i think this is where you're doing uh the just one time and then you ship it all in it's like <laughs> make it seem like you're on a draw actually on a draw and then get there on the river. You know which one is really funny that I've been having a ton of fun with? My last hand. I love <laughs> that one. It's so good. <laughs> well, the deuce of hearts is obviously uh, no good to Christopher Vogelsang. And what does he decide to do right now? He checks it. And I would not be upset if Christopher Brewer checks it down here because... I think he should shove, though. It just seems like look, his opponent might put him all in already if he had a big hand on the turn card. Christoph Vogelsang can easily have king queen suited, uh, king a uh, queen x suited very easily. I think there's a lot of value to be gained with two aces. I just don't see how you're behind too often. Even like you block some wheels, right? Ace three suited. You got two aces in your hand. It's just it just yeah. seems so much unlikely. I, I just don't think he should check here. He might check. I don't fault safe play, but I just think there's too much value. Yeah. Well, he shoves, so, and that will leave Christoph Vogelsang with no option other than to fold. A chip leader in some trouble here, Nano. Started the final table with over 4 million chips, now all the way down to 2.3 million. Michael Adamo picks up pocket queens. Why the hell not? But I don't think he's going to get too much action. Yeah, it doesn't get any action, you know, like, right now, I think Saquon is thinking, look, Bruno, you bust first, so I'm not going to play a single hand. We're referring to, look, Saquon and Bruno, you guys bust first, so I'm not going to play any hands. This is the Michael Adamo show. He's going to probably raise his ace five, and he should. Uh, and he's just going to get so many folds from everyone right now. It's just, just printing chips. This is how you ship tournaments. Yep. I, I absolutely love the approach that Michael Demo in general has. And he doesn't slow down either. After he picks up a couple of pots, some players every now and then be like, okay, that was one hell of a heater I was just on. Let's take it easy. Let's see a couple guys bust unless I really pick up a hand. Not Michael Demo. He will keep going. This could be some fireworks in this hand, actually. Ace Queen suited in the small blind for the man who's second in chips against Michael Adamo's Ace Nine suited in the big blind, our chip leader. Yeah, these are the two big high rollers. These guys have been playing that nosebleed cash game on GG in the VIP games, and they've both been just throwing in tons of chips. They, I don't think they've been getting chips returned back to them, but they've been putting <laughs> the chips into the pot. Uh, there's the raise. Brewer of Ace Queen suited. What does he do? Hmm, it's a tough spot. You, you're almost always certainly the best hand. The thing is, you got 4 million chips. So do you go for the re raise? Do you go for the limp yep. jam? Do you go for the limp call? Don't I think he makes a it a million. Time. I think he makes it a million one or something. Oh, he just shoves. All right. Well, that should get it done because that is a little too much. No, Michael Adamo. Don't you even dare. Don't you dare. Don't He's you dare to flop. <laughs> <laughs> this is where Bruno Volksmann should do it just one time. <laughs> <laughs> well done by Christopher Brewer. Picks up a nice spot there of 400,000 chips. That was fun. I, I have the feeling 
I mean, we can never count out Evu Tim Riley. He's been a little quiet so far, but he's one out of a player. But I feel like it will come down to the, those three. It doesn't seem like it's Christoph Vogel saying's evening so far. Michael Demo, Christopher Brewer, though, Martin Zamani. That could be fun. Those three, yeah, I can see. I definitely agree with you. It's those three. The other guys are just waiting each other out. Christoph Vogel is saying, yeah, I, I, I'm counting him out for sure. You know why? He didn't switch seats. He was a chip leader that didn't switch seats. <laughs> they always get fifth place. They always get fifth or fourth place. Uh -oh. So he's in, he's in big trouble. And Rui Ferrer. He he's gets. in big trouble too, mate. Like, I know that his hand is ahead right now, but he is in big trouble. Okay, Nano, because the flop is going to come <laughs> queen, queen, five. And, and Rui Ferreira is going to be in all sorts of trouble. If he this decides. is a disaster. I mean, obviously, it's a coin flip, but like, no, Rui Ferreira is thinking there's two guys of so short, queen, so little Queen, chips. queen, five. Queen, queen, five. Here we go. <laughs> ace on the flop. <laughs> Of course, there's an ace on the flop. We need one of the last two remaining jacks, or Rune F will be eliminated. That is not pain. It's another ace. Well, I predicted two queens. It turned out to be two aces. Michael Adamo is running hotter than the sun, and he knocks out another player, and he is now closing in on 10 million chips. No, no, this is ridiculous. This is not even fair, okay? <laughs> I mean, you predicted that Adamo was going to win with the queen, but regardless, he did win with the ace on the flop. That just sucks so bad for Rune. Rune Evans is such a good, solid player, but like he hasn't performed that well um, the two times we've seen him at the final table. And that uh, one last really. Last week was pretty good. Last week he was pretty yeah, good. Yeah, fourth or fifth or so. But, you yeah. know, I'm thinking like top two, right? It's like really good. Regardless. <laughs> Wow, it's just you're hard hand. to please, Nano. You are just so <laughs> difficult to please. <laughs> yeah, he took top four last week. But I feel bad for him because in that spot, the two jacks is the chip leader who's raising every hand, right? But look at the thing. Two tiny stacks. Saquon and Bruno get a page up because Ruin F busts it out first. That's why you fold those nines earlier, you know? You get some page jumps here. If you, if you knew you're going to get page jumps, right, with the two nines, well, that's an amazing fold, right? Because look at his stack. It's so small, but it's okay because you just got some extra buy-ins. And Saquon is Zamani going to get it all in here, right? I don't yeah. see how Saquon could fold. Well, he is not going to fold. And Martin Zamani is absolutely not going to fold as well. Will we get a snap cam if we get an ace on the flop or anything like that? That's what I'm excited for right now. The flop is no good to Saquon. King on the Ooh. turn. Obviously, it doesn't help him. But he does pick up the diamond draw. Can we get a diamond? It is a diamond. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> and Martin Zamani giving us the all. I love it. Well, he takes it in oh. stride at least. Oh, man. Oh, I'm, that sucks for Zarn Renzo, but I'm so happy he used it. He, did you see the emoji? He, he did the yep. just one time real version of it. <laughs> this should be the Martin emote page, too. Well, Elkie first, okay? I will not rest <laughs> until I can get spam Elkie's face everywhere. But a shorter stack in the table is going to go all in with Ace Queen suited. And he may actually. Can he get a call of Michael Demo? Michael Demo is like, ah, oh, what about a deuce four five flop? You know, that's pretty good. <laughs> I think he could give him a call here. I think he can fold as well. Uh, folding's okay in the sense that you can put all the pressure on. You leave the short stack in there, but calling obviously is fine. All right. All right. I'm ready for it. <laughs> no! Yeah, of course. Of course. I'm home. You are kidding <laughs> look me, look man. Look no, go. Somebody is emoji too at the same time. The snap cake is like. <laughs> <laughs> this is ridiculous. Well, it's not deuce four or five, but a uh, trip trees on the flop. There is going to be the end of Bruno. He finishes in a sixth place, walks away with $81,000, I believe. Oh, I'll double check no. that. Look this, this is ridiculous, Nano. No. This and is absolutely ridiculous. I'm done. Two queens. It's two queens for Adamo. There's ace jack for Christoph Wilson. Christopher okay. Brewer's got two nines. This I tournament's going to be see over this. soon. <laughs> when, I say, when I said this is ridiculous, I didn't even see the next setup yet. Here we go. Oh my God. I could win a tournament like this. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> this is insane. What a run. Uh, this is this is this is so crazy. There's the three bet. Adamo's gonna go for the four bet. Can Christopher Brewer get away from the nines this time? We know he's, he shoved the sevens into those kings that started this chain reaction. Yeah. Right. Uh yeah, this is I this actually think good. they'll both get away. I think they'll be you like, think, you know what? You think, but you don't know, right? You don't know. Now, if Michael Demo uh, goes all in here, which I believe there is a good chance he will, then I think they'll both get out of the way. 
Oh uh, yeah. So okay. he's gonna put 1.3 million. I think this play is good. Adamo's got the image. The thing is, Adamo does four bet bluff in this spot, right? It's not like he's only playing aces kings. He really does. Like I'm telling you, this guy is capable of making plays. So uh, to nines, it's it's not let let it go, Christoph. Let it go, let right? It go. Let it go. Let it go, mate. Even even if you're good, you're not actually good. Well, he is going to make the call, and that means we've got three million chips in the middle at this point. Ace on the flop could slow things down a little bit. I'm curious to see how Michael Adamo decides to play this out of position. Yeah, this is a very tricky spot. He might throw out the 750k 25% pot bet, um, which a lot of players do. He might go for the check. I just depends on he's gonna actually go for the third pot on uh, the 10th pot bet <laughs> yeah i was about that's not a third <laughs> oh this is, this almost makes it seem like he's got aces or something you know the right. four that's bet free flop the tiniest bet ever on the flop what will christopher brewer do what a hand this is this be amazing like he makes oh, the he calls Wow, Christopher Brew is just thinking, man, Adamo wants those buy-ins back for that high roller. He just thinks he's up to no good. And Adamo is actually in a tricky spot because it does kind of look like Christopher Brewer has got a hand like ace-queen, right? Or ace-jack suited or maybe an ace-ten suited. So, like, yeah, the ace is very scary right now for him. What will Michael Adamo do? I do say that... Uh... I mean, obviously, this got to be scary for him as well. It's got to be uncomfortable because Christopher Brewer could have easily could easily have ace king suited, ace queen suited, right? With the way that he played this, with his three bet pre flop, then still making the call after getting four betted. So this is a very tricky spot for Michael Demo. The queens are still good, but it probably doesn't feel like his queens are good. Yeah, he's thinking: should he go for another small bet? He is going to go for the tiny bet. This is a, well, I don't know, 500, oh, what's through. the math on that? That's a nice bet. Um, it's a, it's interesting spot. I think his, his thought process there is, look, I don't want to let someone maybe take it away from me. I might still have the best hand. If I get called here one more time, probably just give up the river card. It was like one seventh pot. So I don't know in percentage wise, 16%, something like that, right? 17 or whatever it is. A little bit less than that. Well, guys, that means that we are heading into our first break. It's already been an hour. This hour truly flew by. It was entertaining. It was close at first. But the 10th edition of the High Roller Super Million so far is the Michael Adamo show. We can't put it any other way. He was a river card from being away from being eliminated first. He needed an ace or five on the river. He got the ace. After that, we all blinked a couple of times. And Michael Demo has 12 million chips and 133 big blinds. It's ridiculous. He has won this tournament two times so far. Can he make it three out of 10? It'd be an insane achievement. Even though today he is running hotter than the sun. We're going to take a very quick break and we'll continue our coverage of the 10th final table of the High Roller Super Millions played over at GG Poker in 4 minutes and 50 seconds. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.
All right, guys, we are back from our break and ready to continue our coverage of the 10th final table of the High Roller Super Millions played over at GG Poker as we are down to five. And it's the Mike Ward Demo Show. I'm not ready for this, Nano. I was ready for a close, contested final table, a lot of epic hands, but it just turned into one big show of Mike Ward Demo, who just wins every hand he involves himself in. Yeah, he's been running really, really hot today. Um, but, you know, in the previous final tables, he's always been in a spot where he had this massive chip leader against their opponents and just runs it over. The break happened. You know, his uh, boom switch is over. Maybe who knows what happens. He's got 12 million chips. Or 12 million? God. Usually it yeah. takes a long time for someone to get to 10 million chips. You know, we're always thinking, oh, finally 10 million chips. But he's been just crushing everyone. Let's see what happens here. Yep, as he gets uh, a little feisty here with the Jack Four suited. Of course, guys, this week the World Series what? of Poker what? main event starts off as well as Crystal Vogel saying is going to get super feisty with the Queen Four offsuit and takes it down. Damn it, then I was ready to hype up the main event, five dollar, five thousand dollar buy-in event, the largest online poker event in history. One of my friends will be playing it tomorrow. Actually, the lobbies are already up. But that was one hell of a play by Crystal Vogel's thing. Yeah, uh, the, the action is just too good. Jack Six opening it up right here in the cutoff. Um, yeah, that was a that was a crazy play just now. The queen just after the break. I think everyone's just thinking, look, we just got to target Adamo, but Adamo is running hot. It's a scary guy to target against. <laughs> yeah, well, at least uh, at least we see some chips heading to the other side of the table, which makes me happy. What I love as well is that Saquon came in as one of the shortest decks to this final table, like he's done before as well. He has made it to four final tables, which is obviously insane. But he's hanging in there, and he's been leathering quietly. Yeah, he's been chilling. You know, he's a quiet winner. Yeah, he, he did get two third places before. Um, but uh, I wanted to well, look at fours and queen jack suited. Maybe some action <laughs> happening here. I was going to ask you if, uh, did you see Daniel Negroni? I saw on his Instagram recently, he was playing the 5K main event that you were talking about. He three bet the queen 10 off suit, flops a straight. The guy leads into him. He calls. The guy, it turns like a blank card, but backdoor flush draw possible. Like the two spades come out. The guy jams and he snap calls. The guy has 6 5 suited on jack 9 8. The guy rivers a flush and then Dan Negroni is just like, oh yeah, obviously I called the nuts. Gets up and walks away from the green. He's like, this is bullshit or something. <laughs> Dan Negroni is just making some, some funny stuff happen <laughs> out there. I did not see this specific clip, but I have seen quite a few clips of Danny <laughs> over the last few weeks. And uh, uh, he, he's, been, he's been busy. He has been actually cashing in a, a, a sick yeah. amount of events, actually. He cashes in almost all of them. So that is very impressive. As we have Martin Zamani waking up here with the ACX suit in the big line. But yes, guys, the World Series of Poker main event is coming up. Flights are in the lobby. Day two is going to be played on August 30th. And the final day will happen on September 5th. It is going to be, uh, I mean, a ridiculous event, of course. So many players are going to try their luck at the online main event. Normally, it's 10K in Vegas. Now it's 5K online. It's going to be madness, Nano. Yeah, it's going to be sick. Uh, that's, is it a $25 million guarantee on a 5K event? Like, yes. that is such an insane... I, I just, it's, just, it's just too big of a prize pool. I'm just telling you that right now. It's too big. <laughs> What's insane is that the person who's going to win it is going to be one of the biggest winners immediately over a GG Poker. That's going to look good. When people click on your profile, they were like, oh my God, this guy's been crushing it. Well, could have been his very first cash, but that'd be one hell of a cash. And this could get interesting as well as Martin Zamani is going to get very feisty here with his King Queen offsuit. But Mike Ardamo has a real hand in the big line, the Queen Jack suited. Yeah, it was actually raised it under the gun and he's going to go for a call. Wow. Both players have absolutely nothing. Adamo's just thinking, look, this Martin Zamani guy's been snap, snap camming too much. Like, he's got to no good, isn't he? Makes a call. <laughs> Sorry, I mixed up my positions. I was hustling like four different pages over here. But that makes a little more sense when it comes to the sizing. Let's see what we get on this flop. This neither player really connects. The back doors are live, Nano. We have plenty of back doors, but that's about it. Well, not a diamond backdoor for anyone, just the spade one. Um, but uh, Zamani is just thinking, hmm, you know, 
was a king. This is a good bet. I think if Zamani can put one out, he's going to check though. I was just thinking, how often does the ace? Well, I guess Adamo could have some aces, right? Like an ace ten suited or something like that. I'm just I was just trying to wonder how often he has an ace because the thing is, if Adamo had ace king ace queen, if I would just shift it in pre flop, so the ace mm -hmm. is discounted a lot right now. Unless he's got a weak race. But yeah, that's an excellent point, especially with the way that Michael Adamo has been playing. It almost feels like he's trying to speed run this 10th uh, edition, but he is going to check it back on the flop, which means we get to see a turn, and it's the four of clubs. This is yeah, the Martin, moment. Martin's thinking, should he go for a bet? I, hmm. King Queen is good, decent amount, but I like the bet because he could be up against like a pocket eights, talk to nine side pan, just like, uh, I'm not going to make a call here. So he's going to. Take that one down. Okay, we got a second, clear second, or well, not clear, but you know, a, a good player to have second place, Martin Zamani, one of my favorites. He finished uh, third, I believe, in the second edition of the High Roller Super. Oh, Man. look at that! He, he, he just he just said, he, "Did you see the snap count?" He, yeah, apparently, he like, said, Whoop. "He said I'm back, baby." Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Vogel saying, once upon a time, a chip leader at this final table is going to open up the ace jack suited here from the cutoff. And Michael Adamo is going to make the call with 6 7 offsuit in the big blind this time. Doesn't really flop a whole lot. Yeah. I, mean, I just love him, like, you know, usually we get like one guy that's really cool to watch right, at the final table, but this has been one of my favorites by far, right? It's just been Adamo sun running people, but also playing like good poker and Martin Zamani just snap camming the crap out of this feature table and obviously other good ones too. This, this one's really, really been really nice. I, I feel like he, Zamani's getting so many fans right now. And that guy has a, his Twitter page too. So you guys should follow him. This guy deserves the love he gets. I miss uh, Rui Ferreira though. His emoji game <laughs> is on point. Like he, he's excellent with the emotes. We've got Martin Zamani here with a real hand. Ace King suited from the card up. But nobody really has anything, so we'll most likely just get it through. Is the, fun, I, the funny thing is, I want to say is Martin Zamani, right? He's playing like a five dollar sit and go player. I mean, not playing, but like acting like he's like <laughs> he's snap cam and stuff. But he's like a sicko, right? That plays all these high stakes, but always bluffing everyone and just uh it's just you know, but then whenever he gets to these final tables, he, he does things that you don't expect someone to do. Remember the hand, the final table that he busted out in in third? He bluffed off seven deuce off suit. Yeah. And he was, uh, it's just it's just hilarious. Well, I hope for... Actually, this could get interesting. Ace 3 is going to shove from the small blind. This is a Ooh. tough spot. Crystal Vogel saying, once upon a time, I chip leader. What is he going to do with the King Jack mm. suited here in the big blind? He's got an ice cube next to his name. Never a good sign. Yeah, I, I, Adamo would call here. I'll tell you that. I'm not sure what Kristoff's going to do. King Jack suited he makes the is call. usually the best hand. And he is going to make the call. He's not far behind. Nope. And he flops a king, which means that Saquon right now needs an ace. And, well, with a jack on the turn, it is all over already. Saquon is once again eliminated kind of in the center. Fifth place will walk away with $122,000. But that's obviously kind of unfortunate. Played solid, Nano. Just uh, couldn't really get much done. I mean, we're all just guests here in the Michael Adamo show anyway. So what does it really matter, right? Yeah, I think Saquon came in about eighth place. Uh, so, you know, top five is not, it's not bad, right? Got $122,000. Uh, Christoph Vogel saying is, you know, he's back in it. He's in second place. You know, he was looking like he was going to be the guy who didn't switch his seats and got fifth place, but uh, he's a, he's a, he's doing all right now. You're still upset at Connor, aren't you? <laughs> Connor, uh, he still hasn't done good, right? He had two final tables, had yeah. that fifth place in like that eighth or ninth or something. Uh, yeah, he will be forgotten. I'll tell you that. But these guys will not be forgotten. Four awesome players here. Uh, it's as good. It's right now. It's looking like Michael Adamo, but doesn't mean we're not going to get some good poker out of these these guys. No, and especially with the way that Michael Adamo plays, I mean, swings can obviously happen. And if Martin or Christoph gets a double up or Christopher, then all of a sudden the field becomes a little closer. The blinds just went up: fifty k small blind, one hundred k big blind. Makes it a le little easier for us to calculate the big blinds as well, which is nice. Of course, it's on the left side of the screen. You guys can always see how many big blinds everybody has there, but. 
it's a bit difficult for us to see. We've got the pocket jacks for Martin Zamani. When it gets down to four, though, I do kind of feel like that's Michael Ademo's territory, right? That's when he can truly pick up pot after pot and just keep growing. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like, the, these guys have all been fighting. All three of these guys have actually fought back against Michael Adamo. Christopher Brewer, you know, obviously been fighting the most against Michael, They're losing a lot of chips against him, but he just raised that five-deuce suit in the small blind against Adamo's big blind, which is very dangerous. We saw Christoph Vogel saying three-bet, like, the queen six offsuit, right? Martin Zamani three-bet him with king-queen offsuit. Like, these guys are not as scared of his opponent. Of course, Adamo's in the best position, but uh, these... They're, they're fighting back against him. They're not like the other final tables. I think they gave Michael Adamo more wiggle room to kind of just easily run over the table. But these guys are are putting up a fight. Queen Eight is going to be more than pleased with this flop. Christopher will lead out here, or at least will bet first with his two pair. And Martin Zamani makes the call with his nine seven. He had bottom pair, improves a little on the turn. He now has a pair on an open ender. Five on the river. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got a lot of outs, still. Brewer should still be betting. He's got a very good hand, but very vulnerable board. You don't want to let those eight nines get a free turn card. Seven nines, club draws. You know, so many hands to name. Mm -hmm. What's the bet size? I think big bet is Six the on size the to go. 650. I'm 650. going bigger. I'm thinking yeah. seven, 800K. But regardless, uh, oh. he is going to go for a really big bet. You just got to protect your hand. Plus, if you had a big draw, you probably would bet really big too, just could try to force some folds. Well, big it is. And it's actually kind of a tough spot for Martin Zamani because obviously he would have loved to just see a river card and see a 10 or a 5 roll off there. That's not the case. He oh, makes the, oh my goodness, and the snap call from Christopher Brewer needs to avoid the 10, 5, or 7 on the river. And if he does, he picks up a monster pot and he will avoid all those cards uh martin zamani is not out but he is left crippled with less than eight big blinds wow no yeah. what a pot yeah that's a tough spot i mean when brewer bets big you represent a big hand like two pair or you represent a big draw and i think martin zamani think look maybe i can get my opponent to fold some uh some weak queens or something like that or but then again his opponent could have easily have a draw there when you go for the big bet so very nicely done from christopher brewer trying to trick his opponent Got Zamani to put all the chips in there. Uh, but Zamani, yeah, he's ice cold now. Seven big lines. I hate to see him lose all those chips, but we've seen short stacks run it up. So, you know, he's got a, yeah. uh, what? Madama's got 15 X's stack, but, you know, he can get there. Uh-oh. Brewer, wow, man. Christopher Brewer. He's got no fear. I love the way that Christopher Brewer is playing this. Just ships in the sixes there, takes it down, and gets Crystal oh. Bolesang to fold the ace then. Well, how many hearts on the flop, Nana? Just tell me, how many hearts? <laughs> Two, three? Is so, it all over immediately? I mean, give Martin a chance, right? Give him a chance. I love this guy. Let's not knock him out yet. Oh, oh two hearts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but the oh, jack on running. the turn, the full house. And that means that we will get a double up here for Martin. Well, that's nice to see. Still kind of short, less than 15 bigs. But hey, that's one hell of a turn because the flush did get there, Nano. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he's just talking to the camera. He's talking. He's back. He's back, guys. Martin Zamani's back. One point. Everyone's having a good time. This is a yep. great final table. He's just screaming at him. He's just like, I'm back. <laughs> I, I do feel I got very serious vibes out of Crystal Vogel saying. I feel like Michael Adamo is just like, he's ready to just take it all down. He's like, let's get this over. The Queen with. 3 offsuit for 33 yeah. big lines effective. Did you see? <laughs> He's like, there's a good game happening over at GG Poker tonight. The nosebleeds are popping up. He's like, guys, kind of want to wrap this one up. Then we got Christopher Brewer. He's like, I signed up for that game as well. Martin Zamami is just memeing. And then we got Crystal <laughs> Vogel saying, quiet and just waiting for the right spots. This could get interesting. A6 suited against A9. Yeah. Um, you know, Zamani's not going to fold this flop. This is a good yep. flop for 8 9, obviously, right? Oh. Uh Check, check. So check on the flop. And I think Zamani should bet. I think he can get a lot of folds from like those king highs, those ace highs on a turn card. I'd like to see him shove even. Just go for it. Put it all in. I, I mean, mean, I don't think you need a shove, but you know, I think a, a 320k is good enough. There we go. Ah, this, 
taking it down, Nana. That's all that matters. So <laughs> 500,000 chips mean a lot to him. They mean a lot less to Michael Adamo at this point. And Adamo here down to 10 million chips going to raise. Let's see the king queen. Brewer has been fighting a lot against yep. Adamo, even out of position. I mean, it might be a lot of history from the cash game as well, right? That we're not aware of. You've been watching it. I've been railing it. But obviously, these guys play so much, it's impossible to catch all the action. So we'll see what happens here as Mike Look, Rodamo does pick up mid pair. These two guys have played pots that are bigger than the first prize. Okay. It's 392K, <laughs> which is a lot for first, but they've played pots definitely over 392K involve each other. Well, all we know is that that game won't be slowing down anytime soon. This spot, Michael Dammer might decide to uh, take a stab at it here on the turn. His seven should be good more often than not, but he is going for the check, actually. Slowing down, Nano. Yeah, just slowing down. It's like, you know... Well, Adam was also a very tricky player. He shows up with big hands in some tricky spots uh, because he does check back turns and flops uh, with some draws and pairs and things like this. Um, I don't think he's going to check their river card. Uh, he probably will go for a, a pretty big bet, actually, I'm going to guess. You know, oh, it's interesting. Brewer bets pot, okay. Well, and he got snap called by Michael Adamo with a spare of sevens, and Michael Adamo will be back to 11 million chips. I don't mind him taking a stab at it. Unfortunately, it's hard to get Michael Adamo off a hand because he always has something. <laughs> I mean, Adamo played that really good because a lot of guys would just bet the turn, and I probably would bet the turn too, right? It's like, well, it seems like I have the best hand, but uh, you're able to induce a pot size bet from Brewer. And what's interesting as well is that both Michael Adamo and Christoph Vogelsang only fired a single bullet to get to this final table. Meanwhile, Martin Zamani and Christopher Brewer fired twice, so rebuilt just one time. Two hearts on the flop. I feel like I know where this is going to go. I think on the turn this time, no, no. I think, I believe, a jack of hearts on the turn or something like that. Make it really gnarly, the deuce of hearts. Oh, that'd be disgusting. That'd be really, really bad. How, the five of hearts is possible. Yeah, too, that'd be right? the worst. Like, the five of hearts would be the absolute worst, but I don't even want to, I don't, I don't wish that I won my worst enemy. Okay. Bruce is just like, I'm out. I'm just going to fold the yeah. pair of fives now <laughs> to save myself. Yeah. Well, speaking of fives, pocket fives this time for Christopher Brewer. Uh, wonder what Chris, Christopher Vogel saying will most likely tag along here, right? King four suited mm -hmm. in the big blind. Yeah. Pretty standard here. Uh, flop is pretty bad. Um, Brewer's got the initiative, so he could throw out, <laughs> you know, one of those 25, 33% pop bets. Just try to 220. take it down. 220 seems like good size. Wow, that's very small. Yeah, 25%. Just take it down. Um, but, you know, Vogelstein's been very solid, right? Like, he hasn't been crazy. Yep. He's been making plays very occasionally, and it, it's got a good image to do so. Uh, but very solid. Kind of reminds me of Isaac of Haxton, Europe the way he plays. It reminds me of European a lot. I was mm. wondering if you agree with that. But I'm getting very heavy European vibes from the way that uh, Vogelstein is playing this final table. Ooh, A6. Oh, man, this is... This... I think you call here. I think Martin Zamani is going to make the call. Yeah, he's 16 big blinds. It just sucks that you got 16, 17 big blinds here. But the thing is, small blind, big blind versus small blind. I don't, I don't love it, but true. I feel like I'm good. <laughs> I love it. He, <laughs> the he will see that he's ahead, but he needs to avoid kings and eights. The flop is safe for Martin. No, oh, no. no, 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 no. Ace. ace. Ace and an ace only, that is not an ace. And that means that Martin Zamani will be eliminated in fourth place. He will walk away with $163,000. We absolutely love having Martin at the final table. This was the second time we saw him. Fantastic character. I love the fact that he brought out the snap cams. And I truly hope that we can welcome him back next week or the week after that. And that means we're down to three, Nano. I mean, hey, I, it's love, good to see Martin Zamani FU Tim Riley do uh, get another deep run. He, we've been waiting for him to come back, and he delivered yeah. today with that snap cam um, stuff like that. Uh, you know, he, he didn't love it, but we love him, right? And uh, hopefully he'll be back. <laughs> and he was right. I mean, the A6 was a hat. So you need, to, you need to hold. Sometimes you just want to see an ace in the flop, get it over with, because against those kind of hands, and most of the time, that's all you need. Unfortunately, that wasn't it. We are down to three. 
And I gotta say, both Christopher Brewer and Christoph Vogelsang do have a more than decent stack, though. Uh, this can definitely go on for quite some time. Yeah, it's a, it's gonna be a battle. I think we got some very aggressive players and guys who are not afraid. So chips can fly very quickly too. Everyone's guaranteed two hundred and twenty thousand uh, dollars. Third place is just about second place is just about three hundred k. First place is almost four hundred k. So they're mm -hmm. playing for a lot here. Two straights, weak, one weak straight, one bigger straight, but there's a flush out there. Yep. Obviously, Christopher Brewer does have the seven of clubs in his hand, but this is kind of just a weird spot, I think, for both players. Michael Demo is going to feel pretty good. Most likely bet 250, maybe? Michael, I don't know, he seems like a big wow. bet kind of a guy. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like, but that doesn't seem like he's going to let his opponent get off cheap. Ah, what a spot for Christopher Brewer. I think he'll get away from it. I mean, it's tough because it is Michael Adamo. You know what he's capable of, but... Oh, and he's going to make the call and he's going to see the bad news. But Michael Adamo does have the higher straight. Oh, man. Michael Adamo is so good. It's, it's ridiculous. Maximum value there. Like, a lot of guys would just get two 300k like, you, you know, you were thinking about betting, but, like... Knows his opponent. When you're running hot and you got a bad image, you got to go for the maximum because you're going to get the much paid off. Whoa. Ooh, it's, it's well, I hope that Michael Adamo is not feeling too feisty over here because this is a hand that not even he is going to win anymore, Nana. I'm going to go out on a limb and say it. I know it's a risky prediction, but I don't think he wins his hand. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, I agree with you. Oh, that's a great card, actually, normally, for Christoph Vogel saying. Because some guys have, like, ace-king, they oh, I got a boat, I'm going to get all the chips, I'm going to double up, how do I get all in? Uh, but obviously, Adamo is, can't really keep firing here. He's going to check. Do you think he checks back, or maybe bets incredibly small? I think he keeps... I feel like he's going to bet... He can play some counterfeit hands, pretend he's got like a pocket fives, you know, get called by king highs and things like that. But also, you want to get value from that ace. Because if you try to get in four million, okay, he's going to go check. I was going to say, if you try to get in four million chips on a river card, it's like, I guess he can still get it done. I don't know. But he did river a pair of nines. Yeah. I mean, doesn't mean too much on this board, but it could mean something. But Michael Adamo, I don't, I don't think he's going to get too crazy. He is going to make a bet. Now, the big question is, what is Christoph going to make it? I mean, he's obviously praying Huge. that Michael Adamo has an ace. Yeah, he will most likely yeah. make it mass. But it's going to make in... it like 2 million minimum. Minimum, but probably more is my yeah. guess. Okay. <laughs> Maybe just ship it all in and just hope his opponent has an ace. Yeah, that'd be a sick move. Imagine if Michael Adamo did have an ace. Ah, I like that, actually. I think Maybe yeah. just go for it. Target the ace. Ah, oh, makes it relatively small, actually. He's going for the small race. He, I guess he thinks that Adamo is capable of calling with a flush here on the river card. So, or King High. <laughs> yeah. Or King High. Or a pair of nines. Yeah. Yeah. This is uh, very annoying for Adamo. He's probably thinking, man, this really does look like my opponent has an ace. Does have an ace. He doesn't have an ace, but he's got quad eights. <laughs> You know, what's really cool is if you play the cash games at uh, GG Poker, there's all these jackpots running throughout the entire day as well. So if you have one of these spots that get blown up a little bit before the flop and then you flop quads, you're like, ding, you get like a little circle around your uh, uh, box. Oh, is that right? Your name. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah, it lines <laughs> up and you're like, nice. <laughs> and then at the end of the hand, it's like, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> awesome. A good feeling. It's a good feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Yeah, uh, you know, Christoph Vogel saying he might he might jump into those nosebleed games after this. So who knows, right? Because like he's he can play those big games uh, for sure. And I've seen him play some pretty big games. So I wouldn't be surprised if it, you know he, you win this tournament. Like you're feeling good. I actually was watching uh, Easter Dams. I don't know if you're familiar with him, a Twitch streamer from GG Poker as well this afternoon. And he got into this insane hand. He was playing a, a 1K cash game and he had Ace Jack suited. He flopped the nuts basically. And the turn is another club. And the guy just bats 700 into him while there is like 280 in the middle. And he's like, What? He's like, There's only one hand that beats me. That's seven, eight of clubs. But why would he ever do that? And he calls off obviously with the Ace High flush. 
bam, the other guy has seven, eight of one, seven, eight of clubs. He's like, no, what is he doing? What? That doesn't make any sense. And the guy got the 4.6K uh, straight flush jackpot as well. Oh. And he's just like, this is ridiculous. Can somebody clip this? Like, <laughs> it was pretty insane. It just would have, it would have been perfect if he just snap cammed them too, right? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I was just like, but I, I was watching the hand live and I was like, okay, what could he possibly do this with? But why would you ever do that with a straight flush? That makes absolutely no sense. And gets the call from the ASI flush. It was pretty fun. Anyways, back to the action here as Michael Adamo fires a bet on the turn with Ooh. not a whole lot. The river doesn't nice really call. improve either player. Caught off a pair of deuces on that board texture. That's a, it's a really nice call. He's got me thinking, look, Adamo's been getting good hands, but like he's, I know he's bluffing sometimes. This is actually that one time he is bluffing. Adamo, is he going to go for another bet? Yeah. Yeah. A, a Christopher Brewer's been a little bit sticky lately against him. Yeah. So he's thinking, man, is he going to not fold his, you know, eight, nine type hand? Is 10 jack? Who knows? 10 eight. I mean, Adamo. you said it. Christopher is fighting back. And Michael Adamo is obviously aware of this as well. And he's like, should I try my luck one more time? Oh, oh my, my God. goodness. Oh, in. No, no, no. Yeah, I was about to. How do, how do you, but how do you even ship all in to 600K in the pot? He's got 3.7 million chips behind. He just ships Because he's got no in. fear and he's Michael Adamo. That's why, Nano. Wow. What a move. What a move. The Jack High just takes down another pot. Yes, the next hand is already. <laughs> Going on the way, and Crystal Vogus then picks up two pair here with his Queen Nine suited. We're gonna get the Remote. best hands today, aren't we? This, this is this has already been this is an amazing final table. Like I, I've seen spots in Michael Adamo shoving like hundred big blinds and, and stuff in the cash game. I didn't know what he had because his whole card's down right in those VIP games. There's probably some crazy bluffs happening in that game that he's doing. <laughs> we need to get him to stream one time. That'd be yeah. amazing. <laughs> Well, Christopher Brewer cannot catch a break now. Thought he could maybe just take that down with a little bet, but that is not going to happen at all. And Crystal Vogelsang actually having more chips at this point than he had at any moment throughout this entire final table. So that obviously got to feel really good. He used to be an ice cube. He's got flames next to his name right now. You know what's hilarious in that last hand? It's just that Christopher Brewer's been calling down Adamo, been getting shown down to good hands. He finally gets the good, correct call when Adamo's actually bluffing, but Adamo just still puts him to the test for all the chips and he has to fold the best hand. Yeah, he had a pair of deuces. I'm just thinking, yeah. like, Christopher Brewer is actually fighting back against Adamo, but, like, he's just getting, getting destroyed right now uh, against him. But uh, he's still got three million chips. He's still in top three. Christoph, nice. he's been really solid. Like yep, he's got over 30 big lines and he should be able to take this one down as well unless something very crazy happens and this is actually a pretty big pot already over 700k in the middle yeah brewer did raise the limp from the big blind the ace high flop great flop for him just should be continue betting can easily get called by worse worse ace queen x uh, is going to go for a nice size bet what do you make of the avatar of michael adamo I feel like that, that pot kind of tilts me. Whenever I lose in a, a pot against somebody using that avatar, it upsets me. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Like that, it's like it's what you think about when you see someone in Michael Adamo playing. You just think about this pug. Uh, <laughs> it's just like it's crazy. <laughs> Christopher Brewer will take a little pot down here with a stand seven offsuit. No, I mean, I know that it's been the Michael Demo show so far, and he's obviously in prime position to take it all down again. And that'd be insane. He'd be our first three-time champ. He's our only two-time champ, but he'd be the first three-time champ. But I believe there is a lot of play left, especially in Vogelsang, who picks up two pair here against Christopher Brewer, who does pair his check. Man, they're flopping monsters, by the way, for like three-handed. They're all flopping <laughs> such strong hands. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Brewer, hmm, he might... He might put a small bet out, might check. He is going to check. Almost hit two pairs. Close. Uh, just hit the, the eight. Just doesn't hit improve him at all. Uh, Kristoff, going to go for some value here. I, I just feel like you really should go for value. When your opponent checks back the ace high board, they usually got some showdown value because if they had, it's a good board for them to continuation bluff. So going for the bet here is a big bet too. It, it's quite good. No, I don't think Christopher Brewer is going to get too out of line here. 
It's just too many hands that beat him. I think he might call here. Uh, oh. Just there's a lot of draws, right? Like this is actually a lot of draws. I think Vogelstein is going to go for another big bet here. He knows his opponent looks like he's quite weak, and you, a lot of times, like when they check back this flop, you go for a big bet and turn. You're going to continue going for a big bet with two pair. Could you oppose that? Like, even? Would you? He bet might overbet. He might bet like 1.5 million. He might bet a million. He might bet 900k. I think all these bets seem in line with the way uh, he's playing the hand so far. He's taking his time, making it seem like he's got a real decision. And he is indeed going for the overbet here. 1.6 million. And Christoph cannot call this. Yeah. Or oh, Christopher. I hope he gets out of the way. And he will. He's obviously the clear shorter stack at the table at this point. I believe that the blinds will probably go up soon as well. In 12 hands, if I see that correctly. Well, I mean, 30 big blinds. There is no need to panic. But it does feel like, it's like, oh, I need to do something. Because you've got Mike or Demo on the table. So if you don't do anything, you're just forfeiting every hand. And obviously, you cannot be playing like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, we know Brewer is going to keep fighting. He's just thinking about whether he should call a three bet. He is going to call. But outflopped by Adamo. And um, you know, we've seen these two guys play each other a lot. And, you know, usually this would be a small pop. But I think there's some chips going to go in at some street. They just go check, check. Another heart rolls off on the turn as well. Michael Adama with his ace deuce suited, but not the right suit for this board. Well, most likely bet here. Yeah, we know he's a tr pretty tricky player to trick back, check wow. back that top pair. Wow. So actually, no chips are going to go in. Um, so save Christopher Brewer a couple of big blinds there. Big blinds he desperately needs at this point. So it will go check, check on the river as well. After one more heart rolls off, obviously a very scary board. Michael Demo is going to be pretty pleased about the fact that he will take that down despite not having a heart. A screen. Christopher Brewer might just call here. It'd be the wrong moment to race. Well, we know Adam was going to raise, whether it's against a limp or a raise, he would be re-raising. He is going to see a limp. I mean, it doesn't really matter if he has ace queen or not, right? Most likely would still race anyway. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. That ace could have been a three of hearts, and he'd probably still do the exact same thing. <laughs> He's not going to make it cheap. And let's just hope that Christopher Brewer doesn't just suddenly snap and is like, all in. It's like, no, this is not the moment, mate. Don't do it. Uh, I don't think he's going to do that. He's just thinking about limp calling, which he does. Oh. Outflops his opponent, and uh, damo has got two over cards. Yep. So obviously picks up the gut shot as well. Every ace, every queen, every king is good for Michael Adamo. But at least Christopher Brewer is in the lead for now. Gonna just fire out some chips. Try to take it down. You got a good hand to consider multi-barreling with. Brewer, I'd love to see top him raise here. Yeah, I'd love to see him raise here. Especially against Michael Adamo, the way that he's been playing. If he does have a real hand, he will most likely continue anyway. But at this point, you gotta be good here. Small blind against big blind with your jack. I'd like to see him race. But even if he does think he's good, um, he is going to raise. I would say he could also call down his opponent, which isn't a, a bad option as well. Uh, so he is going to go for a check raise. Adamo is not he going to fold. Go he's not going to fold. No. I feel like he might even just ship it. Yeah, he might. <laughs> no, uh, He is going to call. He is going to call. The five of clubs is no good, which means that Brewer is still in the lead. I mean, there's almost more in the middle at this point than he's got left in his stack. I'd love to see him bet big here, if not just go all in. Yeah, and when you go for the check rate at this point, you got to commit the chips at some point. It's yeah. just, he is going to shove. It just seems like you, you can't check raise this to start playing passive now on this turn card. You just got to take down what's in the middle. Adamo yeah. is not going away yet. He might consider call. He's just trying to think how often he's up against a draw. And how often he's up against like uh, a jack. He might, he probably doesn't expect Christopher Brewer to check raise a hand as weak as jack seven. So he might be discounting some top pairs a decent amount. I love the way that Christopher played his hand though. I mean, we've got whole cards up so we can see everything, but I absolutely love the way that he's been playing this. And he's really putting Michael Adamo to the test. And if you take it down here, I mean, that's pretty damn sweet, right? Because that's a massive pot and you avoid a potential very scary river card. If you get called, well, you got it in good. That's pretty much the best you can do in poker. And then you just yeah. hope that you stay good. 
So Adamo's trying to think how often he's up against a draw right now in a jack. Um, is he any occasion? Oh he my god, he makes the call. the call. All right, what's it going to be, an ace king or a queen? <laughs> I don't know if he's going to get there this time. No, yeah. he doesn't get there. Wow, that is very exciting for all of us. And that is great news for Christopher Brewer, who's been playing some really solid poker. Back to six million nano. We've got one hell of a final table because all three of these guys can very realistically win it at this point. Yeah, we got a really good match going on here. A two nosebleed high rollers, Adamo, Christopher Brewer. Everyone's a good tournament player, clearly. Christoph Vogel was saying just throw him in. He's just super solid, super aggressive. Adamo made that hero call, was incorrect, but did have decent equity. Is going to three bet the first hand after losing that pot. So we'll take it down. He's, of course, still the chip leader with 8.5 million chips. This can get interesting as well. Ace eight suited against ace nine suited in the small blind there for Christoph Vogelsang. Yeah, so Vogelsang is going to call here. Should get a little three way pot coming up. Yeah, we don't see that very often, but this could very well be a three way pot. Christopher Brewer is closing out the action with his seven nine suited, and he will tag along for the ride. And Michael Demo flops best to the surprise of absolutely nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he did lose a bunch of chips recently. He I was know. up to 12 million at one point. I know. I'm teasing. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, that run like... he had earlier was sick, though. Come on. <laughs> it was super sick. Obviously, you got to remember, he had nine big, like well, 13 big blinds to come into the final table, but as the shortest stack. Um, he's going to bet. I don't think Vogelstein is going to fold. I feel like with this hand, it feels like you got enough backdoor draws. You might be the best hand. It's a tiny bet. Seems like Vogelstein is going to continue. He does. Doesn't he only have the spades as the back door draw? Yeah, but also the best hand. <laughs> That's enough, Banana. <laughs> Nana only needs spades. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do get a spade on the turn. So. Uh, Adamo, he might bet, bet check back river or check in his side. He is going to check and I think Adamo, I'm trying to think, can he get value on the river card? Is, uh, I think Vogel's saying thinks the ace nine is good enough to just check down. No, really, no good reason to turn into a bluff, in my opinion. Uh, but he is thinking about whether he should try to represent the king. But I, I like to check. Can he get called by worse? What do you think? You mean if Michael Demo bets here? Well, do you think he should bet? I'm just thinking. I'm not. No, I, I am actually okay with him calling. There's quite a few chips in the middle. That's a million. Okay, he is going to fire a very big bet, actually. 740k. Yeah. I mean, what could you get called by? Sixes? <laughs> Fives? <laughs> well, he's, yeah, pretty much. He's targeting those hands. He's trying to make his hand look like a bluff because he's thinking, look, if I bet tiny on a flop, check back this turn card, you don't think I've got a king. When you bet big like this, it looks like you're trying to bet a king and only a king. So Adamo has been playing very tricky in his hand, trying to trick his opponent. And it might get Christoph Vogel saying to maybe, maybe put in some extra chips. I wouldn't love to see it. I think this is a hand. I mean, I guess against Michael Adamo. I feel like if this was someone that's not Michael Adamo, I think Christoph Vogel saying would probably just get oh. out of the way. He makes the call. Michael Adamo getting insane value out of his pair of eights. They're on a whole nother level now. My brain can't go there yet, okay? I'm a work in progress. <laughs> yeah, this, this match is there. too high level. This is too high level tier. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's insane. Wow. Incredibly well played by Michael Adamo. Unfortunate for Vogel saying that he's wrong there, but he does pick up pocket tens the next hand. Uh-oh. This could be trouble. Why do I feel like another six or an eight is coming? <laughs> well, Vogel saying pretty... It's an okay flop. It's not the best, but, you know, could be worse. Could be a lot worse. We've all seen the ace king queen flops. <laughs> it's like, well, <laughs> it's gonna get tough. So there's the call, and people, both players pick up a straight draw. Mm -hmm. Now, suddenly, an eight would be absolutely no good to Michael Adamo, but five or a ten on the other end would be the sweet dream. Yeah, Adamo's thinking what he should do. Would it then be a disgusting a river card? Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, there's only two tens left, so it's I know. 
Not that often, but actually Adamo is leading out on the turn card, which is very interesting. I think the, the, pl the thought process here is, well, I can take it down, but I can bluff a lot of better hands. You know, there's like the, the seven X's, you know, like the king sevens, the queen sevens. These types of hands would raise the button bet the flop this way, you know. Man, um, yeah. I can't get over that previous hand. <clears throat> like, I understand... If he bets and he gets called there, as we have a queen of hearts on the river, so that's no good to Michael Adamo. Like, if he would have made a smaller bet and then he gets called by the ace high, I'm like, yeah, okay, I can see that, why you think ace high is good. But that was a massive bet, right? It was 900k in the middle, you bet 740k. But I mean, this bet, this this pot looks like it's usually it's going to be, it's usually a check call, check, check, turn, and check, check, river. But this one's got 2 million chips in the middle. Adamo might even go for more chips here, trying to bluff. Here, uh, this is this is some insane. Oh puzzles. my it's god! Michael Adamo, stop! Oh, oh, and he gets the fault, of course. <laughs> so he takes it down with his <laughs> pair of sixes. Gets Crystal Bogusang to fold the tens. Of course, wow. it was an ace on the board. How ridiculous, Nano! Can we make a highlight reel? This I feel like we can make an entire highlight reel out of all the hands that Michael Adamo has had so far at these final tables we've seen in Metcos. It's insane. He, he, he did this is some next level poker wow you got the pocket tens to fold normally i tell you, you put those two hands in someone else's shoes and that hand would have been a 500k pot and it would have been checked <laughs> down to the river show it down nice hand pocket tens and uh michael adamo on another level he's raised the nine five he's gonna bet out here but the four seven has got enough to continue here no, no, it's been a long time since I've had a poster of anybody hanging in my room, but I think I might just get a Michael Adamo poster on my wall, okay? To get some inspiration going every time I log into the GGB client, because this is insane, absolutely insane. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's really crazy. Vogel saying it here, he's got, I want to pick up the backdoor flush draw. I don't <laughs> see how Adamo's going to win this hand, but uh, he might, he might find a way. I mean, as long as he just bets turn shove river right and uh, and uh, christoph doesn't make a hand earlier he shows us that he can hit the cards if he needs to hit them and now he's showing us that he doesn't need to hit to still take down big pots obviously with the nine five he doesn't have a whole lot going in this hand but <laughs> yeah it's uh he like i said like when he has a hand he gets maximum value because he got a terrible image and you can see why he's got a bad aggressive image it's because he's so crazy right like he just makes the insane plays so you can't fault christopher brewer now right for making some of those calls he did before because Absolutely oftentimes not. he would be good like there's a hand where it was an ace 10 board four bet pot and he called up two nines you know like he knows this guy's up to no good and yeah you gotta admit when someone's crazy though they have to hit some hands sometimes right it's just mathematics so you, you can't <laughs> can't be like oh man he i run in so bad <laughs> A6 against A6. This could be fun. I could always be, like but it. Usually, usually not too fun, right? Because when you're holding these two cards, uh, no one ever hits anything. But usually, they make it fun. But usually. with Michael Adamo, I feel like this could be fun. That's yeah, why I said. <laughs> Three bet. Yep. There. Oh, you, Roddy, you know it. You know it. <laughs> and what will Christoph Vogelsang does? I hope he calls because then we get a really interesting scenario <laughs> to see how they play out the same hand. But that is not going to happen. Michael Adamo is going to take another pot down. Ooh, got a couple okay. of baby pairs in the hand. If they were shorter, they I would see Adamo just shipping it in. But Adam, Christopher Brewer's got 53 big blinds. This would be too insane of a play. So he's just, just going to call. And uh, King three seven. way coming. I think yeah. three way is good. Nano's famous words. Uh, Michael Adamo is for us to act here with his pocket deuces. Nobody really flops anything. So the fours of Christopher Brewer are still good. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the pocket deuces is betting out. Uh, Michael Adamo is Three way. insane. It's insane because he's the first one to act. This is a board texture that actually hits both his opponents reasonably well. And Brewer calls up two fours. Wow. This is an insane. This is a great read. They're playing so high level. Like we have seen a lot of fireworks. We've seen awesome like hands just play out against each other. We've seen crazy rivers, suckouts. But these guys are playing incredibly high level poker against each other, and um. I'm just loving it. I'm in awe at this point. Another bet from Michael Adamo. Adamo actually is trying to lock Diane in because, like, checking puts him in a really tricky spot. He knows his opponent. If he had, like, some high card hands, probably has to give this up. 
can Brewer make a call of two fours? Because that would be really sick, actually. Well, if he thought he was good on the flop, he probably oh. thinks he's good on the turn and he will make the call. Seven on the river doesn't change anything. Is Michael Adamo going to make another one of these crazy river bets? Or is he going to give this one up with his deuces? Uh, I don't know how to predict this, but I can say that I wouldn't fault him for checking. Oh, Christopher uh, is going to be so happy to see that. Yeah. A check on the river. He checks it back immediately and he will get received the good news that his fours are still good. I love it. He played that very well. The Bogle scene is thinking like, what are these two guys doing? <laughs> what the? <laughs> Didn't he have a seven? Yeah, he had king seven, right? He's like, I had a seven. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this has been, I want to say, the best post-flop hands we've seen, right? Yeah. Like, it's, just, it's such insane stuff so far. And it's not even over. We're still going on. <laughs> the blinds will go up, I believe, uh, after this hand. We see one more hand. Uh, but obviously, still plenty of big blinds for everybody to play with. Michael Adamo does spare his stand on this flop. And Christopher Brewer really doesn't have a whole lot going. I know there's a backdoor flush draw, but that's about it. I think Brewer might throw in a min bet here, though. His opponent just has so many different hands that usually will fold. Uh, but obviously, the queen 10 not going anywhere. Well, the deuce of spades means that Christopher Brewer is officially drawing that in his hand. But still win it if he decides to get super out of line, but that is not going to happen. I'm expecting this hand to just end anytime soon. The next player will walk away with $219,000 in case they get eliminated. You already said it. Second place is around 300 k and first place is close to 400000 We have 210 entries this Sunday. For everybody that just tuned in, this tournament always starts on Sunday. I believe it's something like 7 or 8 p.m. Central European Summer Time, and they play all the way down to the final table. And we cover the final table live here on the Tuesday evening for the Europeans. And we do this every Tuesday. It's been a lot of fun. Make sure to follow the Twitch channel if you haven't done that yet. This is definitely not the only thing that GG Poker is showing you guys over here. Lots of cool coverage of a lot of the different crazy events that we've got currently going on over at GG Poker. And uh, it's been fun to tune in at any given random moment. Yeah, and uh, obviously big prizes, huh? Speaking of big prizes, it's 400k per first. Everyone's guaranteed 220,000. It's about a 75k pay jump right now if you can survive one more guy. And these guys, they play the highest stakes. And, you know, if you have the client, you can always see that there's usually a $200,000 USD buying game. We've seen guys with like a 1.6 million stack, like a limitless. Uh, you guys should check that out. And, you know, these guys are right now, they're trying to win buy-ins for that game, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Christopher or Michael Adamo, if they get heads up, they don't write, see you later tonight, you know, because <laughs> that is probably uh, what will happen again. It's been a ton of fun. It's been a lot of people within the client as well watching that, right? And a lot of streamers, even though those streamers are not participating in the game, they are just broadcasting that game over at Twitch. They'll be like, we're railing it and we're just watching these hands unfold together because they are playing for crazy money and they're playing some crazy pots. So this hand had some uh, passive action on one street and uh, looks like Brewer going for a lot of value. Can he get the value from queen, queen six? It's it's a tricky spot because pretty much it's yeah. a bluff or not. You either got it straight or you don't. That's what Vogelstein's exactly. thinking. I wouldn't mind it if he calls here and I'd be wrong, of course, but I, I feel like these guys, Christopher Brewer and Michael Adamo, they will make that bet, whether or not they have the straight, right? And you just can't always be folding to these kinds of bets on the river. I think he's going to make the call, but he is incredibly good. He is a regular in the high roller circuit, so maybe he gets away from it. But it's tough, man. With the way that these other two guys have been playing, I understand he makes the call. He's wrong. He will receive the bad news, but I don't hate the call, Nano. Yeah, I, I don't fault him. You know, he's up against two guys that are very capable of bluffing. Vogel saying... Came in as a chip leader. It's now the shortest deck. But he's still got a good amount of big blinds to work with. Yeah. Anything can happen. We know anything can happen, right? Michael Adamo came in as the shortest deck. is clear chip leader. 
I mean, so did Isaac Haxton uh, a couple uh, weeks ago, and he ended up winning it. Isaac did fire five bullets, I believe it was, <laughs> on his way to winning the entire thing. Mike Ordemo this time, only a single entry. I actually believe, I mean, I'm going to have to double check that. Maybe somebody can confirm that for us. But I believe if Mike Ordemo wins this time, is that the first time he wins it of a single uh, bullet? Because I believe in the previous <laughs> tournaments, he always fired multiple bullets. I'm not Hold sure, but... Like I, I want to say that I can, I'm not sure I'm, I'm certain he's already cashed for at least a million dollars in this 10K Super Millions alone, right? Because he's won at least 400K twice. So what you're telling me is that's a hundred bullets. Is that what you're telling Look, me? He's got a hundred bullets. <laughs> he can play this for life. Even his <laughs> retirement home, he can still be playing this tournament and still bluffing all the, the new young kids out there. Mm -hmm. All right, next hand, we've got uh, King-8 offsuit taking on 10-jack offsuit. They both have a pair. Actually, a relatively slow pot for these two, Nano. I'm not used to it. <laughs> Where's the yeah, fireworks? There, there's a lot of chips still going in there. Like, I think Adam was going to lose like 700K here or something, right? Like, there's the 764K. Oh, my God, call. and these snap calls. Wow, you are spot on in that one. <laughs> Going to go see the bad news. Christopher Brewer closing in. Not quite the chip leader yet, but that'd be the first time tonight that he would be the chip leader at this final table. Just 300,000 chips behind Mike Ordemo at this point. Yeah, Christopher Brewer has three final tables, I believe. Two yep. eighth place finishes. But it's the first time he came in as a good chip, a chip stack. He was in second place, right? And you picked him to win this tournament, and he's, he's getting it done right now. You know, last week, uh, I love the way that Arthur played that final table. I honestly thought he played spectacular. And my dad likes to watch the show as well. And then he came in the next day. He's like, yeah, I, uh, I didn't really like the way that he played. I was like, what? He's like, no, I like the other guy. And I forgot who we were talking about. Uh, and then one of the guys that finished second or third, he's like, no, I didn't think it was that special. And I was like, ripping the only hairs out that I have left. I was like, no, dad, <laughs> he played amazing poker, but it's just the absolute polar opposite of how my dad plays, you know, typical. Yeah, he's not like, He's not going to like this stream at all. He's going to be like, these guys all, they play $2 sitting goes, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. My dad would never say that, but he'd be like, too aggressive, too aggressive. There's no need for that. I was like, no, aggression pays. That's what separates the good from the best, but. You know, he'll get there one day. We've got Queens for Michael Ademo opening up here from the bottom. And Crystal Focusing actually has a pretty decent hand. Three-handed, King-10 offsuit. You're going to feel pretty good about that more often than not. Yeah, Focusing is thinking about making a play or maybe at least calling. He is going to call Queens. Well, I think Crystal for him. Yeah, he will probably tag go. along for the right. He's closing out the action. Why the hell not? Yeah. Christopher Brewer does make the call. Oh, my God. What a flop. What a flop. <laughs> but, you know, the thing is, three people have m kind of marginal hands. Brewer's got the most interesting, most playable one. Yeah. The other guy's just got that kind of pair straight draw type thing, and it could really go either way. Mm -hmm. well, Michael Adamo was the pre-flop aggressor. Let's see if he decides to continue three ways on this board. He will, 25%, goes into the middle. Christoph will most likely not go anywhere. His hand is just a bit too good to fold here, right? Exactly. You don't call King-10 offsuit to fold this kind of a flop, especially against this bet sizing. And now Brewer, uh -huh. I think Brewer's thinking like, mm, well, it does kind of seem like someone's pretty strong, but then again, they kind of seem like they could be marginal, like King-Queen, King-10s, you know, Jack-10 type hands. So I can see him going both ways. Oh. And he makes the best hand. Yep. <laughs> Trip Jacks for Christopher Brewer means that he is now in the lead. And something, imagine a queen on the river. Oh my goodness. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be something? <laughs> I don't think the queen is coming, but, uh, personally. But you know, you never know what happens. Well, Action I know, on. Nano. The, the odds are in your favor that the queen is not coming. I get that part. <laughs> but... <laughs> All right. What does Christoph decide to do here with his power of kings? He's thinking about turning his hand into a bluff. He's thinking, maybe I can represent the jack. Seems like someone's got an ace, someone's got a king, and maybe they'll fold. And to be fair, if he leads out here, it does look like a jack, and it should get some folds out normally. He's just trying to think if it'll work. He's like, mm, I don't know. Let's just save those chips. Christopher Brewer is now wondering, how much do I bet? I feel like in a three-way pot like this, you can absolutely bet a decent amount here, right? 
Oh, he, bets. he goes pretty small. He doesn't want this to get checked through. And I like the bleed out because he didn't have the initiative. The reason is Adamo, when he bets 25% of his flop and then he sees the jack on turn, is probably just going to check back the river card a lot on turn card. So he gets the action and it's a full house. Yep. Full house on the river for Christopher Brewer. And I don't think he's really going to get much out of it, though. I like the fold of Crystal Vogelsang there as well on the turn. But it does make sense, right? Because at that point, you're no longer drawing to the nuts. So what if you do make your straight? You could still be potentially drawing that. So I like the fact that he got out of the way there. Over a bet. Yeah. He's going to fold this one. And he will fold rather quickly. That's something I love about Michael Demo as well. He's a fast player too, right? And he rarely makes like the wrong decision in the heat of the moment. But All right, Nano, we are in our second break. Well, we have been absolutely loving the action here at the 10th edition of the High Roller Super Million. Hopefully you guys have been enjoying it as well. We are down 2-3. Christopher Brewer is in the lead for the first time tonight with 83 big blinds. Michael Demo, as you guys can see, is still second with 70 big blinds and in third place is our initial chip leader heading into this final table Christoph Vogelsang he still has 20 big blinds to play with though so chip to double up and anything is still possible if you don't follow the channel yet guys make sure to do it we're gonna have a quick break ourselves and we'll be back in a couple of minutes to continue the coverage of the 10th edition of the High Roller Super Millions played over at GG Poker
All right, guys, I am back. Nana will be joining us soon as well. We've got 50 seconds before the action continues. Of course, just want to mention one more time, there are some big World Series of Poker events happening over at GG Poker. The WSOP number 71, the Big 50, is starting off. Uh, well, day one flights are in the lobby right now. Final day will be August 23rd. And then, of course, the largest online poker tournament of all time, the main event, $5,000 buy-in, $25,000. Uh, $1,000 buy-in is actually coming up as well much later. That's number 70. I believe that will be played. Is that the Players' Championship? It is. 10 million guaranteed. Players' Championship is always a special one, but of course the main event, I believe, will kick off tomorrow. A lot of day ones will be firing up, and the final day of the main event will take place on uh, the 5th of September. Lots of day twos will be happening on August 30th. I'm actually really excited for the Players' Championship. I wonder... How many of the traditional names will be playing online in the Players' Championship as well? That will be really fun to follow. As you are back. Welcome back, Nana. Yeah, that uh, the 25K you're talking about, is that right? That, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah that that's... tournament's going to be huge. Uh, so people won like millions on that one, and uh, it's going to happen again uh, coming up soon, like you said. Uh, I want to get back to this final table. This has been... One of the best, right? It really has been yeah. one of the best ones. So it might be the best one I've watched so far. It's not even over yet. I feel I'm like excited. we say that every week, though. I feel no, like, but uh, like this like... one is really up there. It's really up there. It's really up. And I mean, we've got a new chip leader. We didn't really talk about it because it happened in the last hand. But Christopher Brewer is the chip leader for the first time tonight. Michael Adamo had an absolutely insane first hour. The second hour didn't really run as hot as he did in the first one. Let's see. Well, he's he's, back. he's got two pair, right? He just out, yeah. out flopped, out turned. <laughs> Fires 210,000 chips into the middle at the turn here after making two pair. Of course, if you guys are new to the stream, don't forget Mike Ordemo is already a two time champ. We started this tournament 10 weeks ago. He has won two out of nine editions up to this point. Insane. And now he's at the final three at the 10th edition, going 3 out of 10 would be, be ridiculous. I mean, that's just not even supposed to be possible, is it, Nano? Like, how's, how's, two, how does two anybody do that? Already, 2 out of 10 is already sick, right? This is his third final table, right? Like, he hasn't gotten any, uh, any other place besides two first so far. <laughs> that is correct. If he makes the final table, he wins it. <laughs> <laughs> he only wins. Um, regardless, he is going for an over bet here. And Brewer, you know, like, he knows this guy's up to no good. Uh, usually you'd be like easy fold, but you don't you don't know what's gonna happen here. I think this time, yeah, he's he's gonna get out of the way. I really think that Christopher Brewer has been playing excellent tonight. He's really been put to the test many times, and I feel like he's been right way more often than he's been wrong. We've got two pretty big hands here, small blind and big blind. Christopher Brewer is making a play at the wrong moment because Queen Three suited absolutely has the worst of it. Yeah, uh, I think uh, this should save Christoph Vogelsang because if Brewer didn't raise, uh, it's definitely would have got the chips in. So a shorter stack will get out of the way and Christopher Brewer will get out of the way as well. Michael Adamo picks up a pot here with Ace-King suited and Monster in any condition, but especially three-handed. And he's like, well, Ace-King suited was good. Check five suited could be pretty good as well. Let's open up with a raise here. I think that Christopher Brewer will defend as he will make the call with the 9 7 offsuit. You put this many big blinds with some other players, this thing could be ours, right? This, you put this many big blinds with these guys, this could be over real yeah. soon. Who knows, right? It could be a long time as well. Regardless, that's what I love about poker, just kind of like the unpredictability of it, right? And the thing about Nolan Mahold, you know how they say, well, you can always put someone up to their, all the chips to the test, right? Like, this is. These are the guys that can do it. You know, as, as cheesy of a, uh, a catch line that is, I don't... <laughs> I'm just waiting for some more crazy bluffs, right? Like, it's it's going to happen. Yeah. And you got to remember, all these guys have seen it happen, right? Because they're definitely watching the whole cards up. I do think um, that they're going to slow down a little bit as long as Christoph Vogelsang is in. Because obviously with 2 million chips, he's a definite short stack here. So I don't think Christopher Brewer and Michael Demo are going to make it too crazy. But as soon as they get heads up, I don't really care how many big blinds they have. That could truly end every single hand. Well, Brewer does bet. Gets called by just a six high. 
His pair of tens, of course, is still good. Let's see what Michael Adamo decides to do here on the turn. Yeah, I think Adamo either going to go for that really small bet or he's going to check back the turn. He is going to check. And Chris here, can he get value? I think I would like to see Christopher Brewer go for some value. I think my read would be that Adamo would consider firing like a straight draw or a flush draw on a turn. So it does seem like Adamo's got an eight usually. It does kind of make sense to go for value at this point. Well, he will go for the tiniest bit of value. That mint in value on the river here. <laughs> and what will Michael Adama do with his ASI? Makes the call. And we'll see the bad news that he is beat by a pair of tens. So Christopher Brewer extends his lead as the chip leader. Not by a whole lot, but every little bit helps when you're facing Michael Adama. Well, you can see their VPIP is 52%, right, for Christopher Brewer, but running hot. Adamo also playing 50%, but running ice cold again. So it's just those two guys, the, the temperature is based on how they win pots against each other, mainly. <laughs> Crystal Vogel saying, does make a pair of jacks here. Obviously played a very weak hand, but we'll see the good news that he makes top pair. Hoping that it will stay good. Brewer will most likely fire a bet, of course. So he is the chip leader. He's going to put some pressure on the smaller stack. But this time, Vogelstang will definitely not get out of the way. Yeah. What are you thinking? You thinking he should check call, check raise? What's your move, right? Just call. I think we'll. I don't think we'll just call here. And obviously, when I say that, he's going to raise. But I would have been okay with him just calling here, and then let's just see what the turn brings, and then we can always get a little feisty on the turn. Well, Christoph is thinking about it. I do. He does go for the check raise. So, yeah. um, you know, usually you advocate for the check raise, right? But, you know, it's all good. No, it's yeah. I, I mean, I'm okay with it. But since he is the shortest stack and he flopped really good there, I would have liked to see him get a little more value out of the hand. Because, yeah, now you pick up three, four hundred K. But where does that really bring you, right? You're still at 25% of uh, both Adamo <laughs> and Christopher Brewer. So I feel like maybe... Try to get a little more out of it there. We should see a ship from Michael Adamo. Um, I want to point out, though, their time banks are shrinking. The guy who's known to be the slowest player is the guy with the most time bank, right? Christoph with 4.3 minutes. But Brewer's on 57 seconds. Adamo's on two minutes, and they got a lot of chips to play for. So, the, you know, that yeah. what that means is more mistakes could potentially happen or more impulse plays. Um, which make, can potentially make mistakes, could also make crazy plays, who knows. But uh, these guys are obviously world-class players, but they've used a lot of time bank, and it could really come into effect uh, going into yeah. heads up coming up. It's funny as well, because I really don't have the feeling that Christopher Brewer has been a slow player at this final table, not at all even. But it's just that he had a couple of very tough river decisions, if I recall correctly, and he was put to the test. And most of the time, he made the correct one after he took some time. Yeah, that's a really good point. He only has 50 sec 57 seconds left in his time bank. Christoph is going to reshove the mm -hmm. ace five. I like it. Makes down another pot. Still hovering around the 2.4, 2.5 million. But if he gets a single double up, then he's obviously getting very close to the boys again. Pocket trees. What are we going to do with that? He's thinking about just shipping it in. He doesn't want to get blown off of it by just min raising. Um, that's what I, I'm. Yeah, that's what he's. I think that's what he's deciding. Maybe. Yeah, just yep. gonna ship it in. Well, Brewer is going to fold. Michael Adamo on the other end does have King Jack. Can he sniff it out? He might be thinking, "Look, you got a pair and only a pair," but uh, he does fold just in case because he's not. I don't think Adam was actually played that much of Vogel saying. Uh, so he wouldn't know his game completely well. Regardless, 10-9. Uh, Vogelstein's got another good hand to consider reshoving with. It's going to be facing a limp, though. Yeah, since A7, like post-flop, doesn't play that well. I wouldn't mind it all if he gets very aggressive here pre-flop. Just try to take it, take it down and take down another pot. And that's a decent way to chip up. And that is exactly what he's going to do. We'll rack up one more pot. Now at 2.8 million. He's getting there, Nano. <laughs> so here's Christoph Vogel Singh. Let's see. 
Wow. All right, he's getting he's getting fight. He's like, I picked up some yeah. chips. Let me burn them all in one hand right now. <laughs> well, Christopher Brewer might just actually put him to the test and just go for it here. He's like, all right, this has been happening a couple of hands too many. He's just going to make the call with Ace A. They both make a pair of eights, and that is very bad news for Vogelsang. So there's a check, and uh, Brewer's got to think his hands usually pretty good here when you see someone check to you on this board you're thinking okay well if they had a jack they would bet there's too many straight draws out there jack's very vulnerable they say i think it's maybe time to go for some value is gonna no. bet a bit it's a pretty big bet right it's like 60 percent of the pot and what will christoph vogel saying do here with his pair of eights <laughs> I love it. That is adorable. <laughs> As Nano's got company, that is so cute, mate. I am loving it. Sorry about that. Uh, just you know, it's a nighttime thing, but uh, I'll mute her out if she starts making some crazy noises. <laughs> it's all good. We've got another six on the turn, so both players improved to two pair. Crystal Ferguson will probably think that his eight is good here more often than not. The thing is, this time it's not. Christopher Brewer has a much better rate than he does. Yeah. So he did bet the flop, right, Christopher Brewer? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Christoph's thinking about maybe leading the turn. They, 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 they like to do this. When they pair a card, they just bet out small because they don't expect their opponent to bet the bottom card. Uh, they can represent the trips more. Also locks the hand. So if they have two, like two over cards, it, they kind of don't get to hit some free equity potentially and wow, there's the jam that's a good read that is an excellent read christopher brewer is just continuing his great place tonight and the vogel saying has a very tough decision at this point if he falls here he's left with 1.7 million chips i mean we're talking 14 15 big blinds at that point can you imagine getting all the chips for value there with the asa that'd be pretty sick well, normally I'd say no, but with the way that Christopher <laughs> Brewer has been playing tonight, I'll say yes. <laughs> I've been very impressed with him. I feel like he, he had a tough start to the nosebleed games. Obviously, I don't keep track of everything because they're playing at crazy hours. But I remember the first few times I tuned in, he had a pretty rough run. The last time I tuned in, he was actually doing a lot better at the table. and had a much bigger set than he had before. And I mean, his track record in this tournament doesn't lie. Back-to-back -back final tables. <laughs> Vogelsang will make an excellent fault here on the turn, but like I said, it does kind of leave him crippled down to 14 big blinds at this point. You know what's funny? It's my, my baby made noise when she made the fault, when he made the fold. Yeah. It's like she knows what's going on. We got a <laughs> poker prodigy in the making. <laughs> well, just 18 more years and then we'll, uh, we'll see it at GG Poker. <laughs> Got a little pot brewing here between Christopher Brewer and Michael Adamo. Pair of sevens for our Canadian. Well, we have two Canadians. Actually, we have one Australian, right? Just yeah, Michael Australia. Adamo's from Australia, yeah. Melbourne. Christopher Brewer might even be an American that relocated for to Canada yeah. for this. Because he did play a lot of life at the bike, like you said. So that'd be strange if a Canadian is traveling to LA to play life at the bike. It's like it's a pretty fun game, but <laughs> might be pushing it a little there. All right, goes check, check on the turn. I mean, they got a million chips with some weak hands, and, you know, it's all about Christopher Brewer taking out Adamo this time. Vogel saying is like, what do I got to do to double up over here? Yeah, Christopher Brewer is indeed American. I just double-checked that, but that makes a lot of sense since... Otherwise, you wouldn't be playing in the local LA game. Look at Michael Adamo just calling with the ace king here, hoping that Vogelsang has something and decides to ship it all in. And then we'll see another one of these 0.1 second snap calls. And we do get a race. Oh, oh. nice. Very well done from Adamo. Usually, usually would just pick up one big blind, right? He got it, got it. Three. Well, we are not the only fans of that play, I can hear. <laughs> so, Michael Adamo will take down the fought. Crystal Vogelsang is truly starting to become very short stack. Ten big blinds at this point. Needs to make some plays. What is he going to do with the 8-6 suited? 
of course, Vogelsang came into this final table as the chip leader. He is going to go all in with 8-6 suited. And he will be live against the pocket fives of Christopher Brewer. What a flop, flush draw as well. Ah, we're going to need an 8-6 or a diamond. Or we are down to heads up and we do get the 6. So Vogelsang will double up on the river. Well done. It's all about that coin flip with the 6-8 suited. You know, like, you, you don't usually see it, but it happens. Mm -hmm. Back to 2.7 million. That's where he was before he lost a couple pots. So <laughs> Still uh, our absolute shortest stack, of course. So we're down to three, but leaves him with a little more play. 20 big blinds at this point. Well, that's going to feel good. Takes down the next spot as well with his ace three. This is one hell of a match. I'm loving it. Michael Demo has definitely been cooling down. Obviously had the hottest possible first hour. Just picked up monster after monster and picked up even better flops whenever he got involved in big pots. Second hour was a little more difficult. And uh, so far, after our second break, not really too much going his way either. The A7 is going to ship it all in and we'll take it down. That's Christopher to fold a king. Well done. Vogelsang picking up a little bit of steam here. Some much needed chips. So we have Christopher Brewer opening up another pot here with 9-6 suited. Vogelsang will defend, of course, with Queen Jack offsuit and makes a pair of queens on this flop. Yeah, so um, like you said, Christopher Brewer has been playing pretty good. Finally got the momentum, right? He came in second place, doing good. Going to go fire that continuation bet. And Vogel saying he's just kind of been hanging in there. You know, like he, he's been making some plays here and there. Does go for the check race. Takes it down again. And it's a really close match here. I think this is about the amount of chips he had coming into the final table. Let me just double check that real quick. But if I recall correctly. Now, he came in with 4 million chips. So he's down a little bit. but He's down two big blinds. <laughs> yeah, down two big blinds after there are two hours of play here at the final table. That's not all that bad. Didn't grow as much as the other two guys did, but hanging in there. All right, so these two guys. Similar hand-ish. But uh, Brewer's got the straight draw. But we know Adamo, is, he hasn't been folding like uh, these ace highs. He's going to go check. It's not too much in the middle this time. Gets the straight on the turn. Obviously another heart as well, but Christopher Brewer is going to feel very good about his hand. Going to fire forward one big blind. What will Michael Adamo do? I just feel like there's so little to fight for here that you may as well let it go. He does not let it go. He will make the call. Yeah, there's no letting go in the, between these guys. I feel like now you should overbet. Like 600k. You want to be a hero, Mike Adama? <laughs> oh, no. He's targeting the ace high, I feel like, with this bet sizing. And he will get the call. Well done by Christopher Brewer. Takes down a pretty nice spot where it felt like there wasn't much to fight for. Turns into a 700k pot. This could get interesting as well. We've got pocket sixes on the bottom. Vogel saying has the deuces in the big blind. We'll most likely just make the call. No, he's going to go all in. Oh my goodness. Vogel saying ships all in with the deuces. And what will Christopher Brewer do here with the sixes? If he calls, he is in an amazing spot to get himself in a heads up match with Michael Adamo. And he makes the oh, call. He does Mano. make the call. Vogel saying is in so much trouble. He needs a deuce or a miracle. Well, just a <laughs> <I'm not sure laughs> <if>. <laughs> I love it. Could it could chop. It could chop. I don't think no. it can now. No, it, can't. Right? it can't. No, it can't. That was not a paint picture, so it had to be yeah. paint. No? I mean, we can. We don't have two uh, nine of clubs in the deck now. No? <laughs> Let that be. That be very unfortunate. So we're heads up now, right? Um, yep. GG to Christoph. He he came to the final table as chip leader, got 220k for his payout, but it just seems like these two were meant to battle it out, right? They've been battling each other out in the 500, 1000, 2000 game. They've been playing pots after pots throughout this final table. 
It's your man, Christopher Brewer, the guy I yeah. picked, Michael Adamo. So this is just the dream scenario right now. I know the Roddy and Nano blessing is more real than ever before. <laughs> yeah. Now, Crystal Vogelsang played an awesome uh, final table, of course, walks away with $219,000, I believe it was, or $213,000. Well done to him, but he came in as chip leader. So that, ah, uh, you know, you're definitely always aiming for a little more than a top three finish, but. Had a roller coaster, started off not so hot, came back, then was almost out, crawled his way back a couple of times. But I gotta say, that was a crazy shove with the deuces, though. Like, he wasn't that short, Nano. Like, if he's like 12 or 13 big blinds, I get it. I thought this one was a little bit reckless. What do you make of it? Uh, I think it's fine because he's up against two guys have been opening the button a lot. So, you know, if you don't flop a set, it's really hard to win the pot. So you just kind of try to take it down. Of course, the flip side is you will run into some hands that can call you and you're in really bad shape. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think it's a bad play at all. Just a little bit higher variance. Uh, but definitely okay. fine against guys who multi-barrel a lot. Like, if you're playing against uh, more passive players, I think uh, it's very different. Because then you can be, calling's probably better because they don't really blow you off of your deuces. You can check call one, check, 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 and know where you're at. Well, Christopher Brewer is going to get the bad news that he actually lost with Jax, the Jiggities heads up here. It's Michael Adamo made a pair of queens. 11 million chips against pretty much 9 million chips. I'm loving this. Oh, I'm feeling it. I want to go two for two, though. You know, last week was actually really cool because I predicted Artie to win, right? And then he did. And after that, I fired up GG Poker myself, played a couple tournaments. And then was a guy, he's like, yo, run it down from the stream with Nana. I was like, yeah. He's like, oh, cool, man. Who won? I was like, Artie won. He's like, nice pick, mate. I was like, yes. <laughs> so that was really cool that I was actually playing with people on GG Poker. They were watching the show as well. I really enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Regardless, whoever wins, it's, I mean, one of these guys, I love to see win it because they've been playing that notes league game. You get my respect instantly like that. But I always had a lot of respect for both of these guys. It's two guys with a lot of chips to play for. But they both like to overbet. They both like to make call downs. Yeah. I feel and like this, this is, is one of those get... spots, right? right? Like this yeah. one of spots is an overbet and there's a call coming with that middle pair. Yes, there is a call coming. Man, Christopher Brewer is playing amazing poker tonight. I'm loving it. What will Michael Adama do? Is this another one of his crazy river shops? Two and a half million in the middle? <laughs> no, <laughs> he's going to check it down. And Christopher Brewer will receive the good news that a six is good. Man, he's playing good tonight, Nano. Damn. Yeah, he's playing very good. And you got to remember, Adamo, he does like to make some crazy bluffs, right? But he's got to realize at some point, Christopher Brewer has been calling him down a bit more often. Maybe it's the time to maybe try and mix it up a bit, try to catch Christopher Brewer off guard um, because he just keeps trying to call him down. And Christopher Brewer, you got to remember, though, he's also down to 17 seconds of shot clock. So... He's going to have to make his decisions very quickly. And against a guy who makes really creative lines, it's going to be very tough to play against. Christopher Brewer has cashed six times out of the 10 times that he played this event. That <laughs> is one half. Yeah, that is an absolutely amazing record as well. And now, of course, heads up. This is by far and away his best finish so far. He said it a couple times. Previous two final tables, he went out in eighth place. This time, he's heads up. And he's got the chip lead over Michael Adamo, our two-time champion. It's been cool as well when people ask me on, on my stream. They're like, so this tournament is like random? Like who wins? I was like, no, we've had like seven editions and one guy oh. won it twice. Wow. Oh. Sorry, I don't want to interrupt you, but Adamo raised 160000 bet to $1.2 million and got called by third pair. But Adamo was actually good. He rivered the, the, the two pair of the deuce. Well, it's an even match now. Which yeah. means we're pretty much even. This is one <laughs> hell of a flop, by the way, for Michael Adamo. Flops the open and it's straight draw. And he's got the jack high flush draw to go with it as well. And Christopher Brewer is betting into him. Makes a pair of queens. Now Christopher Brewer is like, I've got an open and it's straight draw. It's something. <laughs> yeah, uh, he does check, so save some chips. Adamo, I feel like he's going to go for some value against like a 10x type hand. Yeah, that, that would make a lot of sense to me. He can, he can represent some bluffs, but uh, doesn't get it done. We'll take down the pot, though. We are so close in chips. Just uh, basically three big blinds away from each other. As Christopher Brewer does pick up a real hand. How is he going to play the ace-queen offsuit here in the heads-up match? He's just going to three-bet Michael Adamo immediately. 
Yeah, going to make a big re-raise. Uh, the deeper stack you are, you want to go for a bigger re-raise. Cut down that stack to pot ratio. 10-9 still calls, but this is one of those... See, whenever you call a lot of three bets, like you can have a lot of creativity, you know, you can represent a lot of hands, but the deuce five, five is one of those boards where you're just like, uh, there's really nothing I can ever do. doesn't matter how <laughs> crazy of a player I am. Like, what am I going to do? Represent the deuce? <laughs> it's like, yeah, maybe po pocket fives, you know, that would be a raise hand. But queen five against queen six. I'm loving it. I want to see. The, I could watch these two guys play against each other for hours. And hey, maybe later tonight over at GG, over at the <laughs> nose plates. <laughs> yeah. They might just go for round two there. Yeah, you got to remember, Adam was also that guy. He he played the biggest pot on GG cash game, $850,000 pot and lost it to Limitless. Yeah. Uh, so like this guy's not afraid as you guys already know. Brewer, he's been playing some like 500K plus pots too. Uh, and I think losing and winning some of those. So, uh, yeah, it's great. An over bet there with Queen Five doesn't have anything. These guys are just really going for it. I feel like he's been probably watching the stream as well. And he's like, all right, Micro Demo, bet a lot with nothing. I can do that too. <laughs> and I'll call you down with like middle pair, bottom pair, third pair. It doesn't really matter. The race here with the King Eight offsuit. Christopher Brewer immediately putting in another race with A6 and he gets the call. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, you know, Brewer, Brewer's playing fast. Of course, he has to. The shot clock is running down. King-8 offsuit is a limp call pot. So they both pick up a straight draw. I don't think they're both going to, you know, be happy with their hand to still continue. And it's got to be a bit stressful, right? With only 15 seconds left on the shot clock, that's basically nothing. So Christopher Brewer really doesn't have a lot of time to think about his decisions anymore. Nobody really makes anything, which means that the ace of Christopher is, of course, still good. Yep, so does get checked down. Christopher wins another one. So they're they're playing a $100,000. What did he uh, write? Uh, I can't see that. I'm going to... I'll see it. I'm going to find out for you. I've got you. Yeah, you figure it out for me. I feel like he said heads up match and, and, and the nose leads after this or what? <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what I was wondering as well, Art. I mean, both of these guys have a lot of uh, respect for each other, I'm sure. Like, when you've been playing mini hands at those games, like, you, you got to give your respects up. They are playing a $100,000 heads up match right now, just to give you a heads up. So, Check race. I can't read it either, but it, I know the last word of what he said was brutal. And then the other guy, and then Michael Demo said, yeah. They must be talking about the nosebleeds then, right? They, they must be. Maybe they're playing there too. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not sure. Maybe he's thinking like, "Oh, you've been running bad." He's like, "Yeah, uh, that's my guess." But anyways, Adamo check raised the flop four three. Christopher Brewer actually called him queen ten high, and then Adamo kept betting the deuce, and I took it down. It's really unfortunate. I wonder because there's definitely a line of text above the word brutal, but can't figure it out right now. Two pair for Christopher Brewer in this hand against the ace ten of Michael Adamo. It's quite a bit in the middle, actually. Another club rolls off on the turn. And obviously, Michael Damo does pick up a gut shot as well. This could be a pretty big pot now, no? but it's not going yeah. to be. Good thing he didn't bet that turn card because he wouldn't have gone anywhere. That's a really bad river card for Chris Server. Now he turned his, he needs to like show it down. Mm -hmm. Well. I feel like there was a worse with River Card. There were four jacks in the deck. That would have been a lot worse. At least now he still wins the 1.1 million ship pot. So it's all good. Sometimes you got to be happy with the small victories. Oh, action flop? Yes, semi action flop. But, uh, okay, turn card. Action cards, flop? Snapchat. Yeah. <laughs> action turn? Action turn. <laughs> Let's see how what Michael Adamo decides to do with his flush. He's going to bet out 245,000 chips. Of course, Christopher Rue does have the king oh. of spades, and we get another spade on the river. So Christopher Brewer makes the higher flush. Yeah, I think Adamo's like, hmm, can I get value from worse? Is going to bet a small bet. And can Brewer maybe potentially get more value by raising? It's, it's a tricky spot because this. It's always scary 1. to raise. 1. Ah, 1. It 1. does 1. raise. Nice. Yeah. Knows he's ah. got the best hand. Yep. I love it. I, I absolutely love the play here. If you're Michael Damon, you're like, hmm, 
I've got two spades in my hand. It's always possible. The thing is, a nine of spades isn't even that bad, right? Like <laughs> every now and then they'll, they'll make plays with a worse spade than that. It's not the yeah. dream flush, but it's somewhat decent. I mean, their time the high makes are really running low now. He's got a tough spot and he's got to act quickly. Oh no! Oh, no. All in. No, oh, what? 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 Adamo is the best. What just Honey? happened? He just reached up, tried to represent a full house, and got his opponent to fold the bigger flush. He turned his hand into. He went for the value bet and turned it. I don't what? know. It's, it's an insane hand. Mate, what just happened? I thought that was it. I was like, that's it. That's it. It's over. Christopher Brewer takes down the tournament. But then he didn't. And he snapped for. I mean, he obviously has like very little time left in his time bank, but he had 13 seconds. I mean, could have been worried about the full house, of course. Could have been the ace high flush that he was worried about as well. But wow, I did not, I did not expect <laughs> him to fall there. You, you, you can't ever. You got to be scared, thinly value raising against Michael wow. Adamo because he can always just put you, put you all in again. I, can't <laughs> I don't know, believe man. that. I can't believe it. What another just sick poppy move by Michael Adamo. Takes down a pretty big pot. He's not quite there yet. There's still a small lead for Christopher Brewer, but those things so bad to see those back as well because it could have been over now. This could have been it. Yeah, this <laughs> he, he is this very unpredictable. I mean, I don't fault the king then folding. Usually most people are not bluffing in that spot, right? Like, how can they be bluffing? But you're up against <laughs> the one guy who definitely is capable of it. And uh, now he probably regrets raising the king high spade. They, had the, they well, still heads up. They still got a lot of chips to play for. Like I said, these chips can fly in no matter what. Doesn't matter how many big blinds they got. That is that is insane. Wow, and he snap folded it as well. It's crazy. That is crazy. Michael Demo. Nine point two million chips <laughs> at this point. Doesn't really have Your a whole heart's lot. Your racing, isn't it? It's just yeah, like, no, man, I, the hands are I, too crazy. Mentally, I was ready to declare Christopher Ruiz the winner. I was like, that's it. Like, it's over. Mike Ardama will not be the three-time champ. <laughs> we know he's won it twice already. <laughs> but You got to watch these hands. He just overbet the jack. Hey, how, how, how does Adamo win with the worst hand with no flop, no nothing? He just somehow finds ways to win. Because betting is good. <laughs> betting, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, A7 against A4 here. So if nothing crazy happens, they could chop it. But we know that with Michael Adamo, there is no guarantee for anything. It's going to fire half a million chips into the middle. And they both make Broadway. That's kind of funny. Yeah, and, uh, that's a nice call from Christopher Brewer there. Just ace high. Was, knew his hand was reasonable. And now they're both like, okay, how do we get some value here? Actually wasting a shot clock here. <laughs> valuable, <laughs> valuable seconds because nothing is going to happen in this hand. Yeah, that's why I'm thinking. Like, if you got a no-brainer hand, just play quickly. Look, Christopher Burr used one second there. <laughs> well, Michael Demo might just go for the call here. Maybe just ship it in. Maybe hoping that his opponent has like a pair on a flush draw, but that ain't happening. They've yeah, got the same uh, hand and they're probably aware of it as well. Ooh, this could <laughs> Let's and, uh, represent another full house, Nano. <laughs> they're, they're not folding. There's no way because no one would ever. I mean, Adamo's probably going to shove because he doesn't expect two pair to ever raise the turn, but there's no way Christopher Brewer is ever folding this in. No, nope. okay. this time he does make the snap call. And they'll both receive the kneels. We are going to chop this one up. I have, Ooh, I'm still recovering from that hand. They're dead even. I'm recovering, Nano. I can't take <laughs> it. <laughs> He Take folded a tournament victory. Oh, no. <laughs> Adamo is three betting. They both have the 7x, 2.6 million. Adamo's got the straight draw. I love to see him bet this one. He is going to fire. And the backdoor flush draw as well, of course. So he's back in the lead. He was actually down like 5 million chips almost at one point. And he has now taken a 2 million chip lead. But it doesn't mean that much with the way that these two players have been playing. Oh, 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 man. If if Michael Adamo does win it after that crazy hand we just saw with the king high flush being folded, that's be, be insane. Okay, look. In in the beginning, Adamo was running hot, right? Like, just running good. Like, just, just cracking everyone. But now he's been bluffing every know, single pot. Now he's a clear chip. Like, this is... 
this is the guy that all oh, we love to watch, right? Like he's playing amazingly. And Christopher Brewer's been time. playing really good too. Um, okay. okay. <laughs> no, he's going to go far on this one. It'd be really insane. <laughs> so the king high is going to be good for Christopher Brewer. No, you're spot on. He's definitely not been running as hot anymore in the last hour. It's just been all poker skills that made the chips go Michael Adamo's way. But man, that hand, that hand, Nano. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, and you got to hats off to Michael Dom to even make that play. It's such an insane play to make, right? Like, your, your opponent's representing a king or ace high flush, and, and you try to bluff him off and gets it successfully done. I mean, like, there's so many things happening on that board as well, because, of course, it was a paired board, right? So, yeah, I don't, I don't even know. I don't even <laughs> want to think of analyzing that hand. I'll leave it up to oh. you. You wrote something again. But it's so hard because the payout is blocking his uh, chat bubble. <laughs> I'm going to try to figure it out for you, Nana. I'll let you know as soon as I know. We've got some ace three against King Deuce. We know that the last two words of what Christopher Brewer wrote was game lol. And Michael Demo said, haha, send the emoji forward. <laughs> A good game lol. Or something, who knows? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Well, Christopher is going to bet his ace here. Michael Adamo does have bottom pair. Makes the call. Pretty big pot. Two million chips heading into the way of Christopher. That means that we are awfully close again when it comes to the chip count. This is an epic match between your pick and my pick, Nano. So making this extra tense for us as well. You know, it's really cool that GG Poker, their Twitter account, always makes these uh, tweets out, like predict the winner, you know, and there's like different odds for everyone who they predict. And I think they can win something when it comes to giveaways as well. I think they're going to start listening to our picks, you know, and then send in their submissions because we have not been doing that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I've been picking one guy. He's going to, you know, he shipped it twice already, you know, but like regardless, like this has been a very epic heads up match. These guys are just insane players they're, they're really crazy they're they're, they're i don't i don't want to call them solid players these guys are the guys that are just trying to win every single pot they're getting paid off with bottom pair look at this what was it fourth pair snap calling and is good like how, how are they doing this well it's hard to make a pair in heads up <laughs> and my demo is really taking that to heart and it's proving to be true so far Heads up poker is just so different than, you know, even four-handed, five-handed. All the hands just uh, play out very, very differently. And we can really see both players opening up a lot as well. Look at this. The race with the six high. <laughs> Snap, Jack raise. Adamo calls with just a pair of threes. That's a straight draw now for Brewer, though. Yep, an open-ended straight draw. It's probably one of the better river card or turn cards that he could have seen. And he's going to take the pot down on the turn there. Uh, yeah. It's always nice when you raise with nothing and then you really pick up a lot of equity on the turn. You're like, oh, now I can really turn my hand into something. I've actually got something. <laughs> yeah, these two guys are going nuts right now. It's just overbet after overbet. Pot size bets like almost the minimum bet size, you know, at some point on the street. King high for Michael Adamo. We'll probably fire something into the middle. Wow, that's such a big bet as well. <laughs> 500k, just like that. Yeah, they're playing very unpredictability, right? Like, you, it's not like, oh, big bets mean big hands or big bluffs. Or whatever. It's just like they, they mix it up a lot, and you really can't tell what they're doing. Well, Michael Demo has an ace, and he's just going to make the call. And Christopher Brewer actually takes the lead with his queen four offsuit, makes another queen on the turn, and now has strips. Oh, 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 what are we going to do? He has to bet this, right? He's definitely going to bet here. I think Adamo might put in at least one call, though. It does. It is a type of board where your opponent would delay continuation bet. Uh, so we should see Adamo call. He does. And might actually make another call with ace high. I think Brewer is going to go big now. It just seems like his opponent has a king or a jack. He does yeah. go for over bet. Yeah, it's like that small bet, like, and then big bet is just very confusing for a lot of guys. They might try to hero call you here and there, um, but doesn't get the call that time. 
I like it when these two hands battle it out with each other. A queen jack against a 10 9, and that is exactly oh. why. An open ended straight draw with two overs for Mike Ordamel and top two pair for Christopher Brewer. This could be a monster pot. Yeah, we should see a check raise from Brewer. There is the check raise. If an eight or king rolls off on the turn, then we know all the chips will go in at some point. Damo does call. That's a full wow. health. Yep. <laughs> I would actually love to see him check here. I think this is a perfect moment to check. Oh, he's going to, okay, it's a smaller bet though. One million chips. What is Michael Adamo going to do right now? Very well aware of the fact, of course, that he could be drawing that. It's very unlikely, but he is, and he is very fortunate that it's not a king or an eight on the river. So this should kind of be it for the action in this spot. I'd love to see him check. Check it. <laughs> yeah, but he's got no time bank, so he's just going to ship it in. I don't fault him for shoving, uh, but uh, with no time bank, you, you got to act quickly. And usually you're just going to think, well, just just value bet and hope you get called. So Brewer okay. back in the lead. I definitely Four think a check would have been nice, though, at some street, though. It just seems like his opponent could easily have a straight draw type hand. A four million chip advantage at this point for the American over the Australian, even though they're both repping Canada here at this final table. So it goes check, check on the flop. So it does ahead. make a pretty big bet on the turn. Yeah, Adamo calls again, and the King Eight is good. It's hard to make a pair. But every now and then your opponent is going to have a better pair, and that is the case this time. Another pot heading to Christopher Brewer, who now has over 13 million chips for the first time this evening. And the blinds go up as well, 100, 200. Well, we're going to see some big pots right now, no, no. They've already been <laughs> betting big. <laughs> now every pot is going to be like 2 million chips. Christopher Brewer is going to just punish Adamo's limp there. And this is really looking like Christopher Brewer's game right now. He's going to raise the king three. Mike Odemo, 8-9 suited. How is he not bad at all? He's going to make the call and flop stop two pair. Makes the check. I love the check. <laughs> all right, so is it check call, check raise? This hand, this board is very dry, so I don't fault him for check raising here. You know, if there wasn't the six of diamonds, I think he probably would consider check calling, but just too much out there to not raise, and he does raise. Yep. Unfortunate for a demo that Christopher Brewer had pretty much nothing there. You gotta remember Adamo just finished second place in that 10k heads up a couple like a couple days ago. Mm -hmm. Uh so he wants some vengeance here and hopefully he doesn't get another second place. But uh he's got a tough opponent and he's picked up the straight draw. He's gonna check it. Makes a pair of tens on the turn. I was gonna feel pretty good about top pair. He still has the flush draw as well with the seven of hearts. <laughs> it's got a lot going on that board, Nano. It's, got, it's like a little bit of everything. He does get Christopher Brewer to put in some chips wow. and more chips. And now Adamo's picked up even more. He's up to 9.6 million again. That went so quick. I mean, this is a stop for Christopher Brewer, right? Because he's got four seconds left on the shot clock. And... That just makes it hard. He's going to act very quick. He doesn't really have a lot of time to think about these things. This time he was wrong. Does make mid pair here with his 10-6 offsuit. And Michael Adamo actually does make a pair as well on the turn. But it will go check, check. These guys are definitely battling it out later in the nosebleeds. <laughs> <laughs> they, can, they can't get enough of this. Yeah, they, <laughs> so there's 20 million chips in play. Jacket suited. What's the play? It's to raise it up. Probably call here, right? Wow, makes the raise with the 5 4. Adamo's not folding jacket suited, I'll tell you that. That is a very spicy flop. A monotone board of all diamonds. 9 8 deuce, obviously, second pair for Michael Adamo. The ace does give Christopher Brewer a gut shot, but that's about it. Yeah, but I feel like you got to bet when you three bet the 5 4 offsuit when the ace comes because your opponent could easily just have nothing. But Jack 8 is a tough call, right? It's a three bet pop. He still makes the call. Just four diamonds out there. 
Ah, this board is so scary, but the pot is so big. Can Christopher Brewer make an insane play like we've seen Michael Adamo do so many times? He will not. Adamo's thinking about turning his hand into a bluff against like an ace-10, ace-jack, ace-queen, ace-king that doesn't have a diamond. He is going to check, and it's enough. Yep, and that is a big pot. And that will mean that Michael Adamo is once again the chip leader in this heads-up match. Back to 12 million. Obviously, the blinds going up. These pots are getting so big. I feel like we're getting close to the end now. All it takes is one sick setup or hopefully just two good hands pre-flop. And then just let the cards decide the fate of this outcome. 9-8 against Queen-10. Christopher Brewer makes the fold. Okay. What do you make of that fold? Heads up. You okay with it? Uh, I mean, 9-8 all? I, yeah, it's, it's not that good. I, uh, and to be fair, Adamo... And Brewer both haven't been three banged the heads up that much. So it does make sense to be a little bit more snug in, in some spots. Well, he does pick up bottom pair here. His hand improves with a flush draw on the turn as well. Still in the lead, of course, with his pair of threes. Ace on the river doesn't change much. But with Michael Adamo, we never know. Might just feel that this is a good moment to go for another insane play. Yeah, you feel it, don't you? You feel it. And this is going to be a half pop bet. Snap call, snap call. bottom pair. Yep. These guys cannot fold a pair against each other. They just. <laughs> That's just what it is. These guys just don't like folding pairs. Queen 8 all suit against 7 8 suited. I feel like this is a three bet hand for Mike Cordama, but this time he doesn't do it. This is going to check. Oh, they both make a pair of eights on the turn. Yeah, the thing is, when you know, when you get like third pair, you're thinking there's no more chips going in because it should go check down. But someone's going to get some value at some street. Well, the value was uh, created. All he had to do was really call there. Christopher Brewer picks up another pot. We are so damn close. We're basically one big blind away. As we both, I feel like we've seen this before. The ace four against the ace seven. Michael Adamo flops trip sevens. Well, that's uh, that yeah. feels pretty good. Heads oh, up! Oh my, no check raise. This is no. what Adamo wants to see. Not like this, Christopher Brewer. Kings rolls off on the turn, and he is going to slow down. Two seconds left on the clock, by the way, for Christopher Brewer. <laughs> A nice check from Adamo. I think he just knows that Brewer usually doesn't have anything when he check raises flop and checks the turn. But now I think Adamo is going to go for a nice size bet. Yeah, but we'll most likely not get any action. It's very good news that we didn't see something sick like an ace on the river because that would have been incredibly bad news for Christopher. But that ain't happening. Michael Adamo will pick up a decent sized spot though. 2.4 million chips heading his way and he is still the chip leader. So there's the raise and the call. And yeah, these guys have been <laughs> just... Every pot's been really big. You usually don't see any like check down pots between these two guys where just not, no, bet, no bet goes in on any street. Never happening. Picks up this pot with a pair of jacks. No, these guys are battling over every blind, over every hand. Big pot, small pot, it doesn't really matter. They don't like to give presents. Pair of trees is still good. Michael Dama actually only having one over pair has set on the turn. Well, you love to see that. Unfortunately, this spot isn't that big for Christopher Brewer. Goes for the overbet. Will not get any action, though. This feels so tense right now, right? Because they have so little time to act. So I feel like they're just firing into each other nonstop. Yeah, they're, just, they're just firing quickly and in huge bets. Adamo's got the 9 do suited. Might go for a check raise. Try to represent that 7. And he's going to take it down. So he, he will hang on to that 3 million ship lead or 2 million ship lead, it kind of is. We've got a real hand for Christopher Brewer. Ace 10 suited. I feel like that neither of them have really been getting any real hands in this heads-up match, right? We saw Jax at the very beginning and that actually lost against Queen 4 or something. It was a horrible board. Yeah, Other it's been like that, the Queen X offsuits, the King X offsuits, like just really bad hands. And uh, someone gets a margin, they get like the Jack 7 suit and they're like, this is the nuts now. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 9 10 suited has never felt so good. Well, 
Speaking of real hands, Christopher Brewer picks up Ace Queen. He will three bet it and he will take it down three flop. This is epic. Oh well. Michael Damo definitely has to fight for it. If he wants to be a three-time champ here as he shows the ace. <laughs> so confusing, so sick. I love it. I don't even see the text, but I know the emotes very well because I spam them all the time myself. This could be something, guys. An open-ended straight draw makes this straight on the turn. And Mike Vardamo does still have second pair. We'll make the call. Christopher Brewer still with, well, the second nuts. Basically the nuts in a heads-up match here. Fire has a massive bet into Michael Adamo. Uh, this would be the be a wrong moment to hero call with third pair. I mean, the way they've been playing, they've been hero calling each other a lot and having good and bad in both ways. So he's thinking how many draws up against. Oh, does make a bad call. Oh, well, that means that the tables have flipped one more time. I feel like we need that Drake song, you know? Like, we just flipped the switch, and it's like 12 million, 8 million, 8 million, 12 million. It's going back and forth. Yeah, so, like, all the overbets, they, they've been getting called a lot, actually, lately. Um, these guys have been not folding a single pair on any street. Brewer, open in a straight draw. Still has nothing, but still probably feels quite good about his hand. Is going to overbet one more time and will take it down. So he is back to 13 million chips. Blinds will go up again in 11 hands, as you guys can see in the top left side of this table. This time the tables are turned, though. It's Mike Ordamo who's got the real hand, the ace queen offsuit. And he's going to make the big three bet. What will Christopher Brewer do? He calls and he gets ahead with a power of threes. Nano Noko. With 3 million chips in the middle, this could get feisty. Yeah, it's a small bet from Adamo, but he's got a lot of outs on the oh, turn. More ace outs. Or heart. <laughs> every ace, every queen, every heart would give Michael Adamo the lead. And we do get a heart. And Christopher Brewer improves to two pair as well. But obviously, he doesn't hold a heart. I think Adamo can go for value, right? Like, it just seems his opponent could easily hold, like, a 7. It's an all-in play. So, Adamo went for all of the chips, but Christopher quickly folds. And we're back. And we are in another break. Is this officially the longest we had? I don't think we ever had a triple break, Nano. <laughs> yeah, I think this is the longest we've uh, done it. But we are going to be really close in chips coming up. 10 yep. to 15 minutes. So guys, we'll take one more break. Hopefully you guys have been enjoying the crazy poker action today here over at the GG Poker official Twitch channel. You guys can see the numbers on the board. It still heads up between two guys that don't only battle in this tournament. They have shared final tables, but they're also playing some very high stakes cash games against each other over at GG Poker. It is as close as it can possibly be. This chip size is, or this chip count is not correct because it's not 15 against 10 million. It is... 10.7 million against 10 million flat pretty much so it's less than well it's like two big blinds away from each other it's insane i have no idea who's going to take it nanonoko at the very start of this final table predicted michael adamo to win this tournament i predicted christopher brewer to win it and making this really exciting we're going to take a quick break and after that we'll be back with the conclusion of the 10th edition of the high roller super millions played over at gg Pop.
Alrighty, guys. As you can see, we are both back in 35 seconds. The action will continue. This can truly end at any given moment. Now, the blinds keep going up, and obviously it keeps going up faster because it's not based on time. It's based on the amount of hands they're playing at this final table. And they're playing really quick because they don't really have a lot of clock left on or time left on the clock. Nano, still feeling good about your pick? I, I always feel good when Michael Adamo's in there, right? Like, he, he makes magic happen. They are dead even in chips. Very, very close. And they're playing very quickly. Here we go. Well, blinds are 100k against 200k, and they both have a somewhat decent hand. Well, Michael Adamo has a decent hand, heads up. Christopher Brewer has an amazing hand, ace-queen suited. He's going to make the three bet. This would be the wrong moment for Michael Adamo to make a crazy play. He's just going to make the call. And there will be an ace on the flop. And that's probably it for this hand then. Because Michael Adamo doesn't really have a whole lot going. Well, I mean, it's not 100% he's going to give up. Right? Like it, he is going to give up. He thought about it. But he's like, <laughs> you don't got much time to think about it. Exactly. That's very difficult for these guys as well, especially in these three bad pots. There is so much in the middle to fight for, but you've got seconds to make your decision. This is definitely yeah. a... Is this the longest final table we've had? Three hours? Yeah, it, it might be the longest final table, and they're still going at it. I believe so. Right now, you have like five seconds until your time clock uh, starts ticking down, I believe, on every action. If you actually yeah. have zero seconds left, then you have five seconds on every action, no matter what, or you'll get mm -hmm. to fold. 8-9 is going to make the race here. Michael Adamo does have an ace, and he makes a pair of deuces, but Christopher Brewer takes the lead with a pair of nines. A million chips in the middle. He's going to fire forward 700,000 chips. He don't really fall pairs here. Christopher Brewer improves to two pair. This would be a bad moment for Michael Adamo to make another one of his crazy plays. They've been working out so far tonight. This would not be the moment. Well, Brewer had one second left to put that bet out because I saw his, his shot clock trickle down one second. So imagine he took a little bit too long. It would have been a check on a turn or something. Does uh, he still not have five seconds then? Does he not have the additional five seconds? He did use five seconds, but he lost one ah. second. You, you get the five seconds, then your shot clock goes down. So he's he got to act quick, even when he's got a big hand. Well, he's going to make the min race here with the 10 8. Michael Demo is going to fire forward the three bet with King 8, and he's going to take it down pre flop. They're still so close 11 million, 9 million. If we get one all in scenario, it's either all on or all over. Or Christopher Brewer, if he loses, he's left with pretty much nothing. The blinds will go up in four hands again, by the way. That's right. We do increase blinds based on the number of hands. You can see that at the top left corner of the table. So blinds, yeah, three more hands and two bad hands. And we're gonna get uh we're gonna end this one soon, I feel like. Yeah, it's it's gonna end real soon. And it's still impossible to say which direction is gonna go. Jack Dan suited. We haven't seen a lot of Jack Dan suited tonight, a little bit. My favorite hand makes two pair here on the flop. What a great hand it is, Nana. Well, flops two pair, it's good, but you know, the pun doesn't have anything, and right now it's just gonna like, Keep chipping at your opponent, but no one's giving none of these guys are giving anything away. Like they, you cannot, you cannot steal pots from these guys. Blinds have gone up 125k, 250k. That means that we are getting shorter and shorter. Another open-ended straight draw for Christopher Brewer. Does he have a subscription on these or what? <laughs> I feel like every third hand he's gonna open ended straight draw. <laughs> That's a fun run out. Does make the stray, but obviously with four hearts on the board, it gets a little scary. Makes it's a bet of for one a big bet. Yeah. Queen high, think about making a raise, and it does. And Brewer gonna... folds the best hand again on those four on those flush boards. Yeah. I mean it's tough though, right? Especially if you got no time at all. I, I can't fault him for it. I mean the king high flush still hurts, but this one I can't fault him for. Yeah, Adamo, you know, he naturally plays fast, so actually his uh, this very quick decisions that might be in his favor slightly. I believe the pair of sixes is still good. Yes, it is. <laughs> we are temporarily couldn't see the whole cards of Michael Adamo, but sixes will take this one down. 
they're just dead even. No, no, it doesn't get any closer than that. <laughs> More than this. 10.3 yeah. million against 10.4 million. It's ridiculous. Ace it. nine. Is it going to be a re-raise? It is. Wow, it's such a big one as well. 2.2 million. <laughs> it's I mean, like, I, I, I just need to make it bigger. I got to do it yeah. quick, right? <laughs> It's a true button smashing at this point. <laughs> <laughs> the button smashing monkeys, right? Yeah. <laughs> Bottom pair for Christopher. He's going to take this one down as well. Obviously, with the blinds going up this quick, all of these spots, they just feel big. But somehow, they still stay so close to each other over and over again. King 9 offsuit is going to get a call here from 9-3 suited. That means King 9 is still in the lead. Pot size bet on the flop is going to take it down. I feel like we're going to do some rapid casting over here, mate. Like, we're going to be quick. <laughs> <laughs> Two king X's. Adamo did three bet the king eight offsuit earlier, so he's going to take the king six offsuit up as well. Gets it done. Two similar yeah. hands. Well done. We are once again dead even. Look at this. 10-1 versus 10-1. It's oddly satisfying. <laughs> King 6 against pocket 5s. Pocket 5s this time going for the big race pre-flop. Yeah, a bit of a coin flip. Adamo is going to call and flops 2 pair. Wow. Ace high board. And Brewer is the pre-flop raiser, so he might fire out some more chips here. And he is going to fire. I wouldn't mind if Michael Adamo just calls here. I and like the exactly call here. what he does. That's the trap. Nine obviously doesn't change anything here. Christopher Brewer made four over cards to your fives. That means that he is going to slow down and check on the turn. Yeah, I, Adamo's got a bet here. His hand is still a bit vulnerable. Well, he's back. We flipped the switch again. 12 million versus 8 million. And this time it's in favor of Michael Adamo. Who does have an ace here? Makes both people prepare. You know, when both people make a pair, right? One's middle pair, a bottom pair, they still get chips in. And so there's a million. I think Brewer is going to at least put in one bet. The monotone board is obviously a bit scary, but no additional spade rolls off on the turn or the river. Might get the call here. I mean, it's an over bet. It's. Four pair, nice fold from Brewer. I mean, like, they've been paying off these little pairs, but I'd like to see a little adjustment there, but time's running out. I, I do think you made a very valid point about this being so quick, being in favor of Michael Adamo. He feels a little bit more comfortable having to make these decisions as quick as he does. We have the wow. Queen Six all in free line. flop. Yep. He's like, I haven't been this short in forever. I don't like being below <laughs> 8 million, man. Like, that's official short stack category at this point. I need to pick up a couple of lines. That's two wow. pair for Michael Adamo. Michael Adamo has truly seen it all, right? He's been running hot, running cold, and now he's kind of running hot again. <laughs> yeah. Playing uh, really great, really aggressive. And he's going to try to get some value, does not. He's got the chip lead, but no one has broken like this, this point, thir 12 to 13 million yet, right, in this heads up match. It's kind of been, nobody has been 14 million. We can definitely yeah. say that for sure. Throughout the entire evening, nobody's had more than 14 million chips. 13 has been the highest, and they've both been at it. Okay, Queen Deuce with the massive raise on that 10 6 10 block or 6 10 10 uh, board takes it down. Man, I'm getting nervous watching these guys right now because they're both acting so quick, they're both firing forward crazy bets. That is almost the same board. This time it's 5-10-10. <laughs> yeah, but they both got a good piece. Michael Damo probably feeling pretty good about pairing his 5, but it's trip tense for Christopher Brewer. And I think Adamo will probably call at least one more bet. Just too many draws out there. Could easily have the best hand. Makes a fold here. That'd be an excellent fold, but he will make oh, the call and he improves no. to a better two pair on the river. And that is bad news because the tens of Christopher are still good. And he is going to oh, make the all in bet. Will Adamo call or not? He makes the call. And that means that Christopher Brewer will take a commanding chip lead for the first time in this heads up match. 16 million against 4 million, a 4 to 1 lead. Adamo is in trouble.
Yeah, that that was, it's just these. He had to make a decision very quickly. Unfortunate for him. Uh, you know, he's got no time bank as well. And Adamo is he's, he's 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 cold now. But you know, in that hand, like I think when you improve to the king, it's just so hard to get away from, right? Like he probably could have got away if he didn't hit that king. But the king is just like, oh mm -hmm. god. Uh, definitely. And once again, it's so hard because they have so little time at this point. $293,000 for second place, $392,000 for first. Christopher Brewer has never won this tournament, but did make multiple final tables. Mike Cordamo is the only two-time champ we have at the high roll is Super Millions. But it seems like it's going to be very hard for him to make it three out of three when it comes to final table appearances. Well, he's still got some blinds. He can still work with it. A7 suited is going to be the first hand to go with. 6-4 suited, going to see a flop. Uh, not too much for him. Makes a pair of aces. So Adamo definitely in a very big lead. Christopher Brewer might just get out of the way here. There's really not much to chase. There were no spades there. The only thing he had was a backdoor straight draw. Two aces. Ooh. Adamo could be back here. I think this is going to be a raise and a limp jam from Brewer. Oh. Yep. And he's going to get the snap call immediately. Brewer needs a three or lots of clubs to close it out. Man, and that's he's... Happening. No, that's looking bad. Well, Jack, to chop it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's right. <laughs> nope. So we're back to where we were. 11 to 9 million. Like, it's just almost like that other hand never happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. These are two reasonable hands to get some action. Yep. Pocket nines against King Seven suited. Christopher Brewer is going to put in the race. What will Michael Adamo do? I like to see him call here. You know, King Seven suited plays good in position. He's got a bunch of back doors, but you know, it's it's tough. I I don't know if he's gonna fold the King Seven. Ooh. Okay. Hey, we see the red numbers. Yeah, uh, yeah. I've never <laughs> yeah. seen that. Right? We've never no. seen that. We have never seen the red numbers. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of exciting. A flush draw for Adamo now as well on the turn. I mean, this hand could be it, depending on what happens on that river card. At least you get to see your time bank, your, yeah. your, your hand happening. Three million chips is so much. What will Adamo do? Uh, probably call. It does not get uh, there. Full house on the river for Christopher Brewer. Adamo has absolutely nothing. You can't make, ah, there's so much in the middle, but King High, yeah. he decides not to make the call. And now it is like the previous hand did happen then, no? Because <laughs> yeah, he's, <laughs> he's back to 3.6. He's back to 3.6 million. Wow, what a big pot that was. Yeah, that was a huge buy. And Adamo on fumes again needs to get one of those doubles. King, Queen, Ace, Four, this is going to be all it. the chips in. This has to be it, right? Christopher Rue is going to raise. Adamo is going to ship it. And we are, once again, all in. Adamo needs a king or a queen to keep his three-time oh, dreams alive. But there's alive. a lot of chance. 27%. 15%. We need a five or an ace. But we don't get a five or an ace. So Adamo will double up back to 6.7 million. He's still a pretty big dog in this heads-up match at this point. Two reasonable hands here. Ace four against Queen Jack. It doesn't end now, no, it doesn't end. <laughs> it does not end. Uh, Queen Jack going to get a free flop here. Now he's got the straight draw. We'll make the straight with the 10, of course. But the ace is still good for Christopher Brewer. Queen is also good on the river. So Adamo could potentially get some more chips here out of the ace high. Why is a big bet, though? I think if he bet smaller, he maybe could have gotten a call there from the A-side. But decided to go big. Fucked fives at this point. Back to 7 million, though. <laughs> so there's the limp. Adamo probably looking for a limp jam. Doesn't get it. This is basically a heads-up match for $100,000. A $99,000 difference between second and first. That's a nice buy-in in the big game, no? <laughs> It is a nice one for sure. They definitely both have enough money to play there. Brewer, King Seven suited. That's a race. Big race. That's oh. a call. And that's an amazing That's all Chris Brewer. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> that's an amazing flop for Christopher Brewer. 
And Adamo really doesn't have much going for himself. Yeah, Adamo does check. One million? One five. And he's going to take it down. We'll extend his lead here in this heads up match. 14 million against 6 million. This has been a pretty. Oh my goodness. Oh fun. my God. They both have <laughs> monsters. It's the oh. top pair flush draw versus the nut straight. Well, this could be fireworks. This should be always be fireworks in a heads up match. Adamo, is he going to go all in? Or is he just going to call here? I think he might just go all in. No, he He's going to call. call. And the turn is safe for Adamo. But will the river be safe? This match has to end one day, doesn't it, Nana? <laughs> it does have to end. And it's just, it could be a lot of chips for someone. Of course, Christopher Brewer is going to call this one. What's the river card? Brewer does Imagine. not want to see a three. The three would be a terrible card. It's a queen. Well, that is a very uneventful run out of a spectacular flop. Top pair and a flush draw for Christopher Brewer. I think he's going to have to lay this one down. Yeah, he's just trying to think. He doesn't have much time to think. Three, two, one, fold. zero. He does fold. Maybe an automatic fold. We'll never know. <laughs> Probably automatic fold. There's no reason to actually click fold for it at this point. <laughs> Make it a little more dramatic. Just time out every time. Oh, that's yeah. a big pot heading to Adamo's way. He's now back to 8.4 million. Not quite at 9 million yet, but we're back to the 12 against 8 million. Yeah, I mean, that, cut, that pot could have been a little bit bigger too. That's a yep. good thing Adamo didn't jam the flop or, you know, a different turn card could, could have came out. Regardless, they still... It's a bad thing back, for him. <laughs> it's a, it's, we're back to where we were, right? The 12 yeah. versus 8 million, the 10 versus 10 million. There's 20 million chips in play. Roughly. Um, I mean, it's a good thing for Christopher Brewer that the Dama didn't ship it on the flop because he would have absolutely called with top pair and a flush throw. And with that amount of time bank, you'd be thinking, you know what? Just <laughs> blindly go all in if you got a good hand. Regardless, it's pair of tens versus the king six. Christopher is going to continue. Does have a couple of backdoors. Backdoor straight draw, backdoor flush draw. Oh, do backdoor flush draw. Yep, we do have a spade on the turn. Obviously, a king would still be good for Christopher Brewer as well. So he's getting neither, though. Let's get saved. Chuck, Chuck, or is he going to bet big? Nope, he's going to give this one up. The king high is no good. That means that Adamo makes it a little closer again. 10.5 against 10.2. Now we're back to where we were. <laughs> yeah, and Adamo was at risk twice in his heads-up match, and he, you know, stayed alive. 8-5 suited to ace-10. This is what you want to see when you limp ace-10. You want to see some action. Adamo is going to limp jam. Take down those chips. And He's we'll like, I want to make sure I'm chip lead. He was like, I want to make sure I'm chip lead. I'm not going to call and let you get there. King-4 suited against pocket eights. That could be something as well. What are the eights going to do? Make it a million. That's what yep. I think. Yeah. They love the 4x in the heads up. Flop comes, queen 6-6. Six, six. That's a pretty good flop for your pocket eights. Not too much to worry about. Yeah, that's a 25% pop bet. Takes it down. So now we just literally flip-flop because I'm pretty sure Adamo had 8 million not too long ago. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, let's see if he can too break that 13 million barrier of chips one more time. So we've got two uh, very weak hands going up against each other here. The 8-4 offsuit against the 8-5 offsuit, and they've got the same suits as well. Yeah, Adamo has been limping a bit more on the button, so he's happy playing post-flop. He knows the stacks are getting shallow. Trying to, like, extend this match as long as possible for us, you know? Well, it's a, uh, it's a minor miracle. He was down to 4 million chips. Now he's just casually back into the lead. Our two-time champ. Yep. Yeah, 150k. Wow, 300k big blind at this point. The blinds jump so quick in this heads-up match as well. That's crazy too. Both players flop a pair. Obviously, Adamo is in the lead. A seven would be terrible. But we know Brewer can't be folding bottom pair here in heads-up. They both pick up a gut shot now as well. 
I mean, we'll make this trade with the four, but Brewer basically needs the three to win this hand. But he's going to give it up on the turn. And he is now shorted, and he's been in a long time. 6.6 .6 million. Michael Adamo was running insane in the first hour of this final table. Came in as the shortest stack. Let's not forget about that. Was chip leader by the time we entered our first break. Second hour wasn't too hot, but he's back. And he is now the one with a commanding chip lead. More than two yeah. to one. Adamo, <laughs> I mean, such a sick performance, but it's not over yet. Christopher Brewer's got Jack seven. And he's got, you see that red number on the shot clock. That means if his hand goes to, to zero seconds, his hand will be folded or checked. And they both pick up a straight draw. Yep. Open ended, of course, for Adamo. Probably feel good enough to bet. And that's exactly what he's going to do. Christopher Brewer, what is he going to do with his Jack 70? Makes the oh, call. Oh, makes the straight. Nice. And it goes check, check on the. Wow. I'd love to see him bet there. But... He doesn't have time to think, though, Roddy. That's the I problem. <laughs> I know, I know. No, you can't really fault these guys for anything at this point. I mean, Adamo still has his five seconds left, by the way, on the shot clock. He's been cherishing those, he's been nursing it like no one else. Similar suits, similar weak hands, and they both make a pair of trees. Probably will chop it up, right, at some point. Okay, well, never mind. Maybe Super. not. Super. Maybe not. Damo takes a big lead in this hand. Christopher Brewer is now drawing that. Over a bet. And I don't see how Christopher Brewer can fold 3-7 at this point, given the action. It's a limp pot. Does make the call. Well... Let's just say it's good news that it wasn't the last three in the deck that rolled off on the river because then it would have been all over, that's for sure. Michael Dam is going to bet one more time. Did use two seconds of his shot clock there, but he will go above 14 million chips. And he picks up ace-queen suited. Man, he's going to win it again, isn't he? What a sicko. <laughs> well, I, I really thought he don't, wasn't going to win this one. Your guy yet. Don't count out your guy yet. He's, he's still got a chance. Remember, Adama had, what, three, four million chips earlier, and he, now he's back in this spot. Yeah. I want this match to continue. <laughs> this is amazing. I mean, Christopher does need to double up in, in the near future because the, the blinds are just so <laughs> big at this point. Now, he's actually pretty short. What is this, 17 big blinds, I believe it is? Like, that's it's not that much. And we know how aggressive Adamo is as well. So if you fold a couple of hands in a row, suddenly you're down to 13, 12 big blinds. And then even if you double, you're still, you're still nowhere. So this is checking down right now. People are trying to... They got some high card showdown value. I think to Jack Eyes. He might... Seems, he will bet. Oh, he is going to bet. Wow. And he takes it down. Of course <laughs> he takes it down with the Jack High. Michael Adamo is unstoppable. 5-4 offsuit against Ace-9. This would be the wrong moment to make a big play because Adama would absolutely snap call. And he's going to put him all in. Yeah, he can't call. He can't call with five high. Oh, oh, oh. This is kind of what I was talking about. At this point, it's like 15 big blinds. The deuces? Is he going to ship the deuces? Just, 15 just bigs? ship it in. Just take down what's in the middle. You got to do it at this point. When you're a short stack, you got to get whatever you can. When you're a big stack, you can kind of splash around a little bit. Two weak hands going up against each other. Christopher Brewer definitely needs to get something going because he's heading in the wrong direction. Not too long ago, he was at 16 million. Now he's at less than five. He does pick up a flush draw here, even though it's a very weak flush draw. He will take it down. One club is better than none on boards like these, even if it's exactly. a trick. Exactly. I would like ship to it. see him ship it in. All in. I mean, yeah, you don't have many chips left. All right, back to six. Back to six. That's a lot better than four, four. <laughs> Ace nine suited. It's going to go for the min race. This would be the wrong moment for a demo to go a little crazy. The Doyle Brunson hand, 10 dudes offsuit. He's going to make the call. <laughs> he used oh, one man. second to make that call. <laughs> he, used, he used one second of his shot clock. He's like, hmm, what should I do here? 
Ace nine is going to bet quite a pot. Adamo wants to make a play. Look at you can yeah. just feel it, right? Like he's like, oh man, I really want to. <laughs> I felt it. <laughs> I felt pre-flop already. He wanted to do it. This time he's got the six five against the six dues of Christopher Brewer, and Christopher Brewer will fold. One of the absolute worst hands in poker. King nine suited is a whole lot better, especially heads up. I'm gonna go for the race. I love watching these guys play heads up. I do really feel like you learn so much from how they play their specific hands. Uh, yeah, I mean, and this heads up match has been really fun to watch. This is Damo's third heads up match in the 10K Super Millions. The King High is, of course, still good here. The King High will stay good. At this point, you probably feel really good about your King as well. <laughs> Yeah, like, he might even go for some value, try to get yeah. called like I. <laughs> I've got the not nothing, and that's pretty good. <laughs> Look at that. Fires forward, 800,000 chips into the middle. And he's just going to take it down. So he's back to 6.7 million. As both players pick up suited hands, all clubs. They both have pretty decent hands as well. Oh, whoa, oh, oh, Michael Demo, how crazy are you? I don't know. Jack Knight suited, man, this would be crazy. He'd be thinking, man, you look like you got a little pair. Maybe my, I'm just flipping it. He's thinking about He's using his shot clock. Oh, he, he calls. calls if Jack Knight suited. How does he call? Can he stay ahead? He flops he, the nine. Yep. So we need a seven or a six or a 10 or a five at this point. 10 or a five or a seven or it's all over, right? No, he made the straight. He makes the straight before. with the five. I mean, there's so much happening there. I was like, is that what happened? And that is exactly what happened. Ten would have been no good, right? Because then Adamo had a highest straight. Oh, my God. A wow. hero call with Jack Nine suited for 20-something big blinds gets rivered by the 7-6. Yeah. He what needed... a heads-up match. Oh, oh, oh. Needed a 7-6 or a 5 on the river. The 10 was no good, obviously, because then Adamo would have had the highest straight. And now we're back. Christopher Brewer all of a sudden in the lead. This pot was insane. Makes the call with the Jack-9 suited. I mean, it looks pretty, right? <laughs> it's a 100k heads-up match, and he's calling 23 big blinds to close it out with Jack-9 suited, and it was correct and was actually in good favorite. There's oh. the call. River cards a seven. He's got the nut straight, but Adamo mm. probably going to just keep betting himself given the way he plays. Mm. Go for all of it. He goes for all of it. Imagine if that would have been a six on the river here. That would have been a... <laughs> then we would have just been back again. We would have been all tied up. Hey, 12 million against 8 million. Haven't we seen this before in this heads up match for the <laughs> We're ages? Back. We're back here again. Yeah. These guys are like, man, this is tough. It's tough to win a buy-in for the nosebleeds, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, at least part of it. 10-7 against 10-3. This has truly been a roller coaster. It's been so swingy on either side. It felt that Christopher had it, then it felt that the demo had it. Now all of a sudden it truly feels like anybody's game again. This is the best heads up match we've seen to date on the 10K Supermans, hands down. There's just no way there's been a better one. And it's still going on. Two people for straight draw. Christopher obviously in the lead with his pair of sevens as well. Yeah. So Demo is actually the one betting into this spot with his 10 3 offsuit. Christopher Brewer, you're good with your seven. You will stay good with your seven. This is a pretty big pot. Two million chips in the middle. Damo's trying to think, should he represent the nine? Can he get his opponent to fold? He's put 2x the pot, and Brewer's been folding these spots, and he folds again the best hand. Adamo, hats off to him. Nine million in chips. His aggression is insane. He puts so much pressure on his opponents, and now especially with both of these guys, Basically having no time left, only having five seconds to make every decision. A6 is going to lead out here. Ace high is good. 11.1 million against 9.6. As Adamo wakes up with Ace King suited. 
there's the limp. Is Christopher Brewer going to limp call to 10-3 suited? I mean, he might. It's a playable hand. It's not a great hand, but it's, you know, you got position. You got the suited hand, so he does make the call. And this is a really bad flop for both players. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Nobody really has much going on that board. Adama does have the back door space, of course, and he does still have two of us. Christopher. That's a very interesting turn, right? It's very bad for Adama also because he's not expected to hit a straight here. I think Brewer should fire. It just seems like he could get easily get a hand to fold. But Adamo is, can he make the call of Ace King? I would be so That'd nasty, be but so correct. It is oh correct, my. and he calls. Yeah, but now you got to pull the trigger if you're Christopher Brewer. If Adamo checks here again, I know it's tough. He could obviously have it too, but he's the one who three bet three flop. How likely is it? Can he do it one time, Christopher Brewer? He, he does. does. 3.3 million. Adamo, you, oh my no. god, if he calls this one. Don't this you dare to call here, Michael Adamo. Don't you dare to call. That is be outrageous. No, oh my god, my he calls. god. Michael Adamo is the best. <laughs> Look at that. How? That is just, Look how that. do you call on that board? He's amazing. Oh my god, he's got the chip lead. Christopher Brewer outplayed in that hand, but played that hand great, but did get outplayed. King six offsuit. How do you beat this guy? I guess ridiculous. That is ridiculous. I love everything that Christopher Brewer did in that hand, <laughs> and he played it perfect. How did that not work? That's ridiculous. I am lost for words. Michael Adamo is a freak. <laughs> He's a freak. It's <laughs> too good. It does go check check. Brewer's got the best hand. King six. Wow. We're back again. Adamo with 14 million chips against the 2 million of Christopher Brewer. Or 4 million, excuse me. Christopher Brewer is going to fire a bet into this one. At least he'll pick up this spot. So it ain't over yet. He's back to 6.7. Wow, that, that is... And Nano, this could have all been over if he didn't fold the king high flush. If he just didn't fold the king high flush, we would have never seen any of this. How insane is that? But I'm happy we're seeing it. This is such amazing poker right now. And they're fighting back. Christopher Brewer is not out. He's shipping up slowly. He's got the queen jack in this hand. It really is anyone's game. And it's not anyone's game anymore. Oh it's all goodness. Michael Adamo. And I don't see how Chris Brewer gets away. Unless he can hit a jack, he can maybe <laughs> win this. It's I don't Michael see. Adamo's world. And we're all just and enjoying some poker inside of it. As Christopher Brewer is going to go for the raise on this flop. But Adamo with trip sixes is not going to go anywhere. Oh, and it no. gets worse. No, Christopher Brewer. He doesn't deserve this. He has played insane. He makes Adamo. two pair. He or can be our three-time champion soon. Here's another bet. As long as a queen or jack does not roll off, this is over. Guaranteed. Yep. That'd be so insane. Imagine if it does, actually. It's oh. clock sixes. It's he wins in stop boat. Of course, of course, Michael Adamo is going to win this tournament in style. Christopher Brewer has got a full house, and it's not going to be enough. This is it, guys. The epic heads up match is over. Christopher Brewer will finish in second place, walk away with $293,000. But Michael Adamo is writing poker history here, if you ask me, winning three out of the first 10 editions of the High Rollers Super Millions. Walking away with $392,000. I don't think he ever had to fight harder for it than he did today. But Nano Noko, how insane is this? Unbelievable. It's my, it's my pick. I told you, you, the very first time you've seen Michael down final table, I hyped this guy up so much. I said, this guy, he's the type of guy. He either gets, he wins a tournament or he gets ninth place. He's been to this final table three times. Two times as a pretty big stack. One time as a shorter stack today in ninth place. He shipped all three times. He's got a 100% win rate at this final table. This tournament has happened 10 times, three wins. It's an amazing performance. He was the first two-time champion, the first three-time champion in such a short amount of time. On June 30th, he won 393,000 winning this tournament. July 23rd, he won 534,000 winning this tournament. 
today he wins another 392,000. He's cashed for 1.3 million in a 10K tournament. It's amazing performance. He's the most aggressive player today. I think he's the best tournament player to date. I've spoken to other high stakes tournament players. They think that Michael Adamo is the best tournament player to date. I know other people might think, no, I'm the best one, but you can't tell me this is an amazing player, amazing performance. He's the most fun to watch. You gotta love it, Roddy. No, I'm absolutely loving it, and that's it. I will never pick anybody else over Michael Adamo if he's at a final table, because I've learned my lesson at this point. Christopher Brewer, though, heads off, played absolutely amazing. His third final table, I believe it was, two times he finished in eighth place. He came in as a short stack. He didn't really have a lot of play. We couldn't really see what he was made of. We did see him sit down at the VIP table, the ultra high stakes table. We saw him play some hands there. This time he came in with a healthy stack and uh, he put up one hell of a fight. He could have had it. I thought he had it a couple of times. But Michael Adamo came in as the shortest stack of this final table, only fired a single bullet this time as well. No multiple entry, no three time, four time. Nope, just a single entry, made final table, caught lightning in a bottle in the first hour. That was an insane run, but then just played out of this world poker in the last two hours or something. Hats yeah, off. Yeah, I, I got it. I got a hats off to Chris Brewer, right? Like, I didn't know much about this guy. We know he played the life at the bike, right? He wasn't playing 500, 1,000, 2,000 nosebleeds like years ago, right? Like this is his first time playing those stakes. He plays it all the time. You know, he's made three final tables, a second place finish. It's, it's pretty good. He was up against someone he plays those big nosebleed games with, Michael Adamo. So uh, Chris Burr is a very good player. I didn't know him at all, but I'm a big fan of him too. Uh, it's just been an insane heads up match and that heads up match was very swinging everything before the heads up match was crazy as well um in the heads up match right adamo was actually all in at risk twice so you know chris brewer could have easily took him down this tournament, but it was two like kind of like one ace x versus ace x one king queen versus ace x you know there were some opportunities but there were so many over bets so many bottom pair fourth pair call downs that were good and not good uh, it was just such an insane play. And the final hand just sealed the deal, right? It's the trip sixes versus the jack on jack six six, but turns the queen for queen jack, but river was quads. It's yeah. such like, it's just, it's just a rounder story or something. <laughs> yeah. But uh, <laughs> GG to both of them, but Michael Adamo gets it done after finishing second place in that heads up 10K WSOP event as well. It's just been an amazing, amazing poker for him. I think that's the best way to say it. Like, I don't even think you could script this though, the way that this entire thing played out. Let's not forget what happened in the opening 10, 15 minutes of this final table. Michael Adamo, a short stack, was all in and needed an ace or a five, I believe it was on the river. He had five outs, he nailed it. And after that, he just went on the sickest run. I also want to give a big shout out to uh, Martin Zamani, who showed us the very first snap cam stuff at this final table. And we obviously hope to see a lot more of that because that was a lot of fun. But overall, these guys made it super cool Nano. They were spamming emojis as well. They were clearly having a good time playing poker. And uh, we saw some amazing poker. You said earlier, this is your favorite final table so far. At first, I was like, we saw a couple good ones, Nano. Let's not get too hyperball over here. But no, I'm with you. This was definitely the craziest final table we've seen so far at the High Roller Super Millions. What a night. It is past midnight for me. It has never happened that I'm still here past midnight, but I absolutely loved it. Do you have any final words before I close it out today? Bring back Michael Adamo to another final table, please. <laughs> Bring him back. We'll see you guys next week. All right, that is it. Of course, guys, still a lot of crazy action happening over at GG Poker. WSOP number 71 for $50. You can participate in a bracelet event. And of course, the main event, the largest prize pool in online poker history is kicking off as well. I know one of my friends is playing in one of the uh, flights tomorrow. So that's going to be very fun. I'm definitely rooting for him and I hope he has a crazy run. And of course, I wish everybody good luck that will participate in the main event this year. That's it for us. We'll be back next week, same time, same place, with another edition of the High Roller Super Millions played over at GG Poker. Thank you for watching and have a good night.